Uh, we don't have comments this time around, so if you want Please, us to you. answer your questions... I still please. think we need to ask for that earlier in the show, but yeah, yeah ask, should, like, please Actually, leave wait, us can comments. You, can you cut this in earlier? I can try. Future Callum, if don't you, be lazy. Cut you, this in. There we go. I've um, done my best. Look at this edit. Look at these seconds. Thank you. Right. <laughs> what? When, oh, you're looking at, when you're looking at a long <laughs> video, you, it's good to have a point to look okay. for. It isn't like a, a <laughs> split second. Um... <laughs> Anyway, yeah. Um, so that's it. Go ahead, Evan. Take it away. Like, uh, do it again about the comments. Like, like you never said it before. You're just starting right now. <laughs> okay, guys. So since we don't have we don't have comments this time around, so if you want us to answer your questions, please leave them in the comment section below, and we will try our best to find some good ones. And to tag them so it's easy to find, put hashtag uh, Council for Forecast question. Yes. Can you put question marks in hashtags? No, no, I meant like. No, I mean, as oh, in, you could, you question. could put a question mark because that would be yeah. better. If, if you can, <laughs> that would be great. If you want to, I guess. Like, ca like you council force cast. Okay, yeah, you don't good. have to. Maybe just for yeah. ca force cast just makes things a little easier. Okay, force cast question. Hashtag force cast question. You know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> we just got put you some that. form of hashtag. That'll work, I'm sure. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, hashtag or just Find question. That. If, yeah. if you do hashtag anything that's hashtag. related to a question, we will see it. <laughs> Something that'll make it easier for us to find. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So that if we're doing a search for question, we'll be able to see questions. Yes, your questions. <laughs> okay, so. Right, cool. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to episode 25 of the Council Force cast. I'm Ready4. With me today, as ever, is Grey Jedi 91 Hey. Evan Nova95. Hello. Jensurai1. Fusro Da. And Antoine Bandele. I am one with the force, and the force with me. Yes, we're going to be <laughs> we're going to be uh, reviewing the Rogue One film today. Um, but first, Antoine, if you'd like to lead us into the sad news. Well, we're recording January first, guys. So just to keep that in mind, um, <laughs> why this news is here. Um, we're going to do a, a little moment of science silence for Carrie Fisher and her mother, uh, Debbie Reynolds, um, who both passed away within like days of each other um day. recently um day wow it was that it was even that yeah, it was crazy. the following day unfortunately yeah. the what really was really crazy is that um before uh debbie reynolds uh, passed she um asked about carrie fisher and said that you know she missed her and then they said literally like right after they were they told her like what happened like like it was hours after that like she passed away it's like it's a very very um tragic story and um like i just recently watched uh, rogue one for a third time and i forgot that uh, that scene was about to pop up and to see Carrie Fisher, um, like there, you know, um, and for the line that she has in the movie too, it's just, um, kind of heartbreaking, you know, um, mm -hmm. it's, uh, definitely some, someone that we grew up with, um, since childhood, if this is, was a childhood thing for us and, uh, to have her, uh, pass so soon, um, and the way she did, um, is, is is really sad so yeah uh, for a little moment here everybody if you're watching as well uh take a moment of silence uh for Kay fisher and her mother now all right cool thanks very much everyone uh so on to the legacy that this great actress is left behind in the new film of the Star Wars series. Rogue One, initial impressions. Uh, Connor, you wanted to go first, I believe. Okay, well, here's me being absolutely, totally honest. I am a Disney-hating, expanded universe hardliner. I was looking for a reason to hate this film so I could have some ammunition against Disney, and I liked this movie, which should tell you everything you need to know. Okay, Antoine, you next. We're just doing very short. Okay. Um, yeah, like, I like the movie. Uh, the first impressions are people, like, saying it's the best thing since Empire is definitely overblown uh, to me, in my opinion. But I think it's a very uh, solid movie. Uh, get into specifics as we get into specifics. But as a shortened version, I think I like, of course, everybody likes the third act. Like, the, the, the final half of, of the movie is, like, kind of given, perfection. Yeah. Um, and for me, uh, uh, for me, Force Awakens, I felt like the uh, first half of it was better. So I felt like if they like combined those two, it would be like the per per perfect uh, combination. But yeah, that's my general thoughts. Okay. Uh, Evan, do you want to go next? Sure. Uh, I'm going to be perfectly honest, too, and say that I was originally really looking forward to this movie when it was first announced. 
But after seeing Force Awakens, my hopes were severely sullied by the quality of that movie. So I was going into this like, please be better. Please be better. Please be de- better. Or at least just please be good. Please be good. <laughs> but, and <laughs> yeah, no, for real. But, and I was genuinely surprised. Genuinely surprised. I very much enjoyed this movie. I've seen it twice. And I am honestly really hoping that the spinoff films continue in this direction of quality. Because if they do, then... I think this particular series has a chance to be truly excellent. Okay, and Matt? Finally. Okay, um, not to be like piffy or anything, but my views are somewhere between uh, Antoine's and Connor's. Like, like Connor, I wasn't expecting anything, and I was pleasantly surprised, but I think I probably have the same issues with the film that Antoine does. And um, it's it's a movie that I... I I, I've seen twice, and I, like I said, I've only seen Force Awakens the one time, and I'm not particularly inclined to see it again. And this one I enjoyed, like socially, I was thinking about it when I left. Um, it's more memorable to me, and for I'm a variety probably going to see this one again, actually. Yeah, I'll own it. So there's that. So I'm I'm more positive about this particular product, and uh, it doesn't really give me greater hope like like what evan was saying but i'm I'm more open to the idea that good stuff is coming than i was before so that's it oh good Uh, as for me because i forgot myself sorry uh i went in expecting to really enjoy this film um because of what we were given in the trailers and what we were given by general rumors and such about the overall design of the tone um and the general approach to the anthology (laughs) series um as a whole really uh, and I did enjoy it, which is always good. Uh, but I was the opposite of Ant- uh, not Antoine, sorry, uh, Matt. I was the opposite of him in that I was expecting to go into it liking it more than I did. Um, but I agree with everyone here. It's a very good film. It's definitely a league ahead of Force Awakens. So lots of good stuff to talk about it. But I think we're probably going to have a, a similar um, level of uh, critiques for the thing overall. And yeah, definitely know when their Empire Strikes Back, Antoine. Uh, it is being overhyped in that regard. Yeah, um, but yeah, I think all positive though from us. We all like it, so this is going to be an interesting one. Uh, yeah, we're not we're not going to be flaying it alive. Yes, <laughs> I've a, I have a few follow ups to a few of what you guys think. Uh, first off, this has been like a perpetual thing that I've been trying to correct on everything on everyone that Connor uh, brought up is that Disney is not the reason for yeah. the story choices. Uh, it's, it's a huge thing that goes out. It's like kind of like a meme now uh, that everyone uses yeah. that. Disney. Disney. Uh, <laughs> it is. Group. If anyone ever wants to put blame on anything you don't like in the story of Star Wars, uh, you want to put it on the story group, yes, but also Kathleen Kennedy is the one who spearheaded all of that. Yeah. Um, she's the one who decided to uh, to make the distinction to, uh, between uh, the canons, and she's the one who's spearheading the story group itself. Not Disney. Like Bob Iger doesn't really care. She's just distributing. He does the merchandising. You know, he's not does not care about the story elements. That's all Kathleen Kennedy. So I would like to switch it up so people can like stop mm-hmm. talking about Disney and like stop letting Kathleen Kennedy, who's the one making the decisions, like let her let her hear your voice, not Disney. Disney doesn't. They have no really um, any uh, say so. Also. Um, anthology. I like you brought that up uh, already because uh, I, I really prefer. I'm sure what they did is that they went to focus groups and then people were like, "What's well, an anthology?" Yeah, like, what you is know. it? That's too complicated. Because that was such a, simple. Oh, I do man. explain that to my friends too when we went in. They're like, so What's much better. Oh, that's, yeah. see, that's exactly probably why they changed it. I don't know if that's for sure. I, by the way, I'm not saying that's not me research anything. That's just me. That's my thought process. Is that that's why they changed it? No, it's it was completely so- true. Like I, people in the theater and my friends sitting next to me, I was like, "So where does this fall in place?" I was like, "It's an anthology," and they just looked at me like, "What? Like, what, what is? Yeah, like it was." And so I literally, classy. I had to go into this whole little explanation sort of thing. Same universe, different timeline. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of peculiar. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. It's oh yeah, and just. If this is someone's first episode or one of the newer episodes for you watching, um, I guess just to give a background on uh, our previous uh, reviews, especially with uh, The Force Awakens, because we all kind of talked about Force Awakens when we talked about yeah. our reviews. Um, for, it seems like, Evan, it seems like you have dropped, in your opinion, uh, of Force Awakens. I remember re- uh, before when we read it, uh, you liked it a little bit more than what it sounds like you did now, currently. Agreed. Well, it's... I've watched it a few more times since then, and I can't say that I dislike it more. It's just that my enthusiasm's just kind of, you know, dropped a bit. Died. It's not like a hate. It's not like a hate thing. It's more of an interest thing. You know, you know what I mean, Antoine? Yeah, yeah, no, I get it. I was just. It's just. 
Yeah, no, I still I still think it has positive aspects, and I don't hate it with a burning passion. But it's just, uh, I think it's just kind of, it just kind of cooled down for me over over time. And I think that just kind of had to do with the fact that the movie, at least for me, didn't have as much staying power. Or, it's um, to be or just memorable right. well, because obviously... you know, just just me- you know remembrance. You know, just time passes, and I started to think. You know, I was less enthusiastic about it. I wasn't like chomping at the bit to like you know put the DVD in again and again right. and again like I was before. But that's all. I'm I'm, I'm, I'm not like. I'm not like hating on the movie now or anything like that. Yeah. It's to be expected. Yeah, though, I liked Star Wars, it. But... We had like decades of built, well, a decade, I guess, of not yeah. having it. So the hype, as you initially go back in and return to the world, yeah. was always going to be high. So that's, exactly, that's natural in that regard. Yeah, which is exactly what happened to me because I liked it and it, like it actually like stung me that I didn't love it. Like when I was in the theater right. and like it was the credits, I was like, I love Star Wars. Like why? What? Like what? Like I've never had this thing of like emptiness of like just like. Mm-hmm. I feel I like, like the whole it. audience I, I saw it with had that reaction. They all came out sort of vaguely quiet and sort of weirded out. Like they weren't Same in love with it. With it, was, it was very yeah. clear. I think a lot of that had to do with the music because we didn't have that feeling with the prequels and everyone knows how much of a mm-hmm. horrific explosion that was film-wise. Um, but at least that had the music to keep people feeling the Star Wars. Um, didn't really well, have that much of Force Awakens for the general well, public like, to with, acknowledge. Well, yeah. See, if- If I can just pipe in for a second, to me, one of the big problems with Force Awakens is that the big strength that, to me at least, the Star Wars movies have always had is in the world building and the realism. Like, giving the sense that as you're watching this movie, you're not watching a movie so much as you're witnessing events unfolding. Force Awakens didn't have that. It wasn't believable at all. It was just so artificial. There was... The world wasn't believable. You can buy into it, which is one area where Rogue One really succeeded for me. That world was so believable. I could get into Mm -hmm. this very easily, which is, you know, one of the reasons why I really ended up liking it. It's like it played out. People are talking about what's going on. So I understand what's going on. And I, I didn't have that in The Force Awakens enough. There's a framework to work with in the background. Like you, you like I say, you know the setting. You know again, the timeline helps because we know where we are in the timeline. We know this: the empire is a threat. What the empire represents. We know the rebels that's been set up in the previous um, originals. You know, we know what's going on. We know the stakes. We ha- everything has weight now, just by default. So even if the film didn't bring that in, it, which it does as well, which helps, um, we have that to start with. Force Awakens, we didn't. But let's move away from Force Awakens now because uh, we're going <laughs> to that's going to drag down the first of this. Uh, Review. Good job. I was, I was going to do the same thing already. <laughs> yeah, so... Yeah. Well, speaking speaking of which, I was kind of jumping off of what uh, Evan was saying, um, that there was, like, all this hype, you know, build-up for, for Force Awakens. But uh, segueing that to Rogue One, I think that's kind of why we're hearing, at least when you hear those initial reviews, uh, you get such um, hype from them. It's because that, that third act was such, like thrilling perfection um and when when you're thinking about a movie you usually are thinking about like how it's ended like immediately yeah, it's after the, it's that's why i think after, that, yeah, the afterglow yeah. that's yeah, where no. that feeling comes um so i definitely felt i don't think the the first half is weak i just don't think it's um it's it matches yeah yeah comparatively weak but it's not it is not weak um it starts out but, solid and then just gets great yeah, I disagree right. on the ending right. being perfection. I actually do have a few significant flaws with the ending, um, but I agree that overall it was definitely the best part and it was definitely very, very good. But for me, again, I agree with the first parts. They're not bad, but the f- you, for example, the whole um, Jeddah sequence, like to me, and with most of what we see before the climax, actually, you can stop it and say, why are we watching this? And I can't think of a reason. It, it doesn't. I, you could take out that entire sequence, and you'd get about an hour to build up the interplay between the crew, which makes, which I think would have been a lot better or much better use of the time. You're saying cutting the destruction of Jeddah or them being on Jeddah? Pretty much everything that happens between before the end of the film, um, you give, could have rewritten. Give the characters and I would think more be time to interact with one another, and you know, bond as a team. Which I will agree is one of the little problems with this film. It, like the team, kind of comes together a little bit too quickly a little too smoothly but one thing i do will stress is that that same criticism could be leveled by a movie like guardians of the galaxy and i loved guardians of the galaxy so not a game breaker but noticeable oh yeah i completely agree it's only it's only a minor thing um when you look at the overall package but it is significant in the when you're just looking at the first and second act is what i'm saying um we saw the characters and i think we can all agree everyone likes pretty much all of the characters they were all at least good um if not great to, for us but they, 
they get kind of put together and then they go on these different things. Okay, they do this and then this and then this. But we never actually see, okay, why narratively are we seeing them do this? What, why was this decided to be the scene that we see at this moment? There are a few exceptions. For example, the discussions between um, Cassius and Jin. But outside of those two... Cassian. Cassian, sorry. Um, yeah, Cassian. Outside of those two, um, what do we see between the others, really? Um, very limited. Uh, yeah, amount. I don't... I don't think you cut everything before that, but I, I definitely would have tweaked it a lot. Like to me, it, it's the same kind of thing that I have with like the the pod races. I don't hate the pod races, but I'd rather replace them with something else um, because I felt like they wasted some time. Just the Saw Gerrera thing. I thought like that could have been just different, so that I would care more. I I don't know. Like um, use them, use them. They they underutilize the character. That's to, that's what I thought. Like the entire of that sequence, like what what's the point of Sol? What does he add? Sol, sorry, what does he add to this? What does he add to the film? Like I that's, that's see, that question. Other, yeah. other than I mean, Force Whitaker acting like a crazy person, <laughs> but, but, which isn't see, a bad like, thing. But, but what does he act to the, like, oh, yeah, the film? What does he add to the characters? I love these scenes. Yeah, there's rays of light there where you go, okay, so this could be a character, but mm. it's not quite fleshed out for me. Like I mean, it's they didn't go. I don't know. I didn't need them to be. It's awkward in- introductions for like the pilot with like the octopus mind rape thing, yeah. um, and, and all this is being thrown at you at the same time. You don't really know, or I didn't, who Forrest Whitaker is. I mean, I don't know what his purpose is. I, I could guess, but it seems like, I mean, Antoine, you've talked about like recuts or reshoots and things like that. It seems like his part is diminished yeah. from what it should have been. Mm. Well, not even some. Well, yeah, probably yeah, diminished as well. But also, I feel like because Sagara, he's like from the Clone Wars series. They like added him yeah. from the Clone Wars, and I definitely feel that was a decision that was made after uh, um, they made the movie versus it being like something that naturally was like, oh hey, there's this character you can totally use. I felt like it was more like a like a, oh hey, like there's he this character. Let's similar. like let's try let's try and like, make confused. them fit. Oh, you know? Are you saying like they 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 had Forrest do his thing in this make and then they just decided you know, he looks vaguely enough like this character we could just say that's him? Is that what you're saying? I think in the writing process, like I think when, initially it wasn't like, oh, this is going to be Sagar. He's going to be, like, be in this okay. movie. Like that's, where, it was more of like, oh, like he wrote this character. Let's like try and fit Sagar over yeah. that uh, type of scenario. But that's like more of a, like a small, small thing to me. What would you do with the Sagar character that what would didn't I do, do for you in the movie? Because for um, me, I think it was fine. I think his, his um, psychology was interesting to look at. I think I would have. Because um, what's interesting about this movie that I thought that I noticed like right off the bat is that it's it's uh, one of the only times, maybe the only time, um, in a Star Wars film where there's a time jump because you meet Jen and she's a, a child, and then it, it cuts to her like as an adult. I want to see some of that. Like you show me yeah. a montage of her learning shit from Saw, and because at the moment when he's like, "Have you come here to kill me?" and it's like, "Well, what is she? What, what, I mean, what does she mean to you? Or what do you? What do? You, what did you think you meant to her? Because I'm not quite sure." They don't seem quite like, sure themselves like, as well when they're asking those questions. Yeah, yeah, I mean, even in that very scene, they make reference to like you know them getting split up during some like su- super yeah. crucial mission, but we don't know anything about it. Yeah, I mean, I'm okay with this scene. It's again earn the scene. Like show me who they are before you get to that scene. Show, don't like, pull them apart from one. me. Yeah, right. Okay. Sure, don't tell. Just a little bit, you know. It's all we yeah, I think there's a lot. Of, there's a lot of telling, but like, yeah, the psychology for for him, I think, was really interesting. Interesting to me because he was so far gone, and I think that's really apparent for anybody who's like watching him. Like, he's really uh, far gone, but to Jaded. the point where, where even he's when he gets like an actual hologram, an oxygen mask, and taking a hit anytime he's upset. <laughs> but well, like the issue, yeah. the issue with that, you, you, so you're saying he's so far gone, which is fine, and and that actually makes his like sacrifice make sense. But show me him before he's far gone, mm-hmm. like in this movie. Don't point to the Clone Wars or, or something. Yeah, which, exactly, exactly. You know, um, that's all I want. Like I'd be fine with the scene and everything, even the limited role that he has, if you showed me the impact he had on her. That's all I wanted. Yeah. And even his sacrifice is entirely pointless. Like he's not sacrificing anything; he's just refusing to leave and dying. Hey, it's like, do you feel like that? But if you show me that he's really just done, or like he's tired, or, or whatever, like I'd be okay with it. I'd be more okay with it. As would I. Like if it was like a silent moment where he looks up and he's like, I, "I, that's that's it. I've got nothing else." But he doesn't. He like he makes an active decision, as though he, it's it's almost like a captain going down with his ship scenario. And it's like there's no point. It's just a waste. You could be helping the rebellion after this moment, but instead you're just gonna die. It, and we don't have the the setup that would explain that he's done. 
he just kind of goes, I'm not running anymore. Well, no, you're just going to... If it was like an advancing I army, I get it. He's holding them off. He's taking as many down as he can, whatever. But it's just a tide. He's just, I'm not running from this. I'm not running. I'm just going to die. It's and and it, was too, it was too clean, too, for casting it, too, because casting had a mission, like, you know, or I forget the, the general who, who told him, like, hey, no, this mission's, like, forget Mon Mothma and what she just said. Like, hey, we're going <laughs> to yeah. kill. Which is something I actually really enjoyed in this movie. I liked how there was uh, fissures within the Rebel Alliance, how people were, like, were doing their own thing. Like, you're like, this is what the Alliance means to me. This is what the Alliance means to me. This is what the Alliance means to me. And they all had their own, like, it, it really is an alliance, not so much, um, like a, a, a concrete like army that has like one person saying the directions and this is what everyone's doing. Uh, so I like that there was like off-putting, like he was like, hey bro, like you gotta kill him, you know? Like, yeah. like I thought that was really awesome. And that right there is something from the EU and it does kind of show one of the big strengths and weaknesses of the Rebel Alliance because it's like when you got every single member of the, the Alliance is highly capable, ma- capable of making their own decisions on the fly and having their own plans which means that they can operate independently. They don't require quite so much support. But the problem is, is that reining all that in and getting all of these people to agree on something is almost impossible. Because you got, it's like you got some rebel leaders who are like, let's try and find some peaceful resolution and just re- depose Palpatine and reform the Empire back to the Republic. And others who are like, no, burn Coruscant, the Empire dies. Yeah, um, and I love the ideas that it tosses around inside this film. But um, I do think it kind of fumbles it a bit. Um, with the nature of how they kind of show each scene. Um, for example, the, the council meeting um, is kind of try, it's trying to show that the alliance is unified to an extent, but it's fractured in its ideas. But the What this movie really needed was a sort of Council of Elrond scene from Fellowship of the Ring where everyone starts standing up and arguing. Like that scene in Fellowship of the Ring where the bear, they're arguing about how to use the ring. It's like you got some people who are like, we want to we want to take the ring and use it as a weapon against Sauron. Others are like, no, no, don't touch that thing. It'll fuck you up. And then other people are just like, hey, let, let's hide the ring. Let's destroy the ring. Like, no one has a clear idea of what to do. And they're all just pushing their own agendas and just yelling at each other. That's exactly like, it. That's, the, sort that's, of, a, that's, that's, that's the scene that we got. No, it's not. Because at the end, nothing not, gets resolved. Not really. At the end of the Fellowship, Frodo stands up as the unifying voice and gets everyone together. And then you have the Fellowship of the Ring being founded. That's the moment I'm talking about. We didn't oh, get Oh, I see. That. So you, you want everybody to agree once Jin no, gave that no no I did, Jin I dad wanted to have nothing to do with this uh, in terms of the unifying speech I would want Mon Mothma because we haven't got a reason to care about her being the leader in any of the Star Wars films yet outside of the EU we, I wanted needed, her to be the unifying a, Elrond we needed a bit where we saw the entire rebel council actually standing up and joining to, and actually you know can unifying for once yeah like act, it's like a scene that where maybe Mon nice, Mothma but I don't steps think... in a scene where Mon Mothma steps into that council chamber and tells them, okay, so that little crew of renegades, they ran over to Scarif and they're raiding it, like, right now. What are we going to do? We well, need to do something. It, that, that's the it's also not about. as though, but it's not completely omitted, because, like, some guy hey. does come up and say, hey, they're gone, and, and, like, and then they send forces over there. Yeah, so, I mean, see them mobilizing. But, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mon Mothma's smile, that's my point. Smile, I can use this, and then, then we see her bringing everyone together with her political guile, and her, this is happening right now, we've lost our admiral, we need to go back yeah, and forth. The dynamic is still there, it's just not that scene. Yeah, but that's just, just that my point. So that, so that entire moment, but, the but, but it's speech. not the same as saying the Rebel Alliance doesn't come together, because they do. Yeah, but like, yeah, I guess. Kind of, it differently. Like, it's begrudging, is my point. It's, instead of this being this thematic natural moment. But I don't think it is. Moment, like, it, how, I don't feel like it's begrudging. Well, we, I see, mean, we see the Admiral and Mon Mothma, who were always for it in the first like, place, happy. The, but the others just the mustachioed pilot who comes to help him and he's got like a smile on his face and stuff like, yeah you know but he again he was military I... it, it was him um the admiral akbar stand in Mon Mothma. Leader, Rad- they, <laughs> they Radis, were, Radis. yeah they were all Radis, willing yeah. they were all the ones who were for it in the first place it was the all the politicians that were going no there's no hope yeah and they left and they vanished we never saw them again so it's like that scene would have been that as they're all leaving Mon Mothma brings them back together and says this is the situation what are we going to do about it gives a speech Proves Mon Mothma is the leader of the Alliance in people's eyes for, for one, because anyone who hasn't watched the EU or read the EU content don't know what she is really. She's just one person who gave that speech about Bothans originally. And then we see her as being the unifying force that sends them off on the way. Narratively speaking, we would have then seen the Alliance come together and go on this mission. It would have, to me, added to the weight of the end scene. Rather than a begrudging collective of half the Alliance coming together to save You're saying just mission, because... It was You're saying just because that currently. scene's not there, it's begrudging, which I think is... No, because we don't see any of the people who the said there was no hope changing their mind, or at least p- pulling together They're under Mon Mothma. Right. They left by okay. that point. They'd left. Okay, well, It was just whatever. the military right. guys, which to me was... I don't think it's as bad. Let's, you're right, we well, should have moved on. 
Sorry. Minor flaw, but they, they kind of set it up, but they didn't pay it off. It's like they just kind of cut things off with them arguing and then having the team going on the raid and then just left it at that. They never had some scene where this was resolved. Yeah. Instead of rallying behind uh, really? the idea of Rogue One, it was about let's go save this mission that if we don't, we've lost anything ever, every way. And not even the entire council agreeing on it or at least begrudging to it kind of thing. They just vanish. This so, was... Okay, sorry. Technical glitch. Uh, back now. Okay. On. So, discussing the Empire Orson Krennic. Questions, comments, let's hear it. First scene. Well, I will say this. Oh, Oops, sorry. <laughs> Just an initial impression. First scene, loved him. Everything else, I liked him. But he was it, it was kind of just more of a generic character for me. It was the first scene, I loved how natural he was. Yeah, like, I, I definitely loved that first scene, for sure. Like, I was on board with Krennic. I was on yeah. board with Krennic the whole entire movie. I think he was completely fine and serviceable. Yeah. You know, I loved the fact that Krennic was a convincing a convincingly accurate sociopath this is a guy who has right. zero empathy for other people he's basically just brimming with superficial charm it's like he's polite but it's a very slimy politeness that you know is fake and it's like he's clearly got a grandiose sense of self-worth like his entire motivation is based around the pro well he's basic throughout the whole movie he's just asking the question dude where's my respect I built the fucking Death Star. Yeah. That's Out of all the new characters introduced... Oh. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. No, it's just I, I was going to say, out of all the new characters introduced in this film, I actually think he surprised me the most. Because I was actually a little bit afraid that they were just going to use him as like a cheap stand-in for Tarkin and they were just going to do a little copy-paste job, but... That, no, that I actually... was exactly what I was scared of as well. I was scared yeah. he was just going to be an awkward stand-in for Tarkin because they didn't want to recast Peter Cushing. But no, no they... he did a great job. He was a great character. He had his own motivations, yeah. his own personality, and I was genuinely he... surprised. He earned his cape. Very much. <laughs> yeah. Yes. His epic, his epic cape. That cape. Yeah. Uh, that's another thing and about his, him that stood his, out was his, his design. And his epic Imperial rain slicker. I want that rain slicker. <laughs> <laughs> oh, when he was on uh, Edu? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Cool. yeah. No, he he definitely was a joy was a joy to see. Whenever he was on screen, it was just pure gold throughout. throughout. And I forget, what was the, the actor who portrayed him? What was his name again? Uh, ben, ben Mendelsohn. Ben Mendelsohn. Uh, he's the same guy who played Daggett in The Dark Knight Rises. So Yeah, yeah which I didn't want to see that. Or... I did not. <laughs> you didn't want to see Daggett. Like, no, necessary. because he's, he's annoying. Like, he's... Uh, if, I, I watched that movie recently, and he's just so hard to, like, to stomach. And I, he's purposely designed to be that way, so it's okay. But I didn't want to watch that, the whole movie, this time. I'm no, so no, he's, he's a really just... good actor. No, he's different. He's kind of like um, Gary Oldman uh, mm -hmm. in the way that he kind of, like, dissolves into yeah. his roles. Um, in how he's also his character. Yeah, he, like, he's in quite a lot of stuff, and he's, like, always... Yeah. The character. I've never seen him in anything else, but that. Uh, dark, yeah, so you, you might have. Things. Yeah, that's the thing about Gary Oldman. Like, I don't uh, think so. People, uh, I I wouldn't know if I'd seen him elsewhere. I don't think. Um, right. The chameleons. Uh, but yeah, I liked yeah, him as a character. Um, I but my point is that I think I most liked him in that first scene because it was kind of he didn't have to be the imperial um, uh, character in that moment. Imperial. He was he was just the guy yeah. who was meeting this other person who he's a friend with or at least an associate. I like him. He's, he's, with. he's like very indirectly like at least for me because i don't like tarkin i never have he's like my audience surrogate sort of thing up there because his um his reaction to tarkin is my reaction to tarkin like, everything tarkin says it, it just boggles my mind and like it it pisses him off so i could empathize with him where i've never been able to with tarkin mm. I'm surprised he managed to leave that room alive after having bad mouth talking though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that that was I, when I first watched it. I was like, Tarkin let him do that, but I guess because he sent the information, he's like, hey, one of your like people let it out. So he's like, yeah, you go investigate that. So I thought it was more of like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you're gonna leave. Get out of here. Mm. Like more I, so I, than I tell you. Don't let the door the hit interact, you on I, the way out. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're gonna what? find out it was your fuck up. Oh, shoe. Yeah. Mm. But. Yeah. but. Yeah, I, I actually liked Krennic. It's like he was an effective villain. And one of the things uh, Matt mentioned in his review that I really agreed with is that even though this guy was a slimy piece of shit, you couldn't help but sympathize with him to a certain extent because a lot right. of his complaints, a lot of the points he was raising were actually valid and legitimate. 
He yeah. is the I mean, guy who built the Death Star. And it's like a lot of the crap that went wrong wasn't even his fault. He was just in the yeah. wrong place at the wrong time when shit started blowing up. He had the worst, worst day ever. Like, I was <laughs> yeah. yeah, he did have the worst day ever. Worst day ever. He, and yeah. But it's not his that, fault. Yeah. He's got bad worst health. Worst day ever. Day He's ends a... with him getting toasted by the Death Star. Yeah. Pretty like bad, his, you know, all things considered. His rival like got... his direct superior. And it's just like this childish pissing contest. Like, oh, yeah. this weapon's not going to work. and So I didn't invite our superiors to watch. Oh, it works. Well, I first spoke of this idea 20 years ago. It, I mean, it was it was perfectly <laughs> like... Yeah. That's what I think of as Tarkin. And like I, I loved seeing that. And Krennic, I'm, I'm right there with him. Like, I'd be pissed too. Yeah, he's... he's... Yeah understandably pissed and he's not incompetent he goes around trying to solve the problems and everything just scales out of his control or less so that because again he's not incompetent it's more a fact that everything else works yeah. against him like he just happens to be in the wrong place at the wrong time with really bad help on his side yeah it's like it's like this one of the things i liked about the scene where he goes to a vader's castle <laughs> We're talking Vader now. One of the things I liked is when he visited wait, Vader's wait, castle. Before, and... before we go to Vader's castle, let's talk about Tarkin. We completely skipped over Tarkin. Digi yes. Tarkin. Digi Tarkin. Yes. Yes. Made by pious thick knees. It, that was incredible. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't perfect, but it was at least over the uncanny valley on a subconscious <laughs> level. You could ignore it. I was completely caught off guard. I legitimately... Well, I almost didn't think he was going to be in this movie. Yeah, you... I'm, I'm serious. That goes back to my complaints yeah. about yeah. Krennic. I thought Krennic was just going to stand in for him. They might mention Tarkin by name a few times, and legitimately, when I first saw the movie, I, like my jaw just dropped. I was like, seriously? It's okay. the reflection. It's the reflection. You think, oh, okay, we're going to be talking to the back of his head for a bit. Understandable. Right, exactly. They have to work what but they want. But then he turns around. around. Oh, impressive. <laughs> Most impressive. Very impressive. But for me, I'm for me, did... Digi Sorry. Tarkin was right in the middle of the Uncanny Valley for me, but to me that worked. That really worked in the character's favor because Tarkin is supposed to be someone you find to be creepy and unsettling, and the digital, slightly unreal face gave you another reason to find him creepy and unsettling. It was a lot like Jeff Bridges as Clue in Tron Legacy. It wasn't realistic, but it worked because it wasn't realistic because it just kind of it sent chills down your spine because this thing is not human and that's exactly what tarkin is he's not fucking human he's just he's a freaking monster but what's really great is like the the effects were never distracting you know the whole yeah. the, the the digital face was done so well and the voice yeah, was, was just so perfect and the way they shot say, it like yeah yeah some some people are saying it was and i'm surprised by that i think it's as good a no, job I'm, as you can expect yeah pretty much pretty much yeah it wasn't perfect it was a pretty Flawless resurrection, all things considered. It wasn't perfect, we're, but to me, it wasn't like you were subconsciously noticing the differences. You were just consciously noticing, which is why it was part of the right. value for me. It wasn't like, right. a, ooh, that's which, weird. No, it was a, oh, that's here's cool. how I, here's how I know it works for someone who doesn't isn't aware of Peter Cushing or like his performance or anything like that. My girlfriend and um, goddaughter, when we watched it, like made no. I even asked them. I was like, "Hey, what do you think about um, Tarkin?" Like, you know, they're like, "Who? Like uh, the, the old guy, the old guy with the gray hair, who was like mad at the old guy with the white." I had to like explain <laughs> things like <laughs> with the white suit. Um, that guy. And um, they're like, "Oh yeah, he was cool," but no mention of like that not being a real person at all. Like I say, I think it's if you're actively looking for it, yeah, you're gonna find it because like it's not. When you put it under a microscope, it's definitely not going to work. And for me, I think it works perfectly, perfectly when he's not talking. Yeah. When he, he's just just looking, I'm yeah. like, that's that's it, a person. It's that's, the mouth animation that's yeah. not quite got perfect. Yeah, so it's close, the, it's the mouth. but it's the and mouth yeah. movement it's and the, the jaw. Lip sync and the... really, that's, yeah, and the, and the, yeah. So yeah. That's the only but, thing. Yeah. But for what they had, like, it was the best they could possibly do with the technology well, they have these we're days. We're almost there. Like, but, literally. Like, but when they remaster it, it's Realistically fine. speaking, yeah. We're just on that cusp. <laughs> They'll remaster it five years down the line. It'll be even better. It's fine. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Maybe. But for me, Very it was possibly. also, funny enough, um, kind of damaged by the fact that I knew the second he opened his mouth, who was mo-capping him um, from the posture and the and the speech pattern. And it was it, Guy Henry, from he plays a few things. Uh character in harry potter he's pious he's pious thick knees in harry potter 7 yeah Let's and, say you pious and in this he's playing uh henrik hansen from holby city which i only know peripherally but i love the character um and it, yeah it, sh it shone through immediately but uh but the fact that that didn't distract from the actual character of Tarkin as well is just it goes to show how great the uh, animation of the face was because mm -hmm. and fits. also how great the actor is because it's yep. like if you ignore the mocap it's still guy henry giving a great performance as Tarkin. Yeah. If you just listen to the audio, like you would think 
it's just you're like watching New Hope. It's Peter Cushing for most yeah. of it. Yeah. yeah, like from the neck down, that's all Guy Henry. So yeah, yeah. It's just Ooh, I mean, it's not like his physique was all that different. So I love it. That's brilliant. Yeah. All right, cool. Now we go to the castle. Now we go to the castle. Oh, before okay, that, sorry, okay, okay. Leia, just quickly. I didn't like Leia as much. Leia, well, no, no, Leia's like the end, but 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 I, I Leia was I, really I, fine. I have I have to agree with that though because for me it's like Peter the Peter Cushing Uncanny Valley thing worked because it gave you another reason to find a character who's supposed to be creepy creepy. With Leia, that doesn't work because it's like I see the digital Leia face and I cringe. And you're not supposed to cringe when you see Leia. I did not and cringe. I cringe. I didn't I, cringe either. I mean, there's all. definitely. I thought it was perfect. I, I mean, I it's the, different, but it's not. It's not severely I thought, different. I thought the moment was a little hokey, but the way she looked. Right. It, yeah. It, it didn't. That's not what I. I didn't care. For I me, mean, again, it, it, it didn't look fake, at least not to me. For me, the moment like, was. She's also in like an was, extremely well lit. Yeah, like, that's the thing for me. Yeah, bright, right. with like bright white help. clothing on yeah. too. You yeah, know? yeah. Leia, so, like, if she'd been in a darker room, it'd be fine. Leia pretty much yeah. always was well lit in the originals, but with the HD re- um, quality on the camera now, it kind of makes it look. She needs some imperfections, is what I'm saying. It took for me to make that face work. She was too kind of perfectly smooth and porcelain, um, which is why I didn't like it as much. But it was just it was still great animation. It was only a minor thing. I just preferred the Tarkin version, is all. Um, but anyway, sorry, yeah. Vader. Yeah. Castle Vader. Okay, 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 okay. Time to put on my Vader hat. Well, one thing we got <laughs> to say about the castle. About Vader's, one thing we got to say about Vader's castle. Now we know what the Dark Lord Sauron does when he's not at home. He rents out to Vader. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it was like all things considered, just just speaking from fanboy perspective, it was great to them. Like, what? Hey, wait, hold on, really quick. That kind of works though, because you remember in my uh, Voldemort versus Vader, they actually fight. <laughs> they fight there. You decide to have them fight and fight so, even more. So work. technically, Vader did win, and he went, and he rented out to Sauron. Oh, it totally you, fits. You, yeah, <laughs> Antoine, your your video's canon. Your video's canon. <laughs> Antoine's video oh, is canon, Jesus. everybody. It's <laughs> <That's> so great. <laughs> Mustafar is Middle Earth. <laughs> uh, canon. Oh, we have proof. <laughs> Middle Earth after Sauron won because, of course, he would turn the whole place into a blasted lava wasteland. <laughs> oh, there is Go a long, ahead, long time Evan, you were talking. I was... <laughs> okay. Uh, no, but like just speaking, like just from pure fanboy perspective, it was really nice of them to canonize Vader's castle mm. and actually Vader? see its inner, inner, work, inner workings. Like the only thing they changed because the design, if you compare it to other castles Bath, that Vader has, Fast Castle from yeah, uh, yeah, from, well, Fast Castle, Fast Castle on Vajun, which yeah. showed up in uh, Jedi Academy, which is basically right. just acid taken instead of lava. It's like basically the it's same really design. that is pretty much the only difference. The design's pretty similar. The whole aesthetics is just on. It's on Mustafar now. Well, it's because everybody yeah. bases everything off of uh, Ralph McQuarrie, like, and that's mm. what like everything is based right. off of. Fast, <laughs> yeah. Fast Castle was based off of that, and this is too. And well, Vader is certainly rich and powerful enough that it makes sense that he would have multiple places of residence. And right. Well, I don't know about you, but he <laughs> seems to he seems to me to be the sort of person who actually would like to have his place of residence on a hostile planet with a inhospitable landscape. Look out my window. Lava field. Yeah. You well, you know, Vader, Vader has powerful. some, it just Vader has some experience like, on that planet, too. So, you know. It, yeah, it's t- styles of the rich and famous <laughs> Star Wars edition. Yeah. I um, guess, yeah. Well, I guess the only one I never, I never, I never saw Vader uh, in his castles as something that Vader would do. I don't feel like he was like an opulent kind of like, kind of well, character. Well, but I think that's just, I think that's just me. I think, I think, I think they me. did. I think they did get that the get that across in this movie though, because when you look at the way that place is designed, yes, it's, it's monumental, but it's it Aaron, is minimalist. It's like the interior nothing, is purely functional. It, like you don't. Yeah, there's nothing it's like, to appreciate. It's not aesthetically. Right. You know, he's not. It's, it's not like he's like on a big like elaborate throne with all his trophies, you know, hanging hanging behind him or anything like that. It's yeah, more it's about like the, the imperialism of it than the showboating. He's doing it to be yeah. imperious. Yeah, it's like. That's all he cares about, yeah. the order side of it. And also on Mustafar. Yeah, and he me, is imperious. Yeah, and also on Mustafar, for me, it seems like it's sort of the Anakin shining through the Vader and how he just wants to wallow in his failure and his self hatred. Like, I'm oh, yep. boiling in that little yeah. um, tube. But it's also. On the it's not as though they so. said. It's not as though they said he lived there. This is where he happened to be for whatever well, yeah. reason. Like, you know, Summer I mean, home. one of his places of <laughs> residence. Summer, Summer home. Because yeah. if you think oh. about it, 
in, in all the other movies, he's doing something, and this is the first time where he's like detached from like the main plot. So it's right. just like you have to you have to go to wherever he is for the first real time, as opposed to him just being there, mm. being out yeah. and about. What did you yeah. guys Sith think Lord's of his uh, tube treatment? But it like makes him just chilling out in the back to tank. Take, back take to in. tank. What, yeah, yeah, I think that's cool. I mean, I, for us saying like, oh, what is he doing there? Like, what? I think it's good that he was there, particularly because he's on Mustafar. And also because he was uh, regenerating himself. He was he was just healing. He was going through a healing treatment. And I think him being there and as a Sith, you know, they they gain their power from aggression, from hatred, self-hatred. Um, for him to be there, I'm sure that that spirit is going to be there for him as he's healing himself. He's also using the dark side. So I think all of that combined, like, actually works to what yeah. – why he's one, there, of the you thing, know. one of the things I found most interesting reading about Vader, especially in Shadows of the Empire, is discussing how Vader is using the dark side of the Force to try and heal his damaged yeah. lungs. And he's yeah. able to achieve temporary results, but the problem is, is that it because it's based on the dark side, it's based on maintaining his anger and hatred, and his joy at being free from the respirator breaks his concentration and the healing... Mm -hmm changes it was so, also his joy of luke skywalker because a lot of the time is when he was thinking about luke because this is after uh empire and, and his just meditation of the jedi yeah his meditation was that um he'll think about he'll be proud of luke for a second he'd be like oh i'm so glad that i have for one i have a son and two like he's like mm -hmm. so good and he's like and then when he has a happiness that's when his uh, dark side meditation would be like, oh wait i can't breathe anymore <laughs> let me like go back into my rest <laughs> um so yeah like that, that's... in the hate rain yeah. in the hate yeah yeah, yeah. 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 almost had a nice happy moment sorry dark side <laughs> Um, yep. But yeah, it's oh, one one thing I did like though is that I got the impression from the scene where Krennic visited and his audience with Vader, the Vader actually respected Krennic and didn't mind him so much yeah. because yep. it's like Krennic's reaction when he gets force choked is like, "What's happening? <laughs> what the fuck?" It's yeah. like this yeah. is the first time this guy's ever been force choked in his, well, in his entire life. Did I mean? Do you guys know otherwise? Is that the first time he met Darth I Vader? I thought it was the first time that met. I felt like I it was. So. Yeah, I so. because yeah. I th that's another Most thing likely. about the location of his castle. Like, if you come here, you must have some kind of balls. Like, I mean, yeah. like, <laughs> so, I mean, uh, you, you know. And who voluntarily goes to Vader without being yeah. Yeah. Captain Nida? Yeah. Oh, but, while we're on the yeah, scene, like, do you think we should one, address... One, oh. Just one other thing I want to say about Krennic that does kind of go back to Vader's own thing. Like, especially in the expanded universe, it's discussed how... Vader gets on very well with the Stormtrooper Corps, who basically worship him because he respects their training and their ability. He respects the fact that these are the guys who actually go out into the inhospitable places and do the Empire's dirty work. Whereas he hates the fucking Officer Corps because so many of the officers only got where they are because of political connections, wealth, and nepotism. Which means half of them are fucking incompetent, so he doesn't like them at all. Whereas Krennic, in his backstory, is discussed as a, kind of a working-class Joe who clawed his way to the top through grit and determination. And Vader would definitely respect that. So it's like he wasn't openly hostile towards Krennic, and even the bit where he force chokes him seemed more chiding than threatening. It's like, it's more so, dude, careful not to bite off more than you can chew. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. And he even, like, I think, I don't know if anyone knows it, but at the very end of the scene, Krennic has a little smile. Like, it's not yeah, like... he's grinning, yeah. 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 Um, there are two things he got I the have message. to point out. Um, because he, and also because he got approval from Vader, you know, kind of. He's yeah, like, if I'm back on the project, like, I'm, it's like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, not easily gained. Even though Vader no. doesn't enforce it in the slightest. <laughs> that wasn't enough. Yeah. He doesn't uh, care. Yeah, he just doesn't give a crap. Um, just a perfect form, by the way. Yeah, but that's yeah. the thing. That's why I have to two, like two yeah. things. One is completely minor, and I just want to uh, ask it of curiosity, but I'll do that second. Um, the first thing, I didn't like how when he turned around, he was in that weird, like, hand yeah, pose. The I, it's yeah. Like, that is a ready-made meme pose right there. He should have just turned around, like, not even raised arms, just looking at him, like, what? It yeah. would have been we know much happened. better if if, yeah. if we didn't see his arms move. Yeah. Much better. It's I just I hated it. Would have been it. better. I would have, it would have been better if he didn't even turn around. Like he just kind of looked looked back. That, like that, when he yeah, said that's that, what I mean. He's kind of looking going, over yeah. his head, and you just see his eyes, his the peripheral. Like, yeah, that's what I mean. But a slight turn. Um, it's just it. It would work so much better. It's because too what, exaggerated. Yeah, it's too exaggerated, which makes it cheesy and over the top, which Vader should never be. But also, it's the whole effort thing. Like the more effort Vader has to put into something, the less Vadery he is when he's dealing with this kind of problem. It's like he should just be like what slight glance, like. <laughs> 
not like I'm going to turn around and look at don't choke on your aspirations. It was like a Captain Hook kind of thing. I was like, ugh, <laughs> didn't like it. That was more, I think that was more for the audience than anything. But like, yeah, I agree. I didn't, I didn't really realize yeah, that. Because yeah. like, yeah. yeah. the way it was shot as well, you, you expect no arms. This. And then at the last minute, you just it kind of enters view. He's doing this weird pose. It's like, ugh, didn't like it. But the second thing yeah. is completely minor. I'm just curious. Did anyone notice like the neck piece seemed weird on his armor? Yes. Did you? It yep. was weird, but I think that that's actually how it was in the original trilogy, though. But I don't think like, it is. It, looked it may be. It always looked, it always looked yeah. weird. Oh, it always looked bad. Because to me, I don't remember <laughs> it being odd. Like, I remember the, it being more under the cloak kind of thing before. But this time, it was like it was like he had a jowl. It was like I wasn't sure it was just me noticing it. Yeah. No, I know it's too. For me, the other weird thing was in most other scenes with Vader in the other movies, you're actually able to see the little chain clasp that holds his cape on. Mm. Because right. whereas mm -hmm. in this one, it was kind of hidden underneath the helmet collar which kind of like Callan was saying he's got a bit of a jowl it comes out a little bit further than it did yeah that, that maybe just the only reason it was because the, ch the chain was underneath rather than above and it's again it's a minor thing yeah. I, was just, I wasn't sure if it was my it, imagination like am i it, remembering vader wrong or something yeah and, yeah. and it might also account for the different of the proportions different, of the new yeah. actor of course yeah yeah, yeah it's very minor it's like I'm not, I'm not david krauss in his prime it. it's like he was like six foot six foot six and he was six, seven he was a body eight, build. Like, mm. yeah yeah it's like he was huge, so it's like he filled out the armor and the helmet really well, whereas this new guy is probably a bit smaller. So it's like the helmet itself, exact same proportions, but on a slightly thinner body with a kind of a thinner chest, it's like it sticks out further because the guy's smaller. Mm. And the mm -hmm. other thing that I've just remembered as well, again, minor, was did anyone else have a problem with the way he walked in? Like the kind of you and Vader walking, dude. I, I, know, I know, I know. It sounds like a minor nitpick, but for with Vader, his whole half of his, what makes Vader Vader is just the aesthetic design, and that comes into movement, motion, you know, the everything. Like I was, it was like for me and the rest of the film did amazingly with Vader. Um, uh, it has dude, to be I like, like his inner. I kind of like how you just see the shadow as it's open. No, no, no. That was amazing. The shot was, was fantastic. I loved that because talking about when dwarfed. he's walking toward. I'm talking about when like, he actually walking. starts yeah. walking. He kind of does it like this sort of thing, and I felt I didn't like it. I, I wasn't sure if anyone else had the same opinion. We, we can't see what you're doing. Yeah, we can't see you, bro. <laughs> that's true. Sorry. Everyone else can. That's, that's, that's okay. That's okay. That's okay. Um, the, the initial walk I had no problem with, the, the walking part that I had a problem with is when he walked around Krennic, when he was about to go back to his chambers, he, like, like went around him. Like, he, like, put his shoulder and went around him. I don't know if you guys noticed. I guess you didn't. But he, like, sidestepped him. And I was like, wait. I mean... Like, that would seem weird. Like, either, like, push through him or, like, just don't even make that a thing. Yeah, like, don't he shoot literally, it. Like, yeah. he went, he went, he went, like... A little awkward. <laughs> and then yeah. after I'm like, why are you... You're Vader. You don't... What? Like, that Yeah, I mean, obviously, don't push him out of the way. Just don't get shoot out the of doorway. Yeah. 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 Just, and it would have almost added to the scene to... if the guy kind of scrambled out of the way kind of thing. Like, just, like, oh, God, like, panicking. Right. He yeah. flinches yeah. from yeah. walking behind. It was weird. It was very small. Oh, oh, there was a very simple... It is true, yeah. <laughs> There's actually a scene like that in the novel Death Star where one of the characters in the book is walking down a hallway and Vader's coming in the other direction. And this guy does the sort of posturing he typically does with other officers of the Empire where he just keeps on walking and doesn't move and to see what Vader does. That but then <laughs> wises up and gets out of the way at the last second because he knows that Just, if you be walk into Vader, Vader will win. He will knock you over <laughs> and keep Vader on will going. Win. Yeah, that's a different. That's a different. That's a different kind of it's, dude right there, bro. That's a different. It's, just, it's, just look at him. Basically, yeah. Car versus bike. What Does he look going typical to you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, that was only the thing I wanted to talk about because like it was minor, but every little detail adds on to Vader, yeah. so it's, it matters. Um, it's hard to I, walk I, around I, in there. I did like how when he was talking to Critic, how he was talking about how the Death Star is making more problems than itself. Yes, I love that. It was so. It was so. My the ability to cause line. problems yeah. has certainly been. Everything <laughs> was so Vader when it came to what he was saying yeah. and how he was acting. Like, yeah. Even um, the end shot when he jumps in and just takes out a transport. <laughs> well, I'm here to yeah, solve your I mean, problems just, again. Just jumps out yeah, of well, hyperspace well, well, and I'm going to smash into your fleet yeah. and just whatever. I mean, it's Vader. <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't. That, that's Vader's operating style in a nutshell. Yeah. He's an immovable rock. Yeah. You wail on him, and you achieve nothing. Yeah, Another thing I really like. Vader is Havel the Rock from Dark Souls. That's what Vader is. <laughs> Havel the fucking Rock. Another thing I'd like Havel to praise too is his voice. It's it wasn't like identical uh, to the original trilogy, but I do think it was better than Rebels. Agreed. There are a few lines that are a bit off because of, of the age problem, but there are some that are just perfect. Like, um, yeah. I can't remember which one it was. There's one between... when he's, I think it's when he's turning away. Um, 
the, the awkward shot, as you said, Antoine, he says something and it's like, oh my god, that sounds so gloriously vague. So, uh, make sure not to choke on your aspirations. No, no, that was the cheesy line I didn't before, like. There was one before the, that. Oh, before that. It was that. like an inconsequential uh, middling line. It was like, it was some, the way it was said, though, it was like, oh, god, Vader is the best villain ever. Um, yeah. I don't think he was, he was um, saying anything of substance, does, it was just the, the tone. Does the well, old, I, I love but... it when he, I love it when he's, like, walking, like, Krennic's trying to, like, plead his case and Vader just walks closer to him. <laughs> And, he, and Chris like, uh, um, um, well, maybe. <laughs> that that was just basically it's like brilliant. he was like definitely, 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 maybe. Uh, uh, can, can and the room it? suddenly reeks of urine. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. matter how right you feel in front of Vader, you are going to be wrong. Um, yeah, that's he why does the sound older Dwarf than thing. he did, but he doesn't sound infirm. He's still mm. like the man. Like, yeah. like he's. You it can't ignore him. So, yeah, yeah, and it's so much better than Rebels. Like I don't oh. even watch Rebels, but I heard that, and that was a joke. And yeah. I knew it was James Earl Jones too, so it was sad. Yeah. But whatever. It's just the way they mixed it, man. It's yeah. just the, it's the, it. it's the resonance of that of those few midlines. It's just oh, so. Maybe this it. movie will like motivate the Rebels crew to change it. <laughs> hopefully. That's no, fun. I think it was more of a style of choice, though. It's just that we don't agree with the style of choice, but yeah. like a lot of a lot of stuff in Rebels is a style of choice. Like it's all True. deliberate. The way they do it, but um, it's just a matter of if we agree with it or not. But um, uh, I also thought when when he was coming out the Bakta, like when it was coming out, I was like, "Are we gonna see Hayden right now?" Are yeah, I know. I was so <laughs> I was just waiting to see that. I was like, "Wait, is this happening? Is this happening?" They wouldn't. Yeah, they I wouldn't. was like, "Oh wait." I, know, I mean, I wouldn't mind, but which a lot of people better. would. <laughs> well, which I think is better too, because if you're watching potentially Rogue One before you're watching the original trilogy, that's kind of how the mystery of Vader happens. That you almost see, oh, kind of gone, especially mm-hmm. in Empire. Um, you're like, almost oh, see, oh, kind of mm-hmm. gone. It's like it holds up that mystery which i think yeah. is really cool it doesn't really work That's if you watch point. it yeah. one to three but it works if you so now if you want to do the machete method it could be now you can do rogue one <laughs> a new hope empire <laughs> find out the big twist and then watch one two three then watch six yeah the, machete adds, method. the best thing i love about that method is it adds the time difference between luke um training like i actually feel like it's been a while since you've seen him but um right so i'd be able to start yeah. the back to tank i wasn't a big fan of the idea of him letting people see him like that again minor thing but for me it felt like vader like would never want there. anyone to or, see well the red guards, guards too yeah i just remembered them yeah which again it's a minor thing them, it's whatever. a minor thing but it's just like for me it was like i feel like he would never want anyone to ever see that it would be like a very yeah, personal that, that, well that one dude movie. like kneeling down with the cloak who everybody was talking about in the original well, trailer like obviously evan god amounts to nothing <laughs> he amounts to absolutely nothing i know he's it's basically so pointless. just vader's butler and that's it <laughs> yeah and that's like, it, says, it says something that his butler, butler is oh, made to dress like palpatine as well i love that <laughs> yes that's yeah, pretty it's funny like, i want to boss around my boss <laughs> butler a cloak. Yeah, but like it, they could have just it, had like one of the red guards just kind of like turn to the tank and be like, "Lord Vader, you know, Director Krennic has arrived." I'm a robot really for some reason. <laughs> Hopefully, with that, that um, you know uh, what I mean. I know, I know. I'm just yeah, no, no, no. I, actually, I, I, don't you I mean. actually think that instead of red guards there, they should have perhaps had some kind of bodyguard droid, similar yeah. to the Magna Guards. He prefers like, droids. Kind of Self-made <laughs> droids. Mechanized nature of Vader's crib. It's like Vader. Vader likes droids. He mm. surrounds himself with machines. He likes straight lines, hard angles. You know, clicking gears. He's built it's machines. Like, like just calm himself. Even as Vader, we've seen this. Um, I'm not sure. Yeah, it's like him. there's a freaking the brilliant piece of fan art of Vader just sitting there tinkering with his Tie Fighter, like not wearing his cape, just sitting there in the bodysuit and the helmet, like as if it's just some outfit he's got to wear. Not with his cape on, not trying to intimidate anyone, just sitting there, just machines working. But again, Leave he has to alone. Like, completely alone because no one, you can't break the idea of Vader in anyone else's mind. So that's why I didn't like the tank scene. That's all. But again, minor thing. Go, but we've spoken on Vader, do, I think. Gonna do a, a segue here because the reason for that Butler guy, um, and it's something we, 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 I think we all read Aftermath, but it's, uh, it's mm-hmm. part of he's part of that Sith cult that 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 was kind of a uh, brewing. Right. That yeah. was kind of new, new to the canon. Uh, he's part of he's part of that. Like he's one of those guys. I thought he was the the same one from Aftermath, but he's actually different. When I got the visual dictionary, oh, but okay. it's, he's part of that same. Like you know, he they like they like like hold the Sith up in high regard, just as uh, Chirrut Imwe held the uh, the Jedi in the Force uh, in high regard and protect. The Kyber, the Kyber oh, crystals on. I don't even know his name. He's just Donnie Yen to me. Uh, <laughs> they say it like three times, but every time they say it, it's so fast. It. Don't yeah. really know. Like, yeah. 
that bef- just well, before we jump on that segue, that was another thing I want to think because I'll forget about it otherwise. Did anyone else miss some lines? Like some lines they just didn't hear or didn't understand because they were being said by completely different actors as well, just different people saying different things. Anyone miss anything? Or was that just me? I, yep. it, it, I missed I had a, a couple like, lines it on the first yeah. go on the first viewing, but I caught but, them on the second. Yeah, at the first I missed, time I was like, I missed wait, a what? few oh, things. Yeah, like a second. lot of the scene, a lot of the lines where they told you a character's name. It's like stuff I forgot. Like Donnie Yen and his a little heavily armored blaster buddy. Bays. Bays, yeah. Yeah. I I I totally did forgot their names the first time around. Didn't catch the names the point where their names were stated. Second time around I did. It's like, oh, Donnie Yen's name is Chira Inwe. Okay, cool. Yeah, and the other guy's name is whatever. Yeah, it's a relatively <laughs> minor thing, but I feel like the names could have been said a few more times for the sake of because they're not easy names to remember in the first place, but uh, yeah, that was yeah. the only thing. Like, actually have scenes where they're referring to each other by name more frequently. Mm. Yeah, but again, that comes down to the fact that they didn't have too much to say to each other, unfortunately. But yeah, sorry, the character of Jimmy, what do you guys think of them? Uh, Bass and Jimmy. Cheering the Bass? I, uh, I, I, like, I like Cheering a lot. I kept waiting for him to ignite a lightsaber, and he never did. <laughs> Yeah, it was yeah. Kind of, that was kind of a bummer, but they, they didn't want Jedi, though, which I understand. That silver thing off his wooden thing, then that's fine, mm. and then, then I wouldn't have expected it. <laughs> that's what someone said. They were like, oh, they were expecting it to be like a lightsaber staff. Even like know? holding it like in his face, I'm like, oh, he's gonna do it. Oh. Gonna do it. He, he does <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah, um, I liked both characters. Um, I just wanted more to be done with them, especially between them. Um, they they kind of just sat in the background for all the film, um, and they kind of stole a lot of scenes, even though they weren't doing anything. I think they were fine because they did exactly what they needed to as secondary characters. Not even secondary characters, like... Tertiary. I can never say... Yeah, tertiary characters. Tertiary. Um, and they did exactly what they needed to. But um, I think they best represent what Gareth Edwards' original pitch for the movie was um, at the panel uh, celebration. Uh, Evan, why weren't you there, by the way? Or you already left. You already left. Didn't you leave on Sunday? Yeah, I only had the tickets for for that oh, okay. day, for that, um, that one day. Remember? Yeah, at the panel, which apparently now that's the day that Josh Trank got uh, fired because they said that he was a uh, sick. Like uh, during that day, they're like, "Oh yeah, we have Gareth Edwards and Josh Trank. He's sick because he couldn't make that. it." <laughs> yeah, but then like like the day after, we're like, "Oh no, he was fired." Um, but uh, originally, Gareth Edwards had said that this is a movie about that the gods, our gods, are no longer here to save us, and it's just about us. So I thought that's what this whole movie. I mean that theme didn't really kind of carry over into the the final product which is often how that happens with, from pitch to uh, final product mm. um but i feel like that still kind of um was still present with uh Imway and the uh the guardians of uh the, the kyber crystals on uh, jetta okay. a little bit they spelled kyber wrong as well, well so that was a minor thing for me yeah <laughs> for me i yeah. personally hate disney canon kyber crystals for reasons i've explained in the past they basically do you, do you like know what they did to them crystal- they turned them into an all-purpose MacGuffin. Do you, I mean, do you know what the Ahsoka Tano like novel did to them? No. I don't want to know, so don't <laughs> tell me because I tell know me, it's going to piss me off. Tell me I do want to know. You really – okay. So essentially – I mean you kind of oh, see God. it now because you see that she had the necklace the whole time and it was like an, an opaque uh, crystal. Yeah. Mm. So apparently now they're all like that. And that right. a Jedi can change them, like change the color at will. Oh. Like, so what happens? So here, no, here, here's what happens in the Ahsoka novel. So when she's fighting the one of the Inquisitors, I forget which Inquisitor she's fighting. She's fighting the Inquisitor, whatever. It is, it is, he's fought her. I think he was so, like oh, seven, no. no, not like eight. I can't yeah. remember. So whatever. He he's him. an Inquisitor. He's disposable. Yeah. Exactly. It doesn't matter. <laughs> okay. His name does not matter at all. So um, she takes his, uh, she defeats him. Takes his lightsaber, extracts the crystal, takes it from a red crystal, and then makes it a, a opaque again. Like so, they're making it now. It's like oh, so it's like the feeling you have. It's like so, Anakin, still blue. Like that doesn't fit Which, in your freak. That, no, that, does, that, that, that doesn't like, fit at all. And it's a stupid idea anyway. Oh. Yeah. There are so it's many like, ways you could go, and that's like the worst one. Why would you take that? Let me commence with my nerd rant. <laughs> Lightsaber yeah. crystals in the original expanded universe were logical and added up and actually explained a lot of stuff about why lightsabers are the way they are. Why do Jedi only carry blue and green lightsabers? It's because they collect the, all of their crystals from a place that only makes emeralds and sapphires. Why does Mace Windu have a purple lightsaber? Because he tracked down a unique purple crystal. Why do the Sith have red lightsabers? Because they make synthetic crystals that they fabricate to be red because it's part of their tradition. It explains a lot of stuff, and it makes lightsabers make sense. It's like something out of D&D. It's like these arcane relics with specific and exacting statistics that once you understand them, things just fall into place. What do they do with the Kyber crystals? They're 
just all-purpose MacGuffins that shift colors and have no unique properties and have, well, there's just nothing cool about them. They're just, it's just some stupid fantasy thing they put in there so fanboys can say, oh, I'll have a yellow lightsaber or a violet lightsaber or a rainbow lightsaber because they color shift. Yay! It's like, no, if you want a unique lightsaber, you got to track down the crystal, which is an adventure in and of itself. They took away the adventure. Yeah. And even if you wanted to go the whole way where they're a personal bond, how you fuse with the crystal and then it takes on the color, which still is a diversion from the original idea, but at least you can see the idea, you know, the, the reason they would want to do that. It adds a personal character bond to the weapon, which is something they've always picked up about the lightsaber. But this is just like, oh, I feel happy. It's blue. It's, it's like, ah, uh, bad <laughs> idea, bad idea. And yeah, the Kyber so, crystal yeah, as well. It's like, based... why call it the Kyber crystal? The Kyber crystal was a specific singular thing. Call them a Dagon crystals or Ilum crystals. Why does it have to be Kyber? It's just... Because they want well, to reference the back to George yeah. Lucas's original notes and say, look, we're original trilogy purists. Yay! Anyway, anyway so, yeah, I don't from like that, Kyber though. crystals at all. They, yeah. But yeah. as for Chira Inui, his kind of ways of... <clears throat> sort of tapping into the Force. I got some ideas about that because I'm still a huge supporter of midichlorians because, you know, it's like, if midichlorians aren't a thing, then Force powers would become ubiquitous because everyone would see the Jedi and say, hey, I want in on that action. Right. Whereas, mm -hmm. what we got going here is, what I think happens is that to fully tap into the Force and use its powers and, you know, be a superhuman, you have to be a, a genetic Force sensitive. You have to have the midichlorian count. You gotta have that, otherwise it's not gonna work. But this doesn't mean that a normal, non-Force sensitive can't learn to live in harmony with the Force and learn right. to be an expression right. of its power, which is kind of what Cheery Cheerit had going for him. It's like he never did anything straight up superhuman, but right. what he did have was just these powers of perception. It's like he was just able to kind of know when stuff was happening and, you know, be the an expression of the power of destiny. And, you know, it's like it's like. He, the Force was able to express itself through him. He just had no control over it because you got to have a, you got to be a force, a trained Force wield to have control over how the power expresses itself. But the power itself can still express itself through you if it so chooses. And he's like, okay, cool. I'll just be a conduit for the power of the Force. And you know, he basically just turned into the non-Force sensitive Qui Gon Jinn. It fits Which he the was, way. yeah. <laughs> it fits the way they've handled characters in both the EU and the original films, and the, even the prequels as well. And um, different people with different sensibilities have had different kind of ways of accessing their powers with the Force. And the Living Force um, idea fits the average citizen very well. They can blend with it and they can merge, and as you said, flow around it quite well without actually having to take control of it. So whether it be physically taking control of it, where it be spiritually understanding and using it like Yoda, um, it. You don't have to have that. You can be this random person and still have a connection to it. But your midichlorian count just doesn't give you, you know, a full opening. And that's why it makes sense. And it doesn't take away the spiritual element of things as well, which everyone seems to think it does. And yeah. Cherry works well, really well as an does, example of it, it as well. It does without a scene saying exactly what you guys have said yeah, to the masses. Which, why, which so. is what's the problem with midichlorians. It's how it's explained, not the actual idea mm -hmm. itself. But right. you can intuit yeah. that from if you think about it anyway, because it's always been biological. But yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, like yeah, that's... Just me going on. It's like he's uh he's like what our versions of uh like, like monks are in in our real world. Uh, yeah. What he was to the force basically is that he <clears throat> constantly trained himself to like do all all these things. But it's not as if he's like I don't want people to get the impression that it's like oh anyone can be like I can be a Jedi now because I just gotta believe hard enough. It's like nah like that's kind of like what Han was saying yeah. in the force book. He's like yeah. that's not how the force works. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, I sure, have... he was he was believing pretty hard, but to yeah. be fair yeah, though, there aren't there aren't enough scenes in the movies where people say how the force works anymore. Like they yeah. don't. It's like it hasn't it's been good. a thing since the originals. It's because they don't want yep. to. Because yeah. like the politics. Oh, politics is the problem, not how they're executed. Oh no, midichlorians the problem, yeah. not how it was uh, executed. It's like the entire uh, of the prequels. We've said it before. Are amazing, just poorly executed. Um, yeah. But what did you th the, the, you said about the the temple thing though? And um, that was one of the things I had a problem with the, this. I can't keep talking about the problems, even though I like the film. But um, that character wasn't really explained his roots very much. You had the one line from Cassian, but um, uh, how they were temple they guards. But they never really they, were guardi they were guardians of the temple, and that was that. Yeah, like they, we yeah, didn't get any it. scenes between those two. Like there was, yeah. we we could have had like an hour of just these this crew bouncing off each other in different ways and talking about their past and not openly and boringly but in terms we had a, we had a small ways. line where he was saying base was like one of their best guardians but then he yeah. kind of like yeah. lost faith yeah well, they it's annoyed because it knows it's possible the journal of the wills which yeah. i found 
surprising as well. What was that? Sorry, I didn't hear that. They they also mentioned the Journal of Wills. Yeah, they had, they made mention of a bunch of different stuff, but they never explored it. And it, I wasn't sure if that was yeah. because they recut it or um or reshot rather, uh, or cut things out. But uh, like, I feel like there's more to be had between this crew. Um, because they kind of went on this adventure together and did sure. they had these beats, yeah. but they didn't know them were connected. That's why I had a problem with the Saw Gerrera stuff, where I thought they could spend better time developing the yeah. interactions between these characters instead. So yeah. that I, that and I think, think that is one thing that could to... be said. This movie needed to be a half hour longer, so you could have more moments with these characters, more bits where they're just talking and explaining stuff. And like Matt said earlier, perhaps in, throw in a montage of uh, Jin growing up as one of Saw Gerrera's uh, soldiers. Yeah. Like that, that would actually be throw that. in another. Yeah, that would actually throw in another. Like, that actually be a really great thing. It's like, basically, Saw Gerrera's line at the start of the movie, we have a long ride ahead of us, show a montage of Jin as a child soldier. Show me that. And then cut to her sitting in that cell. Or have it be random flashbacks throughout the the film. Like, every now and then, she'll have a quiet moment, and it'll it'll show her look down after hearing something from one of the other crew about their story or whatever. And then she looks down, and we cut away back to her childhood, another step, and we go through like that. Anything. Just give us something so that we learn about this character. Yeah, and talking about Jin too, I felt um, when I first watched the movie, like I didn't know or care enough about her, like and about her backstory because there wasn't a lot there. Like I just felt like I, I needed more from her, like yeah. especially with her, like with her. I don't feel like I felt like they had like this this payoff. That was never set up to begin with. Like right. you had yeah, like yeah. inklings of her. Like the one guy in the council meeting was like, "How are we gonna trust a criminal?" It's like we haven't really seen her like Come in any time. Also, like, be a criminal guys, really. Like, yeah, and it's also like, but you guys brought her in. I mean, uh, you know, I I was in going in circles the whole time. I didn't understand who she was to anybody, yeah. and right. that was a problem. And I, yeah. I think that kind of goes back to this movie's pacing. This movie is over two hours long, and honestly, both times I felt like it was an hour and a half. Yeah, the first time, more. even like the first time I saw the movie, well, it, yeah, it dragged for me. Like, I like, will in the say... middle somehow. It feels really fast for me, especially in the beginning. Uh, for me, the whole, the, the whole middle section is completely pointless because we know exactly how it's going to finish from the very second it's mentioned. Like the second it's set up that oh, we're going to this platform to pick up the dad. Well, I wonder what happens. It's like we know exactly how it's going to play out, so it's all wasted time. We've seen it before. Give us right. something else. Give us this interplay between the crew so that we care more about them. For the for the amazing end payoff at the end. Yeah. And speaking of the amazing end payoff, what did you guys think about the idea of the Death Star being used to nuke cities? Because I personally really like that and think That's it's actually probably a how bit... it's perfect. Would have been yeah. use of it's it, actually yeah. scarier than the idea of using the Death Star yeah. to blow up a planet because it's like a planet blowing up is well, firstly within the universe it's instantaneous, whereas nuking cities it's the encroaching destruction. And secondly real world perspective we're not a space pairing society we don't have access to weapons powerful enough to de- destroy planets we have no frame of reference for planets being blowed up what we do have a frame of reference for is cities being nuked mm. and the idea of the death star basically being hiroshima on demand that's yeah. that's terrifying images of mm. nagasaki and hiroshima were definitely invoked with that initial shot of the explosion <laughs> that was yeah. Uh, yeah. definitely intentional um there was yeah. a and it's just uh, like the death star it. eclipsing the sun and then green yeah. beam boom because if you're on the planet and you see that you're like you and, and if, if the death star had gone on to be like this thing if you saw that you're like oh well f- there's the death star yeah, it you wouldn't know, even like have to the... fire the whole point of it is a deterrent no, no, it would no, just no. block out just the sun okay just we'll give you whatever you want that's like right. I said, yeah. are you sure you want to rebel? Yeah. And we said are about you it. Sure? <laughs> we said about it for the trailer how You're it was weird that none positive. of us. Yeah, we said during the trailer um, review that it was weird how none of us considered the obvious idea of blocking out the sun yeah. with a Death Star. Like that was just why didn't none of us think that? And it took us by surprise. Oh my god! Oh my god! Guys, guys, guys! I shot. just remembered they they freaking had the Death Star blocking out the sun in the Star Wars Infinities for A New Hope. There's a scene where it's like. You know, Dark Side Leia from that comic is basically just giving a speech about the Empire's indomitable might, and she's standing before a plaza on Coruscant, and the Death Star just moves into place and blocks out the sun, and she says, that's the Death Star! It's got a super laser that can blow up planets. And Get the in line, like, or we'll fire just, that shit. I just <laughs> like them establishing that it can be used in that limited capacity, because to me it kind of underscores what I construe to be, kind of like a hypocrisy of Tarkin, because he says something like, oh, you know, we don't need to make a grand statement here, we're just, you know, testing, just 
do it this way because he didn't want Krennic's success to be too big. Mm. And then when Tarkin's in charge, he does blow up a whole planet. <laughs> He wants and to steal that. as well. He wants to like steal the that worst thunder. planet he could have blown yeah. up, tactically speaking. He wants yeah, to steal the that's thunder, the exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I was reading an article just, just the other day that was describing how a lot of Tarkin's actions in this specific movie were really foolish and overblown. Like tar- like blowing up the base on Scara with, on, with the Death Scarif. Star was... Scarif, thank you. Was Well, it was pointless and stupid because he killed more Imperials than he did Rebels. Yeah. Just yeah. rid himself of one troublesome rival and destroyed <laughs> one of the Empire's main record keeping facilities. All to get what rid of Krennic. How many did he get? Two? Two rebels? <laughs> so, something all tells the me, other rebels yeah. were dead. Uh, yeah. <laughs> something tells me if he had lived through a new hope, Palpatine would have had a long talk with him about that. Just saying. <laughs> yeah. I actually remember reading in the Book of Sith, Palpatine had some notes saying that. Yeah, Tarkin's days were numbered. He would, even if the Death Star hadn't been blown up, I would have killed him soon after anyway. <laughs> he was getting too ambitious to be safe. But yeah, it's like basically Tarkin's actions in that movie were kind of foolish and overblown. It's like he blows up a, an Imperial base, kills thousands of Imperial troops for no reason other than to, than to get rid of Krennic, and this prevents them from finding out until a little too late that the Death Star plans were taken. It took him a little long to work out that was the objective in the first place, if you ask me. Like, why would the rebels... Like, yeah. Oh no, we're being attacked. They didn't think immediately that, oh, hang on a second, this is an archive. We should probably secure the data. Like, <laughs> they were very slow with that one. <laughs> Even, yeah. although I did like uh, Krennic's reaction to... Krennic? Jenny, are um, we? Reaction to like, are we yeah. blind? Yeah, <laughs> like, guys. <laughs> yeah. Deploy the garrison! <laughs> so yeah. Why am I the like, one? What are you guys doing? <laughs> Oh, oh, that's what I mean, like, wherever Krennic, he went, that's, it was bad that's, help. Yeah. Yeah, that's <laughs> just another thing that does kind of convey Krennic's more lower-class background is the fact that he doesn't speak with that perfect Queen's English accent that most of the Imperial officers have. He's a lot gruffer, which yeah. I think works. Like, Callan, does he speak with a specific British dialect or no? <laughs> there, mm, not really. There isn't really a specific British dialect to begin with, but I wouldn't go oh he's a yorkshireman kind of thing like it wouldn't it didn't stand out to me um it was just kind of yeah. gruff general um accent which again yeah, i think suits well, him i well. think they released a statement regarding that but i can't remember what it said yeah. Yeah, it just be well what i, I know, what but. i was thinking that he kind of did because the actor ben mendelson is uh, from australia is what he ended up doing was perhaps just trying to water down the australian accent by throwing in some british and but it doesn't quite work he's it just not kind of evened make- out <laughs> Yeah, it just kind of evened out. He doesn't make the gruffness go away. Instead, it sounds more like he's posturing a bit. But that works for the character because that's exactly what he's doing. It's like he's trying to present himself as more than he is. But we do see that he is more than he is as well. Like It's not one of those things where he is just a horribly bland puppet kind of uh, posturing no, alone. He's, like, he's, he is, he's not a but he's fraud. not just that. He's, yeah. he's definitely not a fraud, but... At the same time, there is a certain amount of performance going into what he is. Like, come on, the guy wears a cape. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's barking because no one pays attention to him. He's bar- not barking because yeah. there's nothing to him to pay attention to. That's, to that's the thing. To, yeah, he has to fight with his boss all the time. He has to ask for everything twice. He has to step in because nobody else just does their job. I and mean, he has to tell yeah. them to do their job. I mean, he's being son. undermined everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And I gotta say, given the fact that he's being undermined everywhere by everyone, the fact that he was able to hold out for as long as he did is pretty impressive, like, from a Game of Thrones standpoint. Um, Yeah, but to be fair, he was only a director of an installation, which I know it was the Death Star, but, you know, in terms of the actual what that involves, it's just logistical asset management, isn't it? He's not actually, like, actively being deployed in threat or threatening areas. He just sort of sat back and ran things while everything was boring. He's an engineer. Yeah. He handled the logistics while everything was being built and then when it got close talking like, just oh, it's about time for it to be ready i think i'll step in now <laughs> yeah it's also not what i expected him to be. i thought he would be a more like um feet on the or like boots on the ground because like in the in the trailer we haven't even talked yeah, about it it's yeah, way different yeah. from the trailer yeah you see him walking yeah, yeah. through the water that's not in the movie yeah he's like there's there's so much stuff in the movie that's not or in the trailer it's not in the movie like even the the tie fighter like facing yeah. jen yeah like, that's not yeah. there I was like, yeah, when's that happening? Them, They're leaving. Them running on the beach and... Yeah, and it's one of the things... Again, I had a problem with the ending, because you know how you said the, the ending was perfection, Antoine, and everyone's been saying how it is amazing, and I completely agree. It's a fantastic finish. Um, I feel like everything that was shown in the uh, trailer that made it look like, yeah, this is going to be a war film, 
it was all that. So it was very much instead of it being a war film, it was kind of a war ending, which kind yeah, of yeah, it's a war ending. <laughs> yeah, it kind of betrayed the it were like the trailer was lying, but not quite, if you know what I mean. Um, it I felt like it could have been more uh, on on the ending as a result of that. Um, because it was like what thirty people max on the beach, but we feel <laughs> it feels like there's a lot more by the end by the time it ends. But they it said make ten for like a hundred. Yeah, um, make ten. Oh, it was just my one fork. So it would have been a lot more awesome if it was like a full on battle. Um, Speaking of, uh, of passing in, uh, the first time I watched the movie, I um, did not follow his motivations. And that's because when I watched it the second time, it's his performances are actually really, really subtle on on his changes. Like even from the first kill he had against uh, his informant, um, he has a little moment where it's not – at first I thought he was just like – it was just like a look like, a, oh, I'm a badass. But it was more of like he was actually um, having a regret. And there's like small moments when he's looking at uh, Jin uh, while she's talking that kind of change him so that when he, we get to the point where he's on Edu and he's uh, about to snipe her down her father, he um, stops. Like when I first watched it, I was like, um, why? Yeah. what motivated <laughs> you to – like you were doing a lot of stuff so far and you've been okay with often people. Like what stops it there? And also what it would help that scene too is if he – could channel into the audio because if he would have heard what was going on he would have like that it's actually kind of funny because you would what was happening in the scene like with all the the researchers and all that kind of stuff and what was being said between krennic mm. and um urso what makes you think okay so he's hearing that and that's what's making him stop because he's understanding like the the, the gravity of this and like like oh that oh my god jen was right because at first she's like i don't have that by the way she had everybody i think performed even if the characters themselves weren't uh, perfectly written. Perfect. Everyone's performance. Everyone gave a, everyone gave a good performance. Yeah, yeah. that's really what I was about to say. Overall, yeah. yeah. When you mentioned the like, subtlety when, from uh, Cassian, like they yeah. did yeah. act yeah. beyond what they were written. Like that, they that, that subtlety saved the performances for them. If you ask me. Right. Um. And then Cassian, like when he uh, said, "Oh, do you have the message?" And the way she responds and says that she like you can see the thought process in her mind go, mm. "Fuck! If I don't, shit, he's not gonna believe me. Fuck!" Like, and he's she's like, I, mm -hmm. I, I, don't, "I don't, I'm like, like that. All of that that was going on in her face. There's I was so like, much. She was wow, like, there's so much that, happening, you know? Yeah. Like I'm like, that's like a that's a true. That's how people are like thought. You can see that there's a thinking person in there. There's, there's a brain working in there. Um, I thought actual. it was really great. It's so um, rare because, like you said, first time, most people don't get it. They think, well, this is a bit of an awkward moment. Why are they? Why is she looking like that? They don't They don't take the time to think, oh, of course, this is what we would actually see in this moment. Right. Because it doesn't and always then, like, carry across, that, but they do it so well. That moment was, like, probably the, of all the f fantastic stuff that happened. Like, that, just that small moment for me was, like, one of my favorite parts. And also their second conversation after where he um, doesn't uh, kill a Galen, um, th that whole conversation they have, I think, was really good. Yeah. That was probably my two favorite the scenes between them, I think, were my favorite, and I like that yeah. it was a uh, platonic. Like it remained pl yes. platonic. Yeah, I was so yeah, happy. I was, with that. When, I was like, don't kiss, were, don't kiss, don't kiss, don't kiss. When they were on right the beach, the don't end. kiss. Yes, don't kiss, don't kiss. Yes. Please don't kiss. And they didn't. I was like, thank God. Thank you. Because like, it would just been so wrong. Hollywood. Yeah. For so many reasons. Yeah. yeah. Um, but you're you're absolutely right, Antoine. The the subtlety and the acting in those scenes, specifically the um the argument scene, because both of them are right, and it's so nice right. to see both yeah. characters be right yeah. rather than just go, oh shut up because you're wrong. Obviously, they actually both have at least, well she's mostly wrong in the second bit, but you see like the um the where they're coming from, and it acts out and it plays There's out validity really well. on both sides. Yeah, and they, neither of them really back down from the other. Like yeah. it's great. It's a real, a real argument. And I liked the end mm -hmm. of it when he goes, anyone else? And just moved on. It's like, so it, it, and they didn't do anything. They didn't do it. Yeah, they didn't do anything cheesy. We just that was kind of pushing yeah. the cheesiness. But he was kind of like, I, yep, sure, whatever. Let's just get on with it. Like, it, yeah. it felt real, and that's so rare. But I wish they had been you know, written to one... maximize on this. That's all because the actors. Yeah. It was the actors yeah. that pulled it off, not the writing. Yeah. Well, one thing I will have to say is just that scene just made me think because Antoine just mined the bit where Baze is just like, ugh. <laughs> Baze was. Not my favorite character, but he was the character that I saw the most of myself in. Because, you know, I do tend to be a bit of a sour supporter. I complain a lot. Things don't go my way. I'm just like, oh, motherfucker. But at the same time, it's like, job to do, keep going. Get this shit done. Yeah. And it's, it makes and me... And then look out in the rain. He's like, I don't need luck. I have you. <laughs> he's like, oh, my yeah. God. <sighs> you know, the funny thing You're is... You're not wrong. This will probably... This'll probably flatter my friend Kevin a lot, but I kind of see our relationship quite a bit in Chirrut and Baze. It's like Kevin's the mo the blind monk, and I'm the guy with the gun who follows him around. <laughs> yeah, he's really Which, good with that gun. I will well. say this: nice like the, the, the overall comedy in this movie was genuinely, I thought, all right. I agree. Well, K2 was freaking yeah. amazing. K2 was hilarious. Like, yeah. oh, did you I know that wasn't K2. me? 
<laughs> that's yeah. Oh, that's brilliant. Yeah. Um, I can oh, by the way, vacuum. yeah. By the way, the he big... is the definition of plot armor, like oh, quite yeah. specifically, because we see another version of his droid like die with one shot, <laughs> like, yeah. and then we see him later like just getting like. like da -da 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 -da. Shot, I'm yeah. like. Definition of plot armor! Definition of well, plot the armor! The Rebels clearly gave him some extra armor, Antoine. What are you talking about? God. Oh, yeah, of course. Yes, they obviously made Jeez, that modification. Man, <laughs> but yeah. still, I really like K2 because our big. I think we can all agree our biggest worry was that he would just turn into HK47 mm. Mark II, and he wasn't. He was very unique. It's like one of the things I mentioned in our little text what chat we faster? had just after we, <laughs> at, just after we saw the movie was that He's not a gleeful killer. He's a casual killer. It's like he's just icing people without really thinking about it, but he's not reveling in it. Mm. Which I think just is a, kind just of his a, job. Yeah, he's just doing his job. It's like, oh, I gotta kill someone? Okay, fine, whatever. <clears throat> and again, he's underplayed. Like, and not in a bad way. He's he's not bigging every moment up. He's not saying this line because, oh, it's funny. He just kind of... When um, he gets the bag... That's what he would say. Yeah, when he kind of looks sad for a second, he just kind of goes... Meh, and drops it like the bag went at the start of the uh, film when he gets handed it by um, Jin. It's like that could have been like an oh Seriously. moment, but instead it was just like a meh. Uh, it kind of yeah. keeps it at that tone. It's just kind of a meh, whatever. Uh, and that's kind of what they all have, like be which is a shame because they're doing so well in the acting role. But um, they never have a, like a scene that where they can all just shine. They don't. I can't think of a single scene where they all talk to each other. And just have a crew moment. It's always like one off the other or one on on two. It's never all of them. Wait, did any of you? Can you guys remember any of the scenes that do that? Because that's what I think. No, they, all have, they all have. <clears throat> they all have individual moments together, but they don't have a collective yeah. group yeah. moment. I, I think the closest we get to it's that not is Firefly. Yeah, yeah, which is a shame because that's what I want. I want to just yeah. uh, half an hour where we get to see them being a crew. It's like um, you know, the A New Hope, the uh, garbage dispenser moment. The, the crushing yes. wall. Like, that, effectively, is a, just a waste of a scene. It doesn't do anything. But it immediately introduces... After having immediately been introduced to Leia, it gets those three bouncing off each other. They, they, they shout at yeah. each other. They're being sarcastic. No, no, no. A, no, 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 no. Stop, stop forgetting about Chewbacca here. Yeah. Everybody forgets about Chewbacca. <laughs> four. He deserved a medal, and he was also in that scene. Sorry, four. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yes, I, yes. He didn't say anything. That's why I did that. I, wasn't, I was visualizing I him. But it was going somewhere oh, that was Chewie like, no, actually no. did have a medal, but the problem is is that the ribbon was too small to fit around his neck. <laughs> so they just so they weren't able... Yeah. They couldn't give yeah. it to him in the ceremony because it's like, sorry, man, this will not fit around your head. Hey, you'll just have to hold well. it and be happy. <laughs> but, that uh, probably is the real reason <laughs> when you think about it. Is but, they yeah. debated on whether or not he should wear pants at the time, too. Yeah, they did, yeah. <laughs> But but that's the same I'm talking about. Like they bounce off each other. We know that why Larry is frustrated with the Wookiee because he just shot the door and nearly killed them all. We know that they're coming together because they're shouting at each other. They they in that second can like help me prop this up and like I don't know what's going on. Stop being sarcastic. That kind of thing. Little just moments bouncing off each other. We didn't get that in this film. Like we had the established pairs kind of bouncing off each other, but they never came together. Like what was bad um, to no, anyone well, else? No, I think I think we have I think we have uh, uh, connections. Uh, base, yeah. Um, there were smaller connections that were happening. It wasn't like a huge group dynamic, but then you have like, like there's a moment with a uh, chariot and uh, um, uh, Jan, and there's like a small moment with, uh, with, um, oh my God, I heard these people's names, Cassian and also the pilot. Like they, they all have like, like small yeah. fra factions of it, one -on um, but not really big ones, you know, but we need like a whole collective, Like this is a collective going up. This is the crew plus red shirts um that are going to uh, yeah. end the film like that, that's so i feel like the ending would have been so much better all of their individual moments where unfortunately they do die would have been so much more if we n knew them rather than just had like one line explaining their whole shtick i actually while i while well, i do agree that i do want to i do want to see like an avengers type like group dynamic happen i don't think that actually cheapened their deaths for me i think every single death had its moment that was satisfying and there was a setup and payoff for it like for instance the pilot's death i think which i thought was not going to work for me totally worked for me um of course uh cheered and and, and bays because they had like their whole force moment i think was like mm -hmm. almost like a tearjerker for me too like because of how like emotional that scene was in terms of just him going out and saying like you know his uh, his prayer of the force and like walking out like i think that was all like 
Yeah. Very, very, very moving. And then, um, of course, uh, Cassian and Jan, of course, like that, that was great. And then, um, even like the small, like the soldier. Okay. So, like, there's a very, very small relationship that happens between the pilot and, and one that of the one Rumble soldier guy. Ones, yeah. The cock, the cock mm-hmm. So, when I see him, when he sees him trying to come with the cable, he's like, oh, I got to protect my friend who I just met. And he gets shot down. I'm like, no. Yeah. yeah. And I, <laughs> like, I felt that. That was like such a small thing. But... I'm so glad you picked up on that because that, that was very true. When he says, what does it look like? Give us some visuals here. I need to, I loved that. I was like, yes, that's so freaking realistic. Thank you. But um, aside yeah. from that, yeah. though, I didn't mean to say that the <laughs> deaths were cheap. He's like, what he was saying. He's like, what? what? Yeah, it was like, can, can I get a description? I need to know what I'm looking for. What are we looking for? I love that. It was so, and then that's where the connection came yeah. from. That was brilliant. Oh, I completely agree. Oh, one death, though, because I was noticing, I was actually one? following all the side characters. One of the little characters that kind of got missed on his death was the was that guy, the captain, who was um, who like took off his uh, hat at one point and was yeah. talking to them, like the match switch. He just was dead in one shot. Like they didn't show him dying. They, he was just dead. The next, like they cut to like I think um, Jin and and Cassian and inside like the archives and then they cut back to him and he was like already dead I was like no yeah. I've been following these side characters <laughs> <laughs> yeah well, you know, like... it wasn't quite perfect but it was, there were loads of great moments of it. but I, what I, meant, I didn't mean to say that the deaths were cheapened at all I didn't mean to say that they were, there wasn't payoff or anything like that or they didn't work because they definitely did and I completely agree they were really well pulled off I just meant that they could have been more like if we had like half an hour extra to understand and know more about these characters they would have been enhanced by that not that they've been detracted from in any way I, um, I didn't think one of the things scenes, I either. did one of the things I thought really worked was how each of the characters, upon realizing that they were about to die, you never had any moment of screaming and terror. Their responses were all ba- all basically boiled down to, "Well, shit." <laughs> they just kind of rolled. They just kind of rolled with it. They knew what they were getting into, which is why is why yeah. it works. It's it's it's, it's really like good uh, I figured this would happen at some point. Okay, the pilot especially with that. The pilot especially with that, and I really like the pilot. Yeah. Like he's the sort of character that usually would just fade into the background, but he actually came more to the foreground as the film went on. Um, right outside of the, the weird mental thing a great, being a waste of potential again the actor just gave a great performance yeah. as the character i really like this guy because it's like on the one hand he is a professional but on the other hand he's just a cargo pilot he's not military he's not trained for combat situations especially not so on this side like, of the fight <laughs> yeah yeah so it's like he's got that professionalism down and he has good courage under fire but at the same time you do see him stammer over a lot of his lines and that really worked. It's like, this is a guy who's under a lot of stress. He's maintaining his focus and keeping his eye on the ball and not just losing it. But at the same time, he's not at 100% functionality in this situation because he's not a soldier. He's just a cargo ship. Yeah. Which is why, again, he's like, it, 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 uh, it's this device. We need this device. And the guy's like, well, what are we looking for? Explain to me. He's like, he understands this guy isn't, isn't the tech. Yeah. So he's not insulting him. He's just saying, I need to know what we're looking for, guy, mate. What are we doing with it? Like, oh, crap. I didn't think of that. Um, uh, what does it look like? Uh. It's like, it's the exact opposite of a Mary Sue. It's what would happen in that situation. And it's like Antoine said before with the sub- subtle face emotions, facial emotions, um, expressions. That's what I'm looking for. Um, it can seem a bit off on the first viewing if you're not thinking in, in that, of it in that frame. Right, Cause exactly. Because like, this is an awkward moment. Why are we lingering on this shot kind of thing? But then you think about it and... Yeah, that's why. Because you're going. You're like that's actually moments. a very good choice. It's yeah. a very good choice on the actress part. And it's really well done. Oh, by the way, film. really quick, if you guys are over the age of 18, because you should not be watching the show if you're not, uh, <laughs> the night of it's an HBO series uh, with uh, the gentleman who played uh, the pilot. Uh, very, very, very good series. You should totally check it out. All right, done. Go ahead. <laughs> what, what was that? Sorry, the name again. The night of. Uh, the, the night of. It's an HBO uh, limited series. Uh, it's actually like your British series where they actually have an ending in mind and hey. it actually finishes out. <laughs> Not like a lost or anything like that. You know? oh, anyway, different, different, different subject. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, good, good yeah, night. Because yeah. yeah, I want to see more of him because he, they well, did a really good job. I, I geeked out uh, during uh, the uh, sequences with uh, with all the leaders, um, uh, the pilot leaders of the rebels, uh, calling all yeah. their call signs because they use unused footage from New Hope. Um, yeah. yeah. For, for that, and it was just really quick, so it's not enough for you to be like, oh, too much. Like I know that's like it's like just really quick, and it's just enough that if you notice it, you notice it. If you don't, like no one else, because no one in my theater, I was like, please, please. why no, would you know where they right now? <laughs> I was like, oh my god, this is oh, everybody was just like, cool, X wings are coming in. I love it because it was so on the topic from Force of Awakens Alliance well. personnel doing stuff from the older films that works. Mm-hmm. I actually really liked it when the Rebels Mon Calamari Admiral stated the obvious <laughs> that Star Destroyer has been disabled. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, it's a little bit, yes, he's stating the obvious, but 
It's like I you, guess that's what Mon Calamari also, admirals do. You can you can okay, imagine also, you can imagine the ensigns behind on the control panels going like, oh god. It's like the old grandpa going, <laughs> it's a trap. <laughs> it, in that particular case, because of what they do with the destroyers, it makes sense to explain that to the, to oh, the yeah. audience. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Like, why yeah. can't they just yeah. like you know like so? I I think it was good. It, yeah. it was written in position. It was well, functional was, fan service. Was, yeah, it was, yeah. 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 But it was funny at the same time, which is why it's fun to mock. <laughs> what I thought was really funny is every time he talked to someone who was on the planet, he would always, like, look down. Yeah, I know. He's like, what are <laughs> yeah. you expecting to see? Can you hear us? He did it, see he you, did it at least twice, possibly three times. It's like, oh, wait, no, something. He did it three times. <laughs> Let me get my eyes on the situation. I can't get out here. <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> oh god. Mon Calamari have big eyes, but it's not. No. Yeah. <laughs> but it's super like, subs. Kind of like what old people do too. I don't know if you've ever seen I the know. old person play a video game, but like, they, like my grandma when she used to play Super Mario Brothers with this, she would whenever she was trying to make Mario jump, she would go. And I'm like, no, just press the A button. <laughs> it's not a. The Wii's don't exist yet. You don't do it like a Wii. <laughs> oh, like, it's so, so funny. funny. Uh, um, but, well, but doubling one, back to the pilot from the other side. Just, just talking about the yeah, the, 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 the Mon Calamari. Yeah, the hammerhead was, yeah. was the next thing yeah, I had. I'm sorry. 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 Oh, they brought oh. the hammerheads back from Rebels. Yeah. Which was really weird seeing them on the full, uh, the, the big screen. Like, I loved the it. Big but it was like, this is weird. I'm seeing them in main canon. <laughs> <laughs> it was kind of a trip, but it was pretty cool. Yeah. At least to me. Um, now, that particular scene where they used the hammerhead to push the disabled Star Destroyer into the other one. It kind of reinforced one thing I've been saying a lot, like, why the hell do the Star Destroyers really like going in for such close <clears throat> formations? Because the thing is, they're big, ponderous, slow-moving things, which means that if one of them is suddenly a little bit off course and is veering into the other, the other one isn't going to be able to evade because it's too freaking ponderous and slow. you got to space these th things out to make sure people don't try shit like that. Well, if you look at the Empire's performance in this movie... It was par for the course. Yeah, they also yeah. weren't very effective yeah. at all. We didn't see anything from the, the uh, Star Destroyers, really. Like We saw yeah. them launching TIE Fighters really late into the fight. Um, and then <laughs> yeah, uh, that was about it. It's like, oh, we have these. Yeah, and also there were so many yeah. of them. They always show like a million of them flying out of the hangars. It's like, <clears> like, yeah, there was a lot. <laughs> in all of the, even in the encyclopedias, they only say they're like a small a number of them. They only have like a contingent of like 15-ish, like around that kind that of number. That was not 15. No, it was like hundreds of them swarming. And like three pilots don't give up immediately. They kind of, okay, we can handle this. We've got this under control. <laughs> it's like, no, you haven't. You're dead. The thing is, we're talking about, it. well, it's... It's like that freaking scene from the Clone Wars cartoon where it's like Mace Windu flies into a massive formation of vulture droids and they don't even fire on him. He just smashes into them and gets his ship cracked, smashed to hell because simply because they're hitting him because there are so many. It's just a massive swarm coming at you. Hmm. And yeah. If the TIE fighters were big on kamikaze, I'd understand that, but they're like not. So it's, it just it always seems weird to me. Uh, but it was the, the reason they did it was because it was they were going for the same shot they had in uh, Return of the Jedi, aren't they? When they we saw the same thing, yeah. the fighters flying yeah, at the screen. Are... Well, yeah, from the uh, multiple me... Star Destroyers, even though there were like twenty of them there. Yeah, that actually reminds me of a line I read in one of the uh, essential guides to ships, talking about Tie Defenders. And I find this line really sticks with me because I find it so amusing. Your typical Tie fighter jock is suicidal. Your Tie interceptor jocks are bloodthirsty. Tide Defender jocks are suicidal and bloodthirsty. <laughs> well, they don't have shield generators, do they, on the originals? So no, about... they do not. Yeah. <clears throat> they weren't very versatile with, with TIE Fighter type in this movie. Which was kind yeah. of a bummer. Well, it's oh, like the whole point the behind the Empire. Triangular point one, I've forgotten the name of it, which is yeah. too much shame. Yeah, but that's just about it. Like, you don't see any bombers, you don't see any of the more advanced um, models. Yeah, there was, there was advanced. There was like a two... I only caught like one or two. There were a couple two. Thai bombers running escort to Vader's shuttle when he went to board the rebel, the rebel frigate. There were, yeah, oh. and there also again <laughs> was there the, the triangle one, not the interceptor because I know that one, but the the, the striker. The two, yeah, the no, shot, I saw yeah. the striker, but I, I didn't, I I'm didn't notice the, the bomber. Ships. I know pretty much all the others. Uh. <clears throat> I wanted to see. see it was, it was just uh, there was basically just no interceptor. No, really. Yeah, yeah, but they definitely had uh, a lot of stormtrooper like, no diversity. Yeah, and they didn't draw. They didn't. Waste time on it as well. They just let it happen. Like the, the we got we saw like four different new kinds of stormtroopers. They didn't just mm -hmm. pay attention to only them all the time. They just kind of moved on. Like oh look, this is happening, which I loved because I hate it when they go oh look a new toy. Look at this. Yeah. 
No, the Death one Troopers. One of the things I did anyway. like about uh, Krennic's Black Guard, like one of my favorite little details, is that when you actually listen to them <clears> speaking, <throat> their the voice recorders on their helmets are actually scrambled. So that the impre- the idea being that their their helmets have descramblers that allow them to hear and understand one another, but anyone listening in outside isn't going to understand the word they say. And I really like that detail because it seems like the perfect sort of spec ops detail that you probably would mm-hmm. put into stormtrooper armor to make these guys mm-hmm. harder to fight. You can't actually hear them issuing orders to one another because you can't understand the word they say because all you're hearing is this static buzz. And it also mm-hmm. made them more scarier because, you know, the slight inhumanity of not having a human voice. They were all required to be over six feet tall, all the Death Troopers. Good. <laughs> there was one Stormtrooper that seems unusually short in the film as well, I noticed. When, and he was kind of falling behind the others, which is why I picked up on it. It was, there were, it was, it was Luke Skywalker. <laughs> yeah. When, when there were, there were, it was, I think it was when someone was going up the, sh- the elevator, um, probably Janik, um, but there were four Stormtroopers that walk across in the, in the background. Um, I'm doing the motion again, but you can't see me, sorry. Um, and there was one that sort of stumbled a bit, and I was like, Aren't you a bit short for a stormtrooper? You always I'm have to have that one. one. <laughs> yeah. I actually thought um, Count Vidian came up in my brain at some point in the movie when they um, when they took over the uh, w- when they first got to Scarif and they went to do the inspection and they took over their their uniforms. Um, I was thinking about like, oh, if Count Vidian was there, he totally would have noticed the detail and be like that. It looks a little. That's a female right there, and she's shorter. <laughs> and and that guy didn't have a mustache before. Like you know, like, no one really kind of noticed. Like there were different people who went in there. Like your commanding officer just went in there and he came out looking different. I'm like okay, yeah. okay, yeah. Scarif. And that was another shot. I'm just gonna get back film, on my shuttle. The, uh, and the tiger. Bye. The Bye. Studio, yeah. Open the door, please. I like how like, he had a good look though. Cassie had a good look. Like um, open the door. Like yeah, that was good. The very imperial look. Yeah. They did a lot well in this film. That's the important thing. So, um, <clears throat> big scene, big scene. Yeah. Vader. Vader. Oh, that, oh yeah. where's, where's my Vader hat? Gotta put the or Vader hat people. on because we're talking. The horror. That was the like most perfect horror film, like five minute that horror. That was film. so Just... like intense. The entire time I was like, yes. throw the disc, throw the disc, throw the disc for yeah. the damn gap. <laughs> I knew they did because they obviously do in the films, but it's like someone yeah. throw the disc. You're dead. It's yeah. legitimately terrifying. Yeah. I thought. Yeah. And not still, even that, just the that scene. Part. That scene shows why Vader has the reputation he has, and it was great. Like, not just, just in the universe, like, though. Out of the universe, everyone has been kind of reaffirmed of how great a villain Vader is from that one scene. It's like huge. <clears throat> well, mm-hmm. actually, I was reading a review for this movie the other day that was discussing about how. This guy was basically talking about, how, from his perspective, how Rogue One actually made A New Hope impossible to watch because Rogue One is such a fast-paced, exciting war movie, whereas, mm. by comparison, A New Hope is a little bit slower. And one of the things he was discussing is how Vader is such a unstoppable badass in this movie, but then when we get to New Hope, it's like he's talking about how, oh, Vader's moving so stiffly and having such trouble Filmed fighting. Filmed in 1970 fucking no, no. seven. Not even... <clears throat> actually, I, actually I, that I just want to I just want to state my rebuttal to that. To okay, me, great. showing Vader being such a badass in this movie, taking down those rebel troopers with such ease, actually really reaffirms Old Ben's threat level. Yeah. It reminds you that Old Ben is a badass even if he is old because you got vader who's just plowing through these stormtroopers like they're nothing against old ben he's like he's just poking at him timidly because he's terrified of this guy and it's like that's how badass old ben is he's badass enough that vader is cautious around him the Vader's not taking any chances it's like vader's not just gonna walk up to him and hack him down because he can't if he tried old ben would kill him Instead, Vader's just die, die, die. <laughs> okay, so I uh, agree on the part about him being cautious with um, with uh, Ben, but I disagree with uh, saying that he looks significantly better because he does still have a very stiff uh, yeah. fighting presence. Like if you actually you look when he's slashing in that scene, yeah, yeah. When, you, <clears throat> when you actually see him slashing at the the rebels, sorry. <clears throat> Uh, he still has his. He's still, he's still Vader yeah. stiffness. He's still hmm. going like this, like like this. It was a know, more, it's all wide. Some some more, you, don't, you don't see any like faints or anything like that. It's a more. It's, it's a more modern take on what we've seen before. Yeah. Like it looks 
just it's like slightly, what they would have done. It's only huh? slightly more modern. I think he's he's actually still very much what we saw in the original. Like he's still like it's still a guy in a suit. It's the same. I'm saying is no they're able from to film it. They're able to, they're able to film it better. It looks right, better right, right, because right. of today. It's of modern technology and yeah. the way that the filming you know, was better. But it's the speed was more than anything else. If you slowed it down, it would basically be the same thing. Um, that's yeah, the speed, but the speed is a big thing. It's a big illusion. Yeah, like if you know what I mean. Yeah, it's yeah, an illusion. Yeah, it's it's, 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 yeah. That's all it is. Like, it's not like they've dramatically changed anything. It's, it's just a no. kind of. Um, and then the other thing is that he's killing. I mean, people are. I mean, it's great that he had the scene where he's killing rebels, but he's only killing rebels here. Like, it's not. Yeah. He's. It's not amazing because of who he's killing. It's amazing because of the horror from the rebels' perspective, yeah. not from like. Yeah, the, it's like, like those. Those the are build up like, to that's that not, scene. Is like is it's, it's like you hear those heavy boot steps and you huh? hear the breathing and then that lightsaber ignites and you know that every single rebel in that room is glad they wore the brown pants <laughs> <laughs> it's just yeah exactly. that, the, it was so well done so, but you also, so like you so also respect the... each and every one of them like yeah. so much right. because of, like i mean, I mean it, they put it's their really guns like up, they try to it's they the they only made reason. an effort. They're the only reason that all of that you just saw wasn't for nothing. Yeah. There's those yeah. guys in the room. Right. Yeah, they slowed Vader down. It's like they couldn't stop him, but they could slow him down. Which, you know... It, it also makes the guys who get caught in the next film look a lot more heroic. Because they know what's coming and they still... They have time yeah. to think <laughs> about it and they and still they, don't the surrender. That... <laughs> it's like yeah, these guys it... saw Vader hacking apart their friends through that yeah. doorway. He's in that corridor. There. And Just... it's probably that guy that you see like... the screen settle on from it when he's like... Yeah, I mean... That's, that's probably the most like... horrific relay race <laughs> that's, ever. That's exactly what will happen is that why, when they get back on the Tantive 4, you know they're going to talk about that. They're going to be like, dude, like, he, th it's real. It's real. It, <laughs> which also guys, bolsters a, Leia. Uh, which also bolsters Leia. Who's like, I, love, I just love the way the horror movie aspect of that scene was filmed because you got that bit where it's like... It's just like the doorway in the background with that rebel trooper running over to hit the switch to make the ship launch with Vader just on the other side of it hacking guys apart. And the camera's not even focused on that, but you know it's there. Mm -hmm. And you, you just hear see it. Va yeah, it's like you just see Vader hacking guys apart just before the door slams on him. And it's like, mother of God. Yeah. There <clears throat> is yeah, a downside so to the setup, that... though. Um that Leia's, and it's been mentioned online, I think, a few times, that Leia um, said, we're on a diplomatic mission while we're on. It now makes that yeah, line yeah. really stupid. She's just, she's, she's just really coy at that point. She's yeah. just being very coy. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like he he's like literally there. just like... jumped after them. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah he's... No. But it's only a downside. It's, it's an obvious minor downside that had to be done if they wanted it to be done this way. Right, right, right. right. And I, yeah, so, yeah, so I disagree with me that, that that scene makes elevates what happened with Ben. I think what really is going on with the Ben and Vader fight in the context of the entire saga is that Vader is respecting him because the last time we saw him, he was defeated. It's, it's less so because um, he has less ability because at this point, Vader has more ability than the old Ben, but he's respecting him just because he knows of that history. He knows like you know what happened to him last time. So he, because he has to, he knows he has to respect him, even though he doesn't really have to at this point. But it's more of like a, it's a psychological game that's going on more than a physical Kenobi's actually containing yeah. physically. It's more of like a psychological like oh, I'm kind of fucked up right now because uh, I know this is the guy who yeah. like fucked me up like, years ago. Because Vader doesn't um, go that's well. That I am not completely without mercy. I will grant you a warrior's death. Prepare. <laughs> like Vader doesn't go all out because he's like if he Grievous did go all out, it probably would have gone through no problem. But it's just right, he's exactly. like he's so I, terrified. It's like oh god, yeah. you hold him uh, back. Actually, <laughs> I really disagree with that. I don't think Vader would have been able to overwhelm Kenobi if he went all out. I think he just would have left himself open to counter, and it would have been like that bit in Empire where Vader goes for the sweep at Luke. Luke ducks under it and then scores a hit on Vader's shoulder. It would have been that. Only old Ben probably would have taken his arm off. It really helps if you read the novel Death Star and how that duel is That's true. Uh, portrayed. Yeah, I'd have to see that. Yeah, yeah, Vader is trying. I mean, it's not like he's totally crippling himself. I, I well, do think, if, like, in the mind... Just... Yeah, sorry. I, do, I just do... I do think... I'm inclined to agree with Connor that in the general audience... Like, you ask most people, what's the worst lightsaber fight? They're going to say that one. But it, it's dated. Mm. You know, the one between old Ben and, and Vader. And this, I think, does reaffirm that old Ben is not, like, weak. You know what I mean? He's a force so. to be reckoned with. He put up a fight against Vader. There are so few people in all of in the in the entire Star Wars setting. The number of people who could put up a fight against someone like Vader, like when you take into account the number of Jedi, like even just looking at Jedi, 
the number of people who can do that is pathetically small. It's like we got like uh... a few dozen people who could contend with Vader, but the overwhelming majority of Jedi and Sith would be curb stomped. Vader versus Darth saying... Red, Vader wins. Uh... Thinking on it, there's another reason he'd be scared no. of Ben. Because um, the last person he met of that age, in fact, much, much older, was Anya Kuro. And she kind of kicked his ass for a little bit. So I'm well, so not surprised he was worried about his age. Everyone's fought Vader. They've contended. I don't think like I don't really agree with that assessment, Connor, because everyone who's contended with Vader has put up a fight. There's never been like a moment where he's actually like outright stomped many people. Uh, I mean, unless in Purge, in you know, Purge, oh, there's a scene where he literally just speed blitzes well, three Jedi. Well, I will Jedi. say that yeah, but a lot of it is because might. of the fact that all of the Jedi survivors that Vader took on were the exceptionally skilled ones who were skilled enough to not be killed by their stormtroopers. Like, I'm talking, like, kind of the rank and file. It's like... Well, that's... If any, you that's Vader, plus Coffee or Honor. He, I refuse so, like, to have him so, like on putting him up on a big pedestal like that, based on, like any, like, any master would do that to any, like, you know what I mean? You know what I'm coming from? Is, like, how, yeah. like, that kind of puts him on a higher pedestal than he really is, you know what I mean? Like, if, mm, that's the same like, what any like, master uh, class school is for isn't you. A bigger debate, like uh, for like another time, because I I do see Connor's point, but I'm interested like yeah. where you're going with it, Antoine. So like, how many people do you think could? What do you think is the general standard that Vader can reliably squash? But reliably, reliably, like, reliably, reliably, it's okay. Only the I agree. I I, I like, with... I'm with Antoine on this one, but I definitely agree. It's a video for another day because we could go into a lot of detail with this. Right, right. I mean, okay. not not at all trying to squander Vader at all, but it's like I, sometimes I feel like people make him out to be like way, way better than he is. You know I what agree. I mean? Like, yeah, okay. Uh, we'll, we'll stop. We'll I'll stop. But like, okay, we can go in detail. <laughs> no, I don't think you're coming okay. from. We'll write in the comments if you want us to do this. But not also squander him because I think he does a really good job of yeah. dealing with his cripples. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> He's I mean, amazing, considering, but not considering quite as amazing as most people think he is. Is what we're saying. Um, but yeah, uh, what's next? We'll We've... save that. Um, what did you guys think of the revelation of Galen's contributions to the De Death Star? Uh, I was so just so glad that like they didn't state yeah. that it was the exhaust port specifically because yes. I, we we all know the exhaust port yes. argument. Like, I'm sorry, the Death Star is a big planet-sized military installation. You can't have something like that without an exhaust port. If it didn't have that exhaust port, it would have overheated and blowed itself up. Yeah, it's they obvious. needed that exhaust port. And the thing is, when what people tend to forget about that exhaust port, they so many people joke about it being some easily exploitable flaw. I'm sorry, easily exploitable? It's tucked away in the in the it's <laughs> in the trenches, in, the death yeah. in an inaccessible <laughs> trench on the ass end of the Death Star's North Pole, surrounded by gun turrets. And here's the thing: the Rebel s squadron that went to go exploit that flaw. The entire squad with the yeah, with we the see them fail. Of Luke and Wedge died. They all got shot down. They all died. Basically, the only reason why that flaw could be exploited was because the stars aligned to allow it to be. Logistically speaking, that flaw was insignificant. If Han Solo hadn't shown up, Luke would have got shot down. If Luke wasn't a force sensitive, he wouldn't have been able to make the shot. It's right. like. So the stars aligned to make this happen. Also, in any other situation, that never would have happened. On top of that, they would have had a yeah. fleet defending the Death Star if it was in full operation. Like that was, it had just been deployed at that point. Yeah, uh, yeah. It, it yeah. was undefended, basically. Um, and yeah, and I completely agree. I'm glad they didn't say the exhaust port and it was actually yeah, the reactor. They, 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 yeah, the yeah. reactor. So much better. He just made the reactor a bit unstable. And it's like it's not like they needed to go for the exhaust port. They could have just had some guy infiltrate the Death Star with a bomb mm. and plant yeah. it. It could have been an exactly. inside job. Yeah. In fact, I like that's actually one thing that goes up but goes back to the novel so, Death Star because we got this one criminal who gets off the uh, criminal outpost on Desperay and gets onto the Death Star and manages to free himself and just infiltrate it. And he realizes that holy shit, if an infiltrator could get in here, he could cause havoc and no one could stop him. Yeah. Because yeah, this place is just so big. Yeah. It was why Han and, and Luke had infiltrated so well because it's like it's just big. You can't yeah. Can't... And, that, and that was the smallest one. <laughs> yeah. This one was like three times the size after that, and then of course hundred times the size where it was for the death station. Star Killer Base, yeah. Yeah. Ugh. 
But yeah, it's yeah, like, let's not talk about Star Killer. That doesn't it's, exist. It's, it's, <laughs> yeah, thank no. you. Forget Force it. Legends it, doesn't exist. It does kind of show the strengths and weaknesses of the Empire itself, though. It's like they are invulnerable against direct attack because they're so big and powerful. But the problem, because they're so big and powerful, is that they got no precision. They have they're so many big holes. that they can't. Yeah, which they can't they should, effectively they don't. control <laughs> every single weakness in their armor because they have so much armor. <laughs> yeah, and it did take Galen Urso upwards of 15 years to actually get that weakness put in. This isn't like something he just threw in at the last second. Mm. Yeah. I like they gave us a legitimate reason for it all. I just, when it comes to his character, I just feel like at the second you saw him, this, you knew That's... exactly what was going to happen the entire yeah. film. It's true. Which we kind of undermined him. Mm. He said right? we talked about it months ago, Matt. Yeah. No, he was, he was looking at. No one says hi. Oh, okay. Oh, well, right, I, yeah, I, I can't yeah. yeah, um, yeah he, we knew exactly what he was going to be about. We knew exactly how his story was going to end. We knew exactly how everyone involved was going to like react to him and the story and how it ends. It's, it was like so we've seen this before, kind of thing. It feels like. A waste but at the of same time, time I didn't, I didn't hate him though. Oh no, nothing against. Was... Again, the actor made a very good yeah. performance. Um, Again, Maz Mikkelsen is awesome. He's Hannibal Lecter, but it's. <clears throat> It's just, just predict- it's just predictable. It's just predictable. That's yeah. the, that's the only downside. What what did him just being very in this film add to the film? Is what I'm saying. Like he could have been anything else. Really. Did was yeah. Jin enhanced by him being his father? Her father, for example. Really, in the end, it, it just it moved the plot along. It wasn't so much uh, yeah. an enhancement. It was just more like, oh, that's a, a plot device. So that's why they want her because that's you know. Yeah, yeah. Looking back, it's the only reason they picked her. Mm. Yeah, that's yeah. the only reason they picked. Her. And it's the only reason that half the crew gets together. I mean, if that that, that mission, they just went oh, on this and mission Saul and they completed too, the mission, she used and that's to... it. Mm-hmm. Saul too. Her connection to Saul, that's the reason why they picked Yeah, her and that, where did that go, exactly? They wanted to get in touch with Saul for yeah. what reason? Because that went somewhere. Like, I, I get in universe that's kind of explained, but narratively well, speaking, they, why they, did they take no, no, that route? They did that because they wanted to get the information for the pilot because they knew he had the pilot. Um, and then on top of that, uh, she came mm. to also find where her father was. Like from her motivation, it was to yeah. find her father. For the rebels' motivation, is to get the pilot. Yeah, it just it seemed like and it also was, they could have written it differently. The, the like, I feel like that entire like <laughs> half an hour, forty five minutes of the film could have been completely oh, different. Oh, I also felt like they it. tried too hard to um, pass the uh, the Bechtel test. Is that the, how it's called? Bechtel test. Yeah, the, the, like the, the, the women Bechtel. get like the women mm-hmm. are good yeah. in this movie. Look, test. look at look at that first scene. She does not spoke, speak to a single person until Mon Mothma comes on scene, and then she talks to him like, "Oh yeah, we passed the Bechtel." Told that they like tried too hard to like pass the Bechtel test on that one. They were like, "She can talk to the other guys." Like, what? Well, come on. Like, what is it? What is it about Mon Mothma that makes her like? What's going on here? Is it because she's a woman? Like, you know, like it. Like, it was a bit weird. I don't know. I felt, I felt like that was like a little forced yeah. in what they were trying to do. Speaking of one that scene, do you remember what I said in the trailer? I don't know why I'm wearing a white passport around, sorry. Um, in the trailer when I said I didn't want her to give the briefing, I'm so glad she didn't give the briefing. I was like, thank you! She was there to represent the Alliance and talk about the mission, but not actually give the briefing because she's got captains and generals for that. Thank you! I loved oh, it. Oh, brief- the so yeah, it was like that small things, yeah. but it really matters when you think about it. Yeah, she, she she's a diplomat. Yeah, she's she diplomat. and she's a delegator as well. She has to be. She's got like she runs the entire alliance basically single handedly when it comes to the leadership. Yeah, it's in the EU yeah. quite heavily. Yep. And Bail Organa. Yes, he kind of turns up. For oh, reasons. okay. I thought it was really oh. weird the first the first time he showed up because they did like this really loud musical cue. Like, yeah, and he walks in, yeah, and he just stands weird. there. Like, he just, he just stands it, there. I think it would have like, been what? better if they dropped the musical cue and just kept the camera focused on Mon Mothma. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ignore him. Uh, quietly showing yeah. up. Don't make a big like... deal of it. But for anyone who's looking, you'll see him. Yeah, yeah, and we're and also it wasn't we're, even, like, we're earned, Star Wars. Like, we're st- yeah, yeah, we're Star Wars nerds. We know who he is. I felt like no one in the theater knew who, who, who's right. that guy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's exactly what happened. You don't even yeah. see him in the originals. And anyone who's an uh, original fan is just going to be like, what? Uh-huh. Yeah. I did like, like how... They're, who they're pandering in the originals, and that's it. They're pandering to the uh, original trilogy fan base right now based on the two movies that we've gotten so far and they show a prequel trilogy character yeah. who only a prequel trilogy like fan would really get and it's like yeah exactly when that came on no one in the theater was like what oh guys whisper, 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 whisper. it was none of that it was like <laughs> and, none yeah. of that and, and to was be like, fair like, even, for even, the for fans. Me, even for me for knowing it i was like don't i don't need this musical cue like yeah. what? right i like bail organa i genuinely think yeah, me too. i like it too yeah. Yeah. And we've yeah, t- was just, i was actually just super glad to see jimmy smith back was terrible. even then yeah, though we've talked about this before you. there's not really any reason for us to like him we just somehow all do and most people because he's a great character even though he does nothing really 
Yeah. If you read Wild Space. It, it, oh, yeah, no, I mean on film. Sorry, I mean on film. Like, he's a great average, character. I love oh, him. But film. film wise, the there's average, no real reason for us to like him. That's true. Oh, and for the, ma- the average moviegoer, the music cue just draws attention to this thing you don't know. Yeah. Like, right, that's, yeah. that's, it's like the worst thing you could do. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know. Even when he said he was going to go to Alderaan, I didn't hear too many people, like, Say you know what that means? It. Probably maybe because he whispered too. Like he kind of like, I'm gonna go to all the run and tell him there's no peace. Like like no, like I don't think he's like caught it. <laughs> yeah yeah. I was, that's also I was like, yo. <laughs> it's the like he's, all, yeah. he's, he's hinting at Leia or whatever. Like I trust this person. I don't know. I don't know who, what he's talking Obi-Wan about. Obi Wan and the Clone Wars. I, I like the brief mention of Obi Wan. I like how she brought it up. How I was like, don't you have that old Jedi friend? Like I don't know like why that worked yeah. for me. Like yeah. it was very subtle. And it just worked. I was like, she's talking about Kenobi. Like, I don't know. Like, that, that just hit me in the right place. Yeah, and yet she didn't know it was Kenobi. Like, yeah, I can imagine him saying, like, I have this one Jedi ally. Like, very quietly right, to yeah, her. Right, yeah, she knows that. Yeah. Like, yeah. old Jedi friend. It's like, yeah, I like how he kept, he kept it vague. Because if they ever found out, Jesus Christ, that would be bad. Be bad. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I love Mom Mothma in general. Like, she, to me, was great in this film. Um, I just I wish, really again, that she could have had more to do. It's... It was the same. She in this movie, she was played by the same woman the cast player in Revenge of the Sith, but cut all of her Ooh. scenes. I re- yeah. I was so sad by, saddened by that because she gave a great turn as the character, and I'm glad that she finally gets her day in the limelight because yeah. Genevieve O'Reilly or does a great job. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And again, it's the same with every character in this film. I can't think of a single character I thought uh, I don't like it. I just want to see more of them all. Because they, they all get mm-hmm. so little, they're spread out really fast just for the plot action beats and stuff. And it's like, I don't care about this predictable, boring, out, get it out of the way plot. I want to know about these characters so we can care about the amazing finale. And that's my biggest flaw. Where's our that. Bail Organa movie? <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, that's my biggest flaw <laughs> with the film. Like, take, That's the only problem. If you added more to the characters, mm-hmm. took away from some of the plot of the opening and middle acts, I would love it. And as it stands, it's just a really good film for me. But even despite that, um, which says a lot about the acting and stuff. I like I like also the Kenobi well, how they brought up Kenobi because of Bell specifically says um, we need every advantage and I was like that would be really cool if there was a scenario where Kenobi survived and he like acted as a general for like the Rebel mm. Alliance I was like that would be a really cool Kota style like but more just just thinking about it and then the way he was talking about like like I was like oh yeah that would be kind there, of, there, oh, there's, nice. there's probably some fan fiction out there <laughs> I'm sure <laughs> fan fiction exists for everything mm-hmm. yes. Yeah, no, it's definitely a cool thing. I liked how they were, you know, talking about we need every advantage. Just, yes. Just talk yeah. about this stuff. It's important. <laughs> yeah. It was really, I like that scene. Yeah. Oh, I also like to see, oh, a very small moment. I like, this is like, like a lot of small moments in the movie that yeah, I like Yeah, that's why. Like, that's why uh, I when, spread out. <laughs> I wanted more of it. When they got the signal from Scare that they were um, all attacking, and the, the commu- comms guy, like, comes, like, and starts running yeah. at Mon Mothma, and, like, the blue, the blue squadron is like, hey, stop that. Like, yeah, steady are you trying to, like, <laughs> That was like a really small moment. I was like, dude, you can't just run up on Mon Mothma like that. You can't just yeah. like, yell her name. That's that looks really suspect. Like I was like, I like that someone's like instead of him like coming up to her and be like, they're on scare of like having someone stop like just like. Shaker. Did you put your name in the like, goblet of fire? Did you? <laughs> <laughs> I like, I like yeah. that someone stops and be like, yo, bro, relax. I know. Like you know, like that was like a small moment, but it was like, yeah, that's like, yeah, like if someone's gonna run up on like the president of the United States yeah, or something like but that. That's the like, thing. You don't just run up on Obama, like you know, like yeah. it, it just works. But that's the thing. It's such a small moment. Talk. It's the sort of thing that I would nitpick after the fact if they hadn't done it. But it adds so much to a scene because it makes it real. It, every moment like that adds more weight to the reality you're seeing. And, and it's even what like I him about himself. Even when he got held back and he looked at him, he's like, yeah, he's like oh, oh yeah, sorry. Right, sorry about that. I just, I was yeah, panicking. Like, and he's like, I'm straightening his goggles. Sorry. <laughs> and yeah, the guy's not like... What, con- I, what it just looked like. Yeah, and the guy's not confrontational about it. He's just like, steady, right? Yeah, he's like... like, like oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, my muffin's like, 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 oh, cool okay. Bit, but bro, bro, relax. Breathe. Whereas Imperial, he's just been like, executed on the spot. Uh, it's all even um, actually it reminds me of the Thrawn, <clears throat> Thrawn trilogy the opening it's like we're this is an Imperial Star Destroyer we don't shout across the bowels sir and it's like sorry and it's like I think uh, Gillian was that pass over the part how did we talk about how Luke's position got I feel like we yeah talked about we didn't mention it we didn't mention it uh, did Red 5 dies so we yeah 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 and also they have something against portly pilots <laughs> yeah because <laughs> so Porkins. Porkins dies again goodbye <laughs> again yeah uh, uh. I, I, I was doing I like research on the character of Porkins, and what I found out was actually kind of fascinating. The reason why he's so hefty isn't because he's fat, it's actually because he comes from a high gravity world, so that's all muscle. He has <laughs> oh to have a really stocky God. build because <laughs> high gravity world. But then everyone likes to take the piss oh, out of him because he looks geez. like he's fat. But anytime this he is why the EU it, exists, people. <laughs> yeah. 
so yeah, it's, he's. It's you know, also the reason why some people can't stand it. Yeah, yeah, it's also why it sometimes <laughs> works and sometimes doesn't. Yeah, it's so yeah. Porkins, he's actually he's basically got a power lifter's physique where he looks fat, but he's actually just pure muscle with a super strong core and could probably just pick you up with one hand with zero effort. They came at us from behind. <laughs> I wish I got that line. That would have been hilarious. I don't know. It's almost more offensive that they decided to justify or like try to rationalize why he looks like that instead of just <laughs> letting him look like the just, nah, he's just, just, they he just liked the He liked his chips. Oh, and a really, really, really small thing uh, is that Gareth Edwards is really into blue milk because that's like one of the uh, sets that he met, uh, that he visited in real life, uh, yep, the, the Tunisia the set. Uh, so yeah, at the very beginning with the, the mom when she's talking to, to Saw, like you see, like he's like cousin, and you think it's like a, a it, narratively. You definitely it's, notice it's for, it. Yeah, it, it's for it's for the mom. Like that's like narratively speaking, like that's what the push-ins for. But the push-ins for Gareth and his blue milk. That's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that's the real. That's the whole that, reason we have that set. Yeah, that was that was yeah. actually one little thingy I did really enjoy though. How much uh, I guess the Urso family farm resembled. The uh, Lars family farm because yeah, it's a moisture farm. It's a nice, it's a nice, yeah, you know. it's a nice little design commonality that kind of reminds you that they're in the same in the same universe. It's like, yeah. I did wonder why they parked so far away though. The empire's yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> because then you can't walk with your flowing cape in the wind. Yeah, <laughs> and you're yeah, death trooper. But it wasn't know? even like the scene where he could get away with it because he was like trudging through the mud and it was grey and <laughs> raining and it was oh god. <laughs> I was missed anyway. I think it was mainly just a question of finding a good landing site because when you yeah, actually look at the farm, geography, kidding, but, it's yeah. like yeah. it's like the Jin fa- the Urso family farm was kind of set on a bluff overlooking those flats. <laughs> so they, it's like he probably wanted to land next to the house, but it's like, yeah, there's nowhere safe to land over there. The terrain's too rough, so just land in the flats. Yeah, no, I'm only yeah. kidding. Oh, and it, speaking, it, speaking of. Yeah. Speaking of original trilogy Easter eggs, we see a very familiar oh, yeah. duo in Jeddah. Yeah. yeah. Well, v- vagina face and fucked up nose guy, I thought was really <laughs> excessive. Yeah. It also really added to the robot episode. chicken scene where, because the guy looks like he's like apologizing, like sorry about that, and it's like it, makes, it adds to the robot chicken scene where he's like, I'm sorry, yeah. man, I didn't make my guys had too much to drink, and then lops his arm off. Like that's kind of that's kind of that's kinda what he what he's saying in the movie right now. He's like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. sorry. Yeah, precisely. Yeah. It's like it's like trying to make excuses, but. Ben takes it as aggression. It's like, it always made a bit. Because then also it's like, like what they when they they end up in Tatooine is like. And a... somehow they escape the whole bombing as well. It was like what? Yeah, <laughs> seriously. Like, was, I was I was, really I was flipping forced. through the visual dictionary really and it said that apparently in that scene the two of them were actually specifically heading to the space. Yeah, to, to leave. leave. Yeah, but even then they would have had to, be, to have been. But that's the only way it explained. Yeah. But it's really. All it's All really the Easter eggs are yeah. like that. Though. I mean, there's a planet called Wobani, Obi Wan. There's um, yeah. uh, the R2 and C3PO thing. Yeah, that was uh, way I too didn't like, I, I didn't like I would've... that cameo. And, it was just... and it could have worked, just not in that context. They could have been like yeah. on the ship yeah. or something with Leia. Yeah, I, I would have had them in yeah, behind. Just it. have them pass. Have the guy who's got the plans run past them or something on the yeah. That's fine. And then C3PO's like, goes like, oh. Oh, we're going yeah. to the sheriff. Was going that much <laughs> I mean, that's ridiculous. You know, but, whatever. Yeah. To, to me, yeah, I would, I would, have, I would have liked it. The thing I think it would work. And it best ruined the pace of what was going on too, because like mm. there's this build up of this battle, and there's like scarif or scarif. It's like no, no one, no one, tells, me things, no one ever tells, no one ever tells me the translator droid yeah. this. Ugh. It's like, but the thing I would have loved and I think would have made it work. Oh, wait, before, I love, I love the because you said that with the droid. I love the K two line. Where he's like, "What do I know? I'm just oh, like yeah. an expert of like a strategic <laughs> yeah. analysis." Like, I, I love that. that it's like, what do I know? I'm just about strategic analysis. I loved it. It was brilliant. Yeah. You're right. It's a nice little piggyback. But the thing I th- sorry, I just want to say the thing I would, thought would have worked well with R two and the C three PO was have her be behind have her have them be behind Leia when she's got that. Uh, shot because not only would that work to give them a cameo which they didn't really need in the first place it would also distract us from her face which would have been a, like a it would have kind of hidden from the digital stuff it would have enhanced the fact that we wouldn't be constantly just looking at that we kind of wouldn't have been slightly distracted i would have thought that would work really well have her be them framing Perhaps. her behind her uh, and that effect mm-hmm. like it blurred in the I background still think, kind of I still think if they just put her in a darkened room it would have done probably a lot to yeah it was the lack of perfection a uh, lack of uh, imperfection sorry it was just yeah um, there was also um, well, a couple of Rebels Easter eggs, mm-hmm. which I actually didn't pick up until my second viewing. The ghost. I don't care about Rebels Easter eggs. Well, no, I, what not, not only the ghost, but Chopper's in there. 
Chopper's Dirt. in there, and also uh, there's a uh, scene where, where they're just Sindula. leaving. Yeah, there's a scene where they're just leaving the briefing room, and they said, Captain Sandula, please report to the Man general. She got promoted. General, sorry. Well, no, yeah. no, she is captain right now, but like in the sorry, show sorry. itself. So we, spoiler alert, she's gonna be a general in Rebels, guys. Sorry. Oh, oh, oh. She survives. Yeah. It's the one thing we knew about. Well, that career. really confirmed. Well, so we now well, you know. I don't think Kanan and Ezra are gonna be on that ghost. I think it's just gonna be her and the ghost. Possibly Sabine and Zeb. But Kanan and we'll Ezra see. should definitely not be in the ghost. That would make no <laughs> sense. So here are two all. Jedi we're not exploiting in any way. Even exactly. We just said yeah, we've got like, our, assets. They're not, they're not there. My mother was just like, yeah. <laughs> we should use oh, every resource. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's where's actually where's that? one, you, one you can of the things where Kanan and Ezra... I like, actually think they need to be dead. behind her looking all offended. In the unknown regions of Obi-Wan. This is actually something I've been saying about the Force Unleashed for a while, because I really like Force Unleashed, but... Coda and Starkiller basically have to die before Luke joins up or otherwise be otherwise detained. Because the thing is, is that why would Luke spend three years as part of the Alliance just messing around on his own with no formal training if there are other Jedi members of the Alliance that he yeah. could go to? That's, they gotta be gone. That's the biggest part. Why it's not he, that they're not yeah. being used by the rebels because that you can just explain away with them being on another front. It's the fact that they would pull them from that front to train Luke. Like, they, they it's like, oh you're, a force, oh, oh, you're a force prodigy who Obi-Wan highly recommended. Okay. Let's, <laughs> yeah, let's put you tra- right in the... Fr- yeah, uh, let's train you up. And it's like, yeah. it's, not like he, it's not like Luke's not well known in the Alliance, you know, after yeah. New Hope. <laughs> yeah, he did kind of, you know, blow up the Death Star. Yeah. At news travels pretty pretty well. Yeah. He's well known throughout the galaxy, actually. Yeah. He's like a war hero. They, yeah, they exactly. used him as a poster boy, didn't they? Even in the new canon, yeah. that was the point of him. Um, yeah. Al- Alderaan gets blown up, enrages everyone, and Death Star gets destroyed, everyone gets hope. It's like the perfect combination. Yeah, so that, that, that goes worst for... Day. Yeah, well, so that's... Yeah, the Rebels. I could wait, get, wait, I... Tarkin did what? What? Next report, he yeah. comes in and like, wait, what? Tarkin's dead? On what? Oh, fuck. <laughs> It's uh, basically that scene from Robot Chicken where mm. Vader rings up Palpatine to let him know that the Death Star has been blown. Who's they? What the hell is another aluminum falcon? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking <I> Palpatine. <laughs> yeah. You know, I um, gotta say, I apparently in McDiarmid has actually seen that particular skit. Yeah, you and said his before. response is that mm-hmm. yeah, he kind of found it shockingly accurate. <laughs> It just would have had a different tone to it, but that's basically well, pretty Palpatine much, yeah. Was pretty much, if like, yeah. Palpatine dropped all pretense and just let whatever went through his head come out of his mouth, that's what he would be like. He'd be a fucking troll. Indeed. Mm-hmm. So what else have I mean, we covered? I mean, the way he fought Mace and all those faces. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, for yeah. scream, as that's explained. Um, yeah. what have uh, what have we missed? Because we've missed a lot. I think I. I don't think we missed a lot. I think that okay. Well, yeah, we've think covered. I mean, yeah, that's pretty much. I feel like we're missing a lot, but that might just be me. I don't think so. What do you mean missing a lot? I don't think we. It's mainly we went direction through, was going amazing. through this review non-linearly. We've just been kind of discussing. Yeah, it was not linear, but Th- yeah, this is we weren't going through scene by scene. This is incredibly minor, and I'm probably the only one who was affected by this. But I was slightly disappointed that we didn't get a scene where we where the Death Star enters hyperspace. I'm glad I kind of wanted that. to see that. Yeah, yeah, because it did say, didn't. like, oh, something's coming out of hyperspace, and then it was already there, you know? No, but I, I, I legitimately years. wanted to see the Death Star, like, enter. Yeah, no. Like, just, exiting's just like we fine, saw but... the frigates come out yeah. of hyperspace, which is actually pretty awesome. That was a really awesome effect. No, but can you just imagine, you know... That huge thing just going... <laughs> yes, that's exactly what I mean, and that was yeah. that was a little disappointing. That's why I'm glad they did, what they did the because I like being able to imagine it. It's kind of that whole... I know, because, like... Mystique. No, I mean, like... I'm with Evan on this one. Even like in New Hope, they New Hope, uh, they talk about you know the Death Star speed and all that. But all we see in the movie is like all this. <laughs> I think, and we know I think it has hyperdrive really work capability. To actually, have the Death Star pop. Boop. One of the things that I like imagining is just the Death Star popping out of hyperspace. And you know how most other ships have that sort of sort of thud sound when they pop up. Just, pew! I just imagine yeah, exactly. the Death Star would just be a big sonic boom. Yeah. Or just and like now, a, a unique, a unique like entering sound effect, you know, to accommodate the extra mass. Mm. That would have been really yeah. interesting. I, I honestly think that was a bit of a waste. I was like, really? Like, it would have taken you two seconds. No, I well, can see where it's coming from, something... but uh, I'm, I'm fine yeah. either way, really, on this one. Um, uh, yeah. Well, because so... we've never, never, yeah. never really seen, had any visual representation of the, of the Death Star's hyperdrive capability, even though we know we have 
it has one. Yeah. So it, <laughs> it would just, be a I terrible this, weapon if it didn't it, have yeah, one. Yeah, <laughs> if it didn't have it, it would be the most retarded thing ever. Like, <laughs> no, that's what I mean. But well, it's we like, can threaten one planet at a time in one system, but it's going to take us millions of years if we want to get to Coruscant. Right. <laughs> no, <laughs> Coming. I know, that's just it, exactly. <laughs> that's so why it's so big, nice it's got to have this entire population repopulating uh, re, uh, on it every time. <laughs> yeah. No, it would have been... <laughs> oh, jeez. No, but I just... That was like minor complaint, but it really would have been nice. Yeah, that's fair enough. So, I, I see just thought I'd, I do just love thought I'd say that. I don't know how you guys, you know. They all jump out. I don't know what you guys think of that, but that's my two yeah, cents. I, but I gotta say, I loved the fact that they used any opportunity they could to have shots of the Death Star just hovering above some planet. Because they went for some really interesting ones, too. Like, the one where you see the Death Star above Jeddah, where it's like you're just panning up, showing the planet, with just a little crescent sliver of the Death Star against <laughs> the shadow of the world. Yeah. I thought that was so cool. That My favorite cool. sequence was when it was after they blew up uh, the city of Jeddah, and it's after the uh, hyperspace away cast. Yeah, I think it was a good transition because one, it you takes did. you from it takes you from first uh, our heroes, and then it takes us straight to the villain, and it's like a perfect transition because you have like the the just the hyper, up, hyper showing, and then yeah, and then you see the destruction, up, and then you see the Death Star, and... and then you have Tarkin and um, Krennic having yeah, their scene. Really, it's like that's like yeah. from a filmmaking that perspective, and that was like yeah. the cleanest transition I've seen yeah. in, in a while. It was really nice. One Looks thing great. I gotta say is I really liked how the tone in the Death Star's command bridge when they're blowing up Jetta, it felt almost like a cocktail party. Like they could have had mm. servers all gathered around and, and the room yeah. with drinks yeah. and Krennic's just standing there, arms crossed, holding a beverage, and it would have fit perfectly. Yeah, it was like, it was really well done that. Entire that entire sequence was really well done. Um the direction of the entire film, I think, is definitely something we should nod to. Like the small things we've kind of glossed over with the Vader scene when he walked up towards uh, Jennick and it's got the um, Jennick and it's got the shadow just dwarfing him. Um, that that mm-hmm. shot was beautiful, and this film is filled mm-hmm. with stuff like that. Uh, it's it's definitely one of those movies that you could watch like several times and like you know notice a bunch of little yeah, things definitely. or view it from a different yeah. perspective. It it's has a, the best. It definitely has best that appeal. Looking, it's the best looking Star Wars film Easily. for me. Easily. It's just oh, uh, it looks. Know, Superb. Yeah. Um, the ATATs as well, uh, despite the fact that they can apparently sneak up on an entire flank, um, were, were amazing <laughs> the way you could shoot. They, they shot um, from the, the ground up all the time. Like they had that fre- threatening presence being right up and close in your face. I love that. Um, the pilot shots again, we got to see them all. Um, the transitions of the X Wings flying across the screen up in the battle when you're going down to the ground of the soldiers. I mean, that entire end sequence, we've not really touched on that much um, other than saying it's amazing. Uh, the mm-hmm. the war the way it was shot as a war film that entire sequence was wonderful it felt yeah. really real um, which is what it had to do I also like just um, the use of like technology like uh, in that they don't really know what they're doing like you were talking about the pilot and like what what am I looking for or Cassian has to learn how to operate the archive thing yeah. I don't know what I'm doing but yeah I mean just the idea of the shield. What was it called? Uh, shield yeah. gate. Yeah, shield gate. Somewhere. Shield gate. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Iris. Yeah. I mean, I just I thought that was like a clever. It was like a clever plot device because it's like a similar ending to Return of the Jedi, but it's different. It's like mm-hmm. a carbon copy. It invokes the same ideas and goals, but it's different. It's not it's unique enough. Copy paste. Yeah. It's you know, one of which the rare examples when I saw something come up on a, on screen and thought, oh, mm, I wonder what that is. Um, I, it could be that. That's pretty cool. And then they immediately go and say, yeah, that's what it is. Like that almost never happens in Star Wars because they usually just either gloss over it or give you something else. I mean, I really liked it. Um, that entire sequence was really well done for me in that regard, mm. except for the space battle. That was a bit odd. In the, uh, you like the space battle? It was really well shot and amazing and fun and great in that regard. It's just the the like we said with the Empire, they weren't really doing every, anything right, yeah, <laughs> which, it's which like stands the out. Death Star, it's like the Star Destroyers were just kind of sitting around posturing, but it's like other than fight, sending in their Tie Fighters, it's like you don't really see the Empire really fighting back. Hmm. It's like you don't see. The, I would have sworn I saw their lasers going off the whole time. You don't see the firepower of the actual Star Destroyers, which is what is their biggest thing. They're destroyers. They wipe out other cruisers and the corvettes and, right. and, and capital ships. Yeah. And they deployed those TIE fighters like stupidly late. Um, which again seems <laughs> yeah. like a minor thing, but it's like that private thing. It's to people who notice it. It stands out as a huge. It kind of completely changes the weight of the and the emotion of the scene, um, which is a shame. But it's again, it's minor in the grand scheme. It, they, the end was still really great, and Vader as well. <laughs> Including that shot when he was standing in space. Um, I, remember, yeah, yeah, I, like, I, I, really, I thought it would have been really dope if he actually came in and like his advance and started just wrecking some stuff before he boarded. Like, I thought mm. that would have been kind of cool. Yeah, that would have been awesome. 
cutting through. I like how most of the rebels escaped though. I didn't want them all to die in this in space as well. Right. Yeah. 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 Because that would have been. Uh, a lot of escape. Pretty much all of them. Except, well, it, the, except for that the, transport uh, that was taken. <laughs> Well, yeah, the one that went right into the yeah. territory. It's like, what was yeah. even there? Transports don't do anything in space fights. <laughs> they, they deploy things and they leave. But yeah, it was it was funny anyway. Um, but I did kind of, I did like that. It's like Vader's Star Destroyer just pops up just as some of these ships are going into hyperspace, and you just yeah. see them glance off its armor. And yeah, be it's kind of super the, the X wing, you see a lot of X wings going like evasive maneuvers, going like this and like out, but all still in formation. Like you can tell someone in there was like evasive, and then they all yeah. went evasive at the same time. Yeah, which so is that was really, really nice cool. to see. Um, I wish they'd have used their combat speed frame mode when they're going through the gate. Though they're always like, "Come on, come on, come on!" Like, Why are you? In, are the oh, yeah, in attack wings, position? Why are you oh, in attack did, yeah. position? You go you faster when right they're now. closed. <laughs> <laughs> So it even makes the whole thing about that in in a new hope. So it's like, what? Why have you got the S foils locked into a task position? Even though that's just random jargon. But yeah. Um, but again, it's all nitpicks. It's a good thing when you can your only critiques are nitpicks. Mm. I can't. Are we moving else. on then? Like, yeah. I mean, what's next? I think we're. I think yeah, we're done. We, can we think of anything else? <laughs> yeah, we've covered I think, most I think things. We've covered just about everything we wanted to cover. Right, so just... I guess. I guess you can cut Closing me out. Statements? I just thought we were doing a game or something. Well, I mean, I mean we're done with the review, but... Yeah, but so I meant okay. move on to the... I'd say some closing yeah. statements. Oh, so yeah, we closing finish off the yeah. review, okay. then we move well, on. Matt, so, so Matt yeah. who wants to go then. first? Matt said something then. We didn't hear him. What? Uh, it wasn't going to be a closing statement. I was just going to point out that we didn't talk about next time on the vote. Yeah, yeah. no, no. That, that I was saying that we were... when. Yeah, he, we're, we're in the right ballpark right now. We're okay, good. That's fine. Okay. Closing up the review, not the episode. Who wants to go first for closing statements to end this review? Who wants to go okay, first? I get the <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, this is the Star Wars movie that I have been wanting to see for, well, since forever. It's the one that I've wanted to... Because it, perp- it perfectly encapsulates everything that the expanded universe itself is all about. I'm just really, really sad that this movie had to come at the expense of the expanded universe, which means that it's a great movie, highly recommended, but for me, it's always going to be a bittersweet thing because it's got everything I want, but it tramples over a lot of the stuff I I love. So, mm. yeah. Dang it, That's wait, been I don't want to like... Me for years. Wait, so... what are you, be more specific. What are you talking about? <laughs> no, mostly it's just the fact that it's not specifically adapting Because EU it's part material. of the new canon. Like, yeah, yeah. Down yeah. To which, is, which is what makes me so sad, because this movie plays out almost like an expanded universe novel. It's like, it kind of feels like an adaptation for some expanded universe novel that I loved, but the novel itself just doesn't exist, and... It's like, it really encapsulates everything that the EU is all about. Just fleshing out the universe, at telling you alternative stories, telling you that there's other stuff go, going on. But instead of, you know, being part of the EU and adding to that tapestry, it's instead just adding to a totally different tapestry that, well, frankly, I just, is one I don't really care about because Disney canon so far has been lackluster. It's like, this is the probably the only thing that Disney has produced that I actually really, really like. And, yeah, we already had this thing at the yeah. beginning where we said whether or not I know, it's I know, I know. I'm just using I mean, it as... Yeah. They did produce it, to be fair, in this instance. But Umbrella term. For me here, you could basically take out Cassie and, and Jin for um, Kyle Katarn and Jan, and it would be like EU, effectively. It would be a completely different story, granted, but it could have been an adaptation. Um, so it's like, mm-hmm. it's... For me, I just I can imagine it in the original um, canon easily enough. Um, it's not yeah, a big I mean, deal. for the most part, it slots in pretty yeah. well. And my approach to the new canon is just think of it as a separate entity anyway. It's the only thing we can do now. Yeah, it's we shouldn't like have, an we alternate shouldn't have universe to. to me. We shouldn't yeah, have to, exactly. but we have to, so the should is irrelevant. Um, for me, the film was great. I loved it, um, especially after talking about all of this now, because there are a lot of things that I realized I liked. Um, and I've now kind of acknowledged that part that I've liked as well, um, which I'm happy with. Um, I just feel like the first act and second act could have been completely redone and been more about the characters rather than the plot, because the plot was at the end, and it would have been enhanced if we had the characters more. This, I, would, I just want to see more from the characters, because always... I liked these characters. They were good characters, well acted. They just There wasn't enough of them, that's all. Yeah. It, but it tells I you something agree. when I want more. So yeah, that's a good thing. Yeah. No, yeah, and that definitely is one of this movie's uh, greatest strengths, at least for me as well, is its staying power. Uh, like I said in the beginning, I wasn't really 
thinking about Force Awakens as much after I'd after I'd already seen it. Whereas I'm still thinking about this movie now, and it's been like over over a week since my second viewing. So that's definitely a major plus in my book. And I again, I really hope that the spinoffs continue in this direction and this whole general overall feel and approach to doing it because um, that that's how you should that is how you should approach an anthology series. Hmm. You know, make it slot in and make it. Make it connect accordingly, but still make it um, enjoyable. So, yeah, highly recommended for me as well. Kinda not to stir up. Wanted to say, not to stir up a debate, but uh, people who kind of bring up the whole Kyle Katarn uh, thing, like the Death Star plans in the expanded universe and how they were acquired and everything, is actually very conflicting in in the old uh, expanded yeah. universe. Oh, I agree. Like I agree. Star Wars, oh, yeah. X Wing, Dark Forces, Battlefront Two even has like an explanation for it. Like it's all so. Like actually, that's something I've brought. It's up. always like, been something that's been. Yeah, yeah. Well, so, like, for actually, some people, actually, hang on, let Anton finish. Let Anton finish quickly. Okay. Sorry, just for a second. I knew, I knew it was gonna happen. I knew me bringing that was gonna happen, <laughs> but I had I had to get it out there to say that that that's the case, and that is something that John Knoll, the writer or the person, he didn't write uh, write it, but he came up with the story idea. Uh, he's a very famous uh, visual effects uh, artist um, uh, for Lucasfilm. Uh, did it back when ILM was working on the prequels, and uh, also, fun fact, he's the creator of Photoshop. Um, he, when he was talking to, uh, the story group, he was like, Hey, I would like to do this story. Is there anything that's like conflicting? And Pablo Hidalgo actually told him, he's like, ah, there's so much like conflicting on it that like, just do what you want to do. And then we'll see from there, like what we'll do. Um, but yeah, like I, I, I don't think it, it completely captured the original theme that was pitched to me at Star Wars Celebration in 2014. Uh, only a little snippet of it, uh, with, a uh, M. Chirrut. Um, but ultimately I really like it. Uh, I don't think at all that it's like empire caliber even in the discussion no, of that area no. at all be, I don't know but no. it's extremely good and it's a very solid film and i think it's as solid as it should be like it's not supposed to be empire like empire is like a different kind of beast in, it, in itself and this is its own thing i think and it, mm-hmm. comparing to i think is not fair to this movie so i was gonna say because, earlier yeah. in the beginning of the podcast when that came up i was like it's not even a legitimate comparison mm. yeah, yeah exactly so the scale even doesn't to... even yeah I mean, Empire is one of the greatest films the of all time. It's on. not just one of the best yeah, Star Wars the films. Yeah, the themes that are going on and everything, yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so that kind of stuff. And I, even even for me, like, I don't think it even breaches, like, my favorite in terms of, like, original trilogy stuff. But it's still, like, a very solid film that I really enjoyed. Um, I do feel like the characters, like, were – there's a little bit want from it in terms of a writing perspective. But in terms of the performances, I think we're just – stellar across the board uh that finale for me was just like the best thing uh for me and yeah like i'm really excited for the han solo um star wars story that they're gonna come up with uh, especially because it'll be a different tone it's gonna be more of a lighter tone so i like to see what they like, do with that mm-hmm. sorry connie you were gonna say something i just didn't want to cut off the Antoine. okay well my time. my idea about the co- when I read the justific, I was originally on the same page with Antoine in regards to all of the conflicting stories about the Death Star plans, but as soon as I actually read the justification for it and how they rectified that, I was like, oh my god, this is amazing. Because the way they justified it is they said that each separate mission was instead chasing after a different component of the Death Star plans. Like, say, one was going after the weapon system, one was going after the life support systems, the other was going after the structural schematics, and then and basically what happened is that all of the plans were brought together consolidated and loaded into r2d2 who used his droid ai brain to bring them all together and create the single definitive complete death star schematics that we see and i really really like that because it adds a whole lot of layers to the story it's like a really great espionage thriller with twists and turns and it's like it's the sort of thing that would make for a great HBO miniseries. It's like each episode would just be focusing on a specific aspect of this mission. It's like one mission where you're chasing after these this set of plants, one mission where you're chasing after that set of plants, and then the final episode where you just consolidate everything and bring it all together. I can imagine the yeah, series about... What it... Hmm. Sorry, I was, I what is the sort? Okay, go, 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 go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No, I'm letting you go. Okay, okay. I, was, I can imagine a, like a series about a rebel intelligence department, like multiple departments working on multiple different things, and have someone having piecing together at the end, realizing wait a second, these aren't the separate plans; these are the same plans, kind of thing. I can see that very easily coming to, uh, into fruition. But yeah, sorry. Mm-hmm. Is that something that someone came up uh, with as a theory, or is that something that you're sourcing right now? It was. It was actually originally come up with as an explanation. I think it was from the. Uh, the uh, new essential guide to chronology 
It's one of those things that I know of. I just forget where it's from because I'm an idiot. But it is a thing. It's, it is their justification for all of these conflicting missions. They basically said, okay, they're just chasing after different portions of the Death Star plan so they can combine them together and analyze this thing and figure out a weakness. And this plan just happened to be the floor part then. <laughs> this was the part of the plan with the floor in it. That, that could work easily. I mean, that's the sort of thing you have to do with the cannon. You just have to warp it in your head until it makes sense. Which is why conflicts yeah. rarely matter, because you can just think, outthink them. Yep. Unless they're really stupid, like Dark Empire. <laughs> but anyway. Um, I had the same feeling with Dark Empire. <laughs> Matt, what's your... I think um, that's something to discuss in another video, because I got my own views on that, but neither here nor there. Well, Focus I'm on sure we'll one. hit it at some point. Um, speaking like of reviews thing. and what's coming up, we've all done our closing statements, correct? Uh, Wait, the, didn't Matt? No, he, I don't know. You went already? Uh, I just asked Matt, but then I, I thought he had, because I thought I was forgetting it. Uh, I apologize. I mean, it's it's kind of like you guys summed up everything. Like, to me, I think it's... I, I agree with uh, pretty much everything Pretty much everything you guys have said. It's not really been discordant. Um, but to add on to Connor's point, I think it's... The reason why it appeals to me is because it does feel like uh, an expanded universe work adapted for the big screen. And it's the first of its kind in that way for me and um if you look at it, a lot of the people who didn't like it they're the kind of people that i don't think would have appreciated or didn't appreciate the expanded universe ever because it's the the overall tone the idea that you already kind of know what the end of the story is going to be it turned off like a lot of people um or a fair amount of people and to me it's just this opens doors for them to to do one-offs where wherever they feel like a story deserves to be told i don't want to see a, a one-off about every little thing but I think that this is a, a door opener in a in a good way. To piggyback off of that, I hope that they get the original trilogy stuff out of their system because I feel like that so far what we're getting is like the pandering to that with yeah. the Force Awakens with Rogue One and what we're gonna get with Han Solo. I like for me what I think the true excitement for me personally will come from is when they actually expand out from from that. Yeah, I want a story yeah. that has nothing yeah. to do with anything like right that just is in the Star Wars universe, and this is like the first. It's not that, Lips. but I feel like it opens the door to that. Exactly, exactly. This is a guy living his life in the slums of Coruscant. Uh, he's just a, he's got a bit of a gambling problem. He goes to work every yeah. day. He's like, let's have <laughs> let's have something simple, a normal just Star Wars story. That's all we need. Yep. We haven't yet got it. <laughs> so right. now we move on to what? The vote. Oh, sorry. Okay, so yeah, vote. the vote. Okay, so yes. So our last video quite a while ago, you guys yeah. voted on um, <laughs> what we would review next in the Legends Archive, which is another series that we do if you're new to the uh, the podcast. Uh, it's where we look at some of the Legends material and review it just to get more exposure for that stuff for people who aren't aware with it, which I... Okay, so just um, a little story really quick, uh, which apparently mm -hmm. like people really... I didn't know how bad Dark Disciple would be in terms of what people did not know about Quinlan Voss, but I did not oh, I realize it when yeah. I did my latest vote video for, cause at first I put him with like canon people and I was like, oh, maybe, but no, I thought that, that was a stupid decision. So I put two Legends characters and they're like, you're not gonna use like canon the Dark Disciple of Quinlan Voss, like he's so much better. I was like, are you, do you not know what his original <laughs> story is? That is why we are like, so opposed to the deletion of the EU. Yeah. Yeah. When I, saw that, your, when I saw that comment on that, when I saw that comment of yours on that board, I just burst out laughing because it's oh, like the been... one where someone says like, "Why not Quinlan?" And I was like, "I think I said like, don't take offense to this, but fuck, can <laughs> Quinlan Voss is that point yeah. you're yeah. to?" Yes. <laughs> in moderate <laughs> ways, I've been feeling that in glimpses since 2008. It's got nothing to do I, with that's... Disney. It just it's yeah. Yeah. like it's just it's just oh, different. Oh, Disney pays for it to make it. I don't make it. Yeah, I want to make. I want to make an official versus video request of you right now because I'm okay. high on Rogue One. <laughs> Cassie and Andor versus Cartho Nasi make it happen. Cassie, <laughs> there's so there's nothing to do with Cassie. I was gonna say Cassie's <laughs> not a thing. He's a non-entity. It works. <laughs> make it work, damn it. Um, that's he funny. can shoot you when he's, use, you're not expecting I am going to use Pierre Carno, so I'm gonna see, if I can make that work, then I'll try and make anything work. Hey, to be fair, um, if yeah. anyone's talking about making things work, Connor made Warb Null a, a character, so you know. <laughs> Leading into... 
All right, cool. So the vote, the voting came out to uh, analysis like the ways into how the voting panned out. But four percent went to uh, Dawn of the Jedi, and then five percent, which was really low, went to Quillen Voss into Darkness. Uh, and then, then the top three were kind of like very similar. It was twenty five percent to Legacy of the Force, twenty eight percent to the Kotor uh, comics, and then the winner, thirty five percent of the vote, was Tales of the Jedi, which is what we're going to be reviewing next on the Legends Archive. That'll be on Classic. my channel, I think. We're starting at record. the very beginning. It's yeah, a it's a good place to start. Channel, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. oh my uh, which is cool because um i'm familiar with that uh arc but i have not read like like it back to front so it was like the first major one i ever read so well, it was one of the first so eight major ones wasn't very it? nostalgic for me i got both of the mm. uh, i got both of the anthologies up on, on my bookshelf so you guys can yeah. try convincing me because the main reason why I, i've not read a lot of that stuff like the stuff that's like really really far in the past and stuff that's like really far in the future is because it felt so disconnected to me um from what jedi are to me and that kind of stuff so perhaps you guys can convince me like otherwise but like that's how i'm going to be coming into the review is like I'm challenge very, accepted like, the biggest very, thing like, about it is it's a take on the jedi before the prequels set the jedi kind of thing yes yeah. that's true that's the biggest thing about that kind so it's of vastly different it, it actually makes sense though because i mean when you think about four thousand years difference oh yeah. it makes it's it quite a long time. time although apparently they're still yeah. using the hammerheads for millennia but well, yeah for millennia later yeah, so. <laughs> yeah they are it's it's, it's like a, a spitfire being works. used in, in yeah, the modern yeah, warfare well that's yeah, it's like, it's like vintage cars, technology you know, people... no yeah yeah everything gets slightly more retro in the past but it's exactly the same technology underneath when you think when you think about it, though, that actually kind of makes a little bit of sense to me because it's a huge galaxy. It would take a while for technology to really disseminate, and you'd always have certain technology that's just regarded as tried and true standard that there's no point in changing because disseminating the upgraded version would take so bloody long that's just not worthwhile. Oh yeah, to another thing Rogue One. I'm going to point out real quick. I like how the Stormtroopers are talking about the T, um, the T-15s, and how they're finally uh, being obsolete. Yeah. They're just obsolete. That's another little tidbit. <laughs> Yeah, they did a lot. Oh, of you know, took them long enough. Okay, and now we're gonna finally do the Council of Godland that we promised like three yes. episodes. I don't know, <laughs> guys. It's kind of late. We've been going on for a while. I mean, should we just skip All it right. this time? Okay, cut what I just said out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, oh, I'm kidding. Oh boy, wow, really? <laughs> we're gonna get comments, but it's okay. I'm kidding. Right. Um... Maybe we should. Maybe we should actually just do a specific video focused on the Council Gauntlet, and perhaps each of us just. I don't think Come it's a, God, with a character. God no, that's not postponed it again. I was only kidding. <laughs> we'll oh, be you ripped apart. Kidding. Okay, okay, you want to do this? Oh, okay. Oh, what, you didn't get that? Oh, you. Jesus I Christ. I, totally <laughs> I thought it was, I thought you was, oh, okay, never mind. Oh, boy. <laughs> Post in the comments, really guys. Did you not. realize I was being sarcastic? It, it's not really <laughs> supposed to be a long form thing unless there's like some sort of like debate that happens. But like, other than that, it's supposed to be pretty quick. Yeah. yeah. Like, it's not okay. supposed to be that, okay. that long. Let's see how Callan, it's really hard to tell when you're being sarcastic. I'm like, sorry. All the I time. know. Because <laughs> his humor is so dry. Yeah, yeah also, seriously. We can't see you. Like, we can't That's even true. Look at your face. That's, That's true. true. That's probably the biggest reason. Yeah. No I keep context getting this. Yeah. for his tone of. Okay. okay. Apologies. So, okay. Basic idea behind the Council Gauntlet is. It's something I came up with a few years ago just for gauging the approximate skill level of specific characters is I would just take character A and decide and pit him in little sort of quick little thought experiment matchups against each member of the Jedi Council to just kind of figure out how does this guy stack up against council member A, council member B and just go through them in order of in order of seating to basically just kind of give you a general idea for how powerful the guy is. Today, we're doing Darth Plagueis versus the Jedi Council as of Attack of the Clones. Attack of the Clones. So, no so that is, um, in terms of seating order, this is uh, Plo Koon, Mace Windu, Yoda, Kiadi Mundi, Ceci Teen, Shakti, Yemen Peel, Opa Rancisis, Adi Galia, Coleman Trevor, <laughs> Ethoth, Deva Blava. Each of these things does not belong here. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, oh, so... Oh, and also, also because uh, he gave his little intro, also something that I um, am familiar with from battle boards, uh, something I use a lot. I kind of disagree on how they use them because... Um, and also just a grander philosophy of how I uh, do these things that I consider matchups to be more important than, like, power scaling, if that makes sense to anybody here. There's a, there's a place um, for power scaling, but yeah. it isn't always... There is a there is a place I, there is a place for power yeah. scaling, and I think it is also important to consider that. But some 
battle boards not the whole piece that and so, take that as so many yeah. people get so hung up yeah. on power scaling and they refuse to acknowledge the effect that simple skill and tactics can have we have it's time. like Cassin. we have plenty of examples of more skillful and tactical opponents taking down more powerful ones so you yeah, know they, power yeah. isn't everything they also discard what should happen in certain situations over what does happen um for example no one gauges maul's skill level on the fact that he just stood there and took kenobi's lightsaber slash it was plot armor everyone acknowledges it we find a loose explanation and then we move on like they, you don't if you ignore that then the entire thing falls apart and they, yeah. a lot of people tend to so context is important guys Indeed. so when so, we do this we're not saying like you know like, oh, if he doesn't get past someone, certainly, like, oh, he's just not, he can never contend with someone on that level. It's just that right. that person has something That's that, important. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. It's matchup. It's matchup. So They're all their individual like, characters with their individual like, skill here's, sets. Yeah. Here's, yeah, here's the something for you that everyone needs to remember. It's like, I see Obi-Wan, Anakin, and Dooku as representing a perfect little rock, paper, scissors balance. I always Anakin talk about beat, that. Yep. Anakin can beat Dooku. Dooku can beat Obi-Wan. Obi-Wan can beat Anakin. It's a rock, paper, scissors based on their, the different balance of their skill sets. So, yeah. <laughs> the big one we always go <laughs> left, right, and center in with is uh, Plo, Shaq, and T as well. No, Plo, Plo, Plo Shaq, Shaq, and Obi. Plo, 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 You always do Plo, that. Plo, Obi, one and, and Plo, Shaq, T. Yeah, those three. The, Impossible the to decide three. who wins out of those three. Yes. Okay, so I guess before we get into this, I just want to state unambiguously that I think Mace Windu and Yoda could most definitely take down Plagueis. My criticisms of Yoda oh, I thought, still we're, I thought we were going to go. I thought we were going to go one we're by one. Going in yeah. order. I know. Yeah, I just I mean... wanted to state, just going uh, into this, that I think Windu and Yoda could. Spoiler alert! alert. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. They don't like, know the rest no of our opinions. It's fine. <laughs> okay. Well, let's. We'll get into it's... specifics when we get to them. First, yeah, we'll go with I the just... most important yeah. one: Colm and Trevor. Uh... <laughs> no, 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 Go, let's just go know, from left to right. starting from Death of a Lava. Oh, left to right, yeah, no, yeah. I'm kidding. Left to right, left to right, okay. Okay. All right, so, Death Starting with Diva. I think uh, she's gone Plagueis very quiet, Connor, just saber. so you know. Yeah. Oh, shit, I've gone What's very quiet? Yeah, you've gone very quiet, inexplicably. A little bit. Really? Yes. Shit. Uh, I have no idea why. I okay, you're coming back slightly now. Oh, you sound fine again. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, he sounds fine to me, too. Yeah, okay, okay. Okay, so starting with Deepa, uh, my attitude she contends, but she doesn't. Um, she definitely doesn't win, win, but she contends. The, prob the almost, problem is uh, the force push. abilities. Deepa is yeah. almost purely a, a swordswoman in terms of how she fights, and yes, that'd be enough to get it'd just be the Venomous fight all over again. It's like she'd probably take an advantage in a lightsaber duel, but you know, Plagueis would find some way to circumvent that with force abilities. She'd so. be overwhelmed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He like oh, oh this isn't going well this isn't going well eradicate she she's put, not she put too much pressure on on Plagueis and yeah she is a little bit over specialized in that way as well with the swordsmanship yeah. focus because her force abilities come mostly from her again I'm gonna do this pun sense abilities but <laughs> no, it's which true, is totally her... true like she's more in touch with the spirituality type Tunement. yeah in attunement not so much in like um uh, combative oh, like utility force about force like, powers like on Jin essentially yeah she's mace mm -hmm. which is actually something blended together in terms of sensibility right which is actually why may says um in chatter point when on nashada she she showed um a technique that was better than his because her technical skill of lightsaber uh skill is is very very high but it's her uh, her force powers aren't really ever like you know specified or it's the overall about. package outside of just her attunement her attunement yeah. is what yeah. is what her, her specification is yeah so combatively that's not going to be as great but still great just from just being a you know mm -hmm. a jedi and yeah. She'd, she'd pressure Plagueis, but wouldn't be able to break through and kill him before he resorts to his trump card right. and annihilates her effectively. Yes. <clears throat> now, if this was on a battle board, they would be like, oh, Plagueis dumps. Yeah. Like, I, I hate, I hate <laughs> no, that so much. No, no, no. Yes, of course he's Every single ahead, person here, contend. except for Coleman Trapper, would be able to put up a damn good <laughs> fight against Plagueis. It's true. It's really true. And, uh, and Coleman should yeah. be able to if Why he is wasn't. Why he there? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm uh, gonna defend Coleman. Coleman. He gets no, the pizza. Hey, hey, guys, I've solved the problem. I've solved the problem. I've solved the problem. Yariel Poof was dead by this point, so they needed someone else to get the pizza. Yeah. yeah. That's why. Coleman Trevor would just trip over his robe, fall on his lightsaber, and Plagueis would just be like, um, okay then? <laughs> okay. <laughs> For those who don't really understand. Yeah. Eath Koth is next. Yeah. Eath yeah. yeah. Koth. Eath Koth. 
Okay. Uh, oh. This one's interesting because Ethcoth, he's a little bit more passive as a swordsman. So mm. I don't think this he put Plagueis under... This situation where... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I don't think he put Plagueis under much overt pressure. They instead just kind of be tentatively tapping at each other with mm. lightsaber combat, just probing, not really trying to decisively overwhelm. And it would really just kind of turn into who can slip a blade, catch an opening and slip a blade in first, because I don't think Plagueis would just cut loose and overwhelm ETH, because ETH wouldn't be... Requiring it. Yeah. yeah. He's not right. taking, he doesn't, like, take the initiative. He kind of ebb and flows. Mm. He goes, he goes with the flow, which mm -hmm. I actually think is kind of the best approach to take against Plagueis, because if you actually try to dominate him, he'll just break out the power and crush you. Mm. So as... Whereas the soft touch of Kenobi is a little bit better for Plagueis. And, yeah. Uh, it's a that's, very that's close one. Context. I, yeah. It's, I do favor Eeth Koth, but only by a narrow margin. Because if Plagueis feels threatened at any mm. point in this, he will just cut loose and crush him. But I do think Eeth Koth could probably just get a, just quick slip in a blade and take him down before that. Happen. I don't think no, so. I don't think well, I don't think, think, he, well, 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 I don't think ETH would win. I do think this is definitely a contest where Plagueis is... Uh, first of all, he would not have the physical advantage with his extra reach due to ETH costs of Raki nature, and I do think that his force abilities... Wait, 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 wait. I, don't, I, I, I disagree on that. Reach? Really? Yeah, no, 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 wait, no, wait, before you no, disagree. Like, Plagueis no, has the reach advantage, but... Plagueis has the reach advantage, yes, but as is a Brack, you have ETH cost costs greater stamina because of his multiple hearts. Plagueis well, has that too, but they're more viable for combat due to their Zabraki nature. And I also feel like his durability also goes a long okay, way. Okay, so what you're doing that. is you're just you're just favoring stamina over reach is what you're saying. Yeah. It's not, durability. No, no, not stamina, not stamina. Well, durability. It's, uh, it's durability. Yeah, I, was like, I wasn't confused. But the okay. thing is, Evan... Stamina dur and durability is what I was saying. Oh, well, well stamina to be fair, Plagueis... Is... You're, you're selling Plagueis' durability short because you're forgetting that this is a guy who had his face sliced open and kept on fighting. It's like Plagueis is incredibly yeah. resilient. Also, durability like... in the nature of the Zabrak isn't that significant when we're dealing with lightsabers. It's something that was relevant to blaster fire, minor injuries, but but Plagueis can take blaster fire and minor injuries as well. It's it, lightsaber wise, neither's durability is going to factor in too much if they get a decisive blow. Yeah. And reach is everything in combat. Sword combat. Right. It's... The stamina heard... part, I, I think, is what you want to go with more than the um, durability. Especially, yeah, like you were saying with the lightsaber, it's like. True. Doesn't matter. But I feel like weren't we just talking about how ETH wouldn't really pressure Plagueis in the same way swordsmanship wise? So like the furthest I can go is Plagueis would be kind of like maybe in a Xana versus Bane on Doan position where he's not mm. he, he's kind of like he's kind of using tactics that don't really that won't really work for a while, but once he gets tired of it, he'll wipe the floor with him force wise. Mm. Like that's what I see. Like that's uh he probably and I can actually yeah. think, see him beating uh, Koth and lightsaber wise without even using the force. Because I'd see Keith would get a hit on him. He, he would brush it off or it wouldn't be Eith. strong enough. Keith, not Keith. <laughs> Eith Koth <laughs> would get a strike on him, uh, but then Plagueis would finish him in the same blow. It would take the hit. Yeah, I haven't. Slash him I haven't seen anything. I haven't seen anything from Koth that would make me think he could overcome. Even do that, yeah. yeah, yeah. And yeah, even I don't think like he would even hit him. But, but even if, but even, but happened. even if Plagueis couldn't penetrate his defenses outright with swordsmanship, he could with force abilities. Definitely, and yeah. that's that's yeah. why. I say yes. That. No question if he wins for me. I'm just saying, if that was a possibility on either side, yeah. then that would be how it goes. Yeah. So even then, it wouldn't matter um, for me. So, so okay. I well, okay. so three even Plagueis to two Koth. Like, yeah. Eeth Koth can't be Plagueis because of force abilities, but his softer touch kind of... I think he's got a better chance of it than the other people, then, because he's softer touch. He's not He's not trying to dominate Plagueis outright. He's instead just going with the flow and waiting for an opening, which is a better approach to take against someone as overtly powerful as Plagueis. I, I could see that as a possibility. I, that's fair and enough. I also... Think that that's a little mischaracterization on Plagueis, especially from the Venomous fight, where he does take a back seat after the he takes that frontal assault. He he plays yeah. like a lot more defensive. He's like a lot more conservative. He's that's not like I, yeah. that's why. That's, yeah, why yeah. that's why I do compare him to Zana because he's not accustomed to taking that. Pro, like, why would he do that? Mm -hmm. I don't think he would. Hmm. So it's three okay. for Plagueis, two for Koth on this one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So. 
Coleman. Okay, talk no. about Coleman, <laughs> Coleman trouble talk sweeps, about this, like... sweeps it, takes it easily. <laughs> Plagueis uh, would not uh, be able to deal with his 360 vision. No one can. Yeah. He's, he's, he's not that bad. <laughs> Antoine, 360 he died, degree vision. He died, Sorisu, he died, he died, he died Jango he Fett. Died, he, he died to Jango Fett. It's Jango Fett, though, guys. It's Jango Fett. Come on. Yeah, it's Jango no, Fett. No. I mean, yeah. Jedi Master couldn't even block Kenobi's one shot. The, the same Jango Fett who got beat up by Obi-Wan <laughs> without a lightsaber. <laughs> yeah, I guess I like. I was saying, but, uh, oh, Kenobi defended against him, though. Oh. And he wasn't even <laughs> supposed to mess, mess with that point. Oh. Yeah. yeah. He beat him up without his lightsaber. That was, And that's Jango's element. Yeah. In hand to hand. The thing is, I'm willing to accept Coleman Trevor as being a worthy council master, say, on the back of his academic accomplishments. Like, he is kind of noted as being the Jedi Order's PR guy, yeah, so that's so probably why they gave him a seat. He serves a role, but combative... He has to be informed, yeah. But yeah, yeah. yeah. Don't, don't send him, send him to the arena, Mace. Power in the force, <laughs> yeah. he's, he's negligible. I mean, nice again, movie. he he might have been killed by Jango Fett, but again, the the self delusion. He jumped up there to fight Dooku. Yeah, like, let's not forget. <laughs> right, like, that's true. That's true. Yeah. He's like, so, let's go, Dooku. Dooku, let's Dooku go. didn't look very worried, though. No, he didn't even yeah. raise he's his like, lightsaber. Like, Dooku just turns and looks at him. He's like, "What you the serious? hell are you like, doing, bruh? bruh yeah. I remember you. I remember you, bruh. Like, come on. Yeah, come on. you saw Dooku would have been familiar with him. Yeah. I could just imagine Dooku just curb stomping him without the four, without even drawing his lightsaber. Just step up, grab his wrist, throat punch, dead. Or, or just like sweep, force sweep him off the side again. It's one of the sad bits about that scene that like, he was looking over that uh, balcony, recognizing every single one of those Jedi, pretty much. And it must have been a very yeah. sad moment for him if it was written well. Um, but yeah. Nobody's going to write an essay comment yeah, this... in defense of him anyway. Yeah. <laughs> An additional, uh, additional commentary, too, to the uh, Jedi Council is that, yes, they're not all there. It's unlike the Sith Council, if we're talking about, like, you know, Swator or we're talking about any kind of old Sith Empire thing, is that those powers are acquired usually through, you know, actually being, like, you know, Slitting the finesse of your fighting or your power. Yeah. Right. Versus the Jedi Council, which is a little bit more diplomatic in the sense that, you know, you'll get on yeah. the Council not just for your fighting ability, but, you know, like, for instance, for Depa, like, her sensibilities are, like, really uh, stellar, or, like, for Oprah and is like, you know, his battle meditation is, yeah. like, super, or, like, yeah. they have a lot of wisdom, like, you know. Abigail, so, yeah, um, yeah exactly. So, like, members, you're not always going to, just because you're on the Council doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be, like, the best fighter, although you yeah. usually they are going to be, you know, yeah, they, they tend to be. Yeah, tend to be. It's but that's not, not a like, requirement. Exactly, it's not a Deepa's, requirement. Deep is still better than a good majority of the order. Oh, let's yeah. let's yeah. hammer yeah. that in real, real well. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, is, like, for, really... me, for me, she's more top end than bottom end. Yeah, the only, the only reason she's this... not overall is because of uh, force abilities and tactical sensibilities. It, her swordsmanship yeah. is right up there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And this, it's like, just that specific. This specific council. The specific council is also like highly esteemed, so it's yeah. not like Coleman Tripp is a useless Jedi. It's just he stands out next mm. to the other people. Yeah, right. because we're talking about like, right now we're talking about history. fighting abilities, and that's yeah. why he stands out. You know, yeah. 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 If we're talking about like something else, then it'd be, it'd be yeah. Well, these aren't who our favorite characters are. They're who are the most powerful in personal combat. And again, personal combat. There might be great. And that's some... the thing too. In our in our verses, what we all do is that what we're talking about is not like popularity contest or like you know like who's our favorite. It's about like we're talking about fighting scenarios specifically. Like that's all it is. Personal combat as well. Some have people would, some people are better army destroyers you, than others. Not, but can't take it's not just a question of what powers yeah. you have; it's how you use them. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. Um... Addy Galley is next on the list, and so my introduction to her it... was um, power, uh, uh, Jedi power battles, um, which <laughs> I know is totally not like it doesn't fit that. into yeah. like any other of the stories, even EU or canon doesn't matter. But uh, right. like that's how I like first got into her, and I liked her as like with her um, inverted like she like had this bounce. Like she was the only one who was like bouncing in that opening cinematic. Mm. So I was like, I want that one. She looked <laughs> like she was like animated, and I liked her like and she, she, was very, also, like, uh, she also and... runs really fast. Yeah. So like if yes. you don't have time to be like. Um, and Mike Plo, like, who's like, slow. Yeah. Like, I, that's yeah. how I got introduced to Plo, and that's how I found another one. Right? It's really cool. Um, I don't think she wins against Plagueis, but uh, you guys go ahead. I have to go to the bathroom really bad. I'll be right back. Roger. Okay. But that's, okay. that's my, my vote. My vote is uh, Plagueis. Uh, yeah, yeah okay. I second I, that. I, 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 I think Adi it's the same story as with everyone else. It's like she could probably contend with them as a swordswoman, but the power and the force isn't up, up to par. And as a swordswoman, because she's so aggressive, it's like... Plagueis would break out the power almost immediately against her. He wouldn't pull his punches because she's just 
she'd just been coming at him. She's a little bit more yeah. rote response conventional as well, from what we've seen. Um, yeah. She does tend to go for, well, this is the move that I would do any other time, so I'll do it now. Even to the point where she died in one instance to oppress. Like, <laughs> in one instance. She should have been aware yeah. that that would not have worked. But she did anyway, as though, okay, and now I'll do a sweep kick like I would any other time because there's an opening. Oh, but it's, shit, a he's a tank. it's just reflex. It's yeah. like it normally yeah. would work. It's yeah. just, I mean, when you're pressured, it, it that would way, just, a, yeah, look she's at the trying her best. Yeah. Yeah, uh, but just she's, kind of luck of she's the more of a reflex fighter than a, than a cerebral fighter, and it, it really doesn't doesn't help against Plagueis. Um, no, yeah, no, because Plagueis is the ultimate cerebral fighter, which kind yeah, of comes at the expense of the reflex. I mean, he yeah. can it's even like... take himself out of his body and fight from behind it, which is uh, one of his big sh things. Yeah. yeah, it's like Plagueis is basically a much more aggressive Chaos and Durach. Pretty much, he's got that Very same so. sort of. Dynamic body motions, but direct blade work. Do what you have to do to win. Don't focus on any... Don't don't get too caught up in one specific technique or trick. Keep your options open. He's a bit more of a specialist, and, and he's way more powerful. But yeah, I agree. It's very similar approach-wise. I can see yeah, him being yeah. the kind of lean-back, kind of stab um, approach. Uh, especially for him with his ludicrous reach. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Speaking of reach, <laughs> Opo Rancisis. Yes. Uh, he, he has quite the reach. <laughs> yes, um, I this put him is very tricky. high in the list. It because... is, this one is interesting. Because it's like, I think Oppo could almost definitely play, take Plagueis down in a lightsaber duel, especially with his, with his physicality, which allows him to better contend with Plagueis's, you know, reach. Yeah. The... He'd have the reach advantage in this contest. Yeah, and the speed advantage, that's for sure. Yeah. yeah Mike. So really, it's just a question of could Plagueis overwhelm Oppo? Because we know Oppo is powerful, but is he that powerful? Well, I mean, he's definitely the superior, you know, telepath of the two. That's kind of unquestioning, unquestionable. Mm. But combatively speaking, it's just kind of he's what you would call a tricky. support class when it comes to the Force, um, yeah. which doesn't help yeah. against Plagueis. Um, he Oppo is interesting because Oppo is inferior to most of the people above him on the council, uh, com combatively speaking. But he might, he can right. contend with them better than other people who are actually better than him in the combative sense because of how much an advantage his unorthodox physicality gives. He is literally a snake that can coil himself up and hang upside down and swing and jab and lash yeah. out with his tail, multiple arms. He has so many advantages. Yeah, um, and it just makes also, me wonder how Plagueis would react to that. The majority of his powers, though, are not suited to this. Yeah. Like, like, I mean, at all. Like, he's actually more specialized toward non-force wielders in general mm. or large-scale grand battles that he's coordinating yeah. than actual right. personal combat. And, and even that's, personal combat, like, group fighting as well. Yeah, it, but just, I mean... I'm just, I'm just kind of picturing something like that scene in the first Thor movie where Thor's on the ground and Loki's surrounding him with illusions and Thor just says, Enough! and fires off that shockwave of thun of lightning that dissipates all the illusions and just sends Loki flying through the air. That's how I kind of picture this going. It's like, mm. Oppo tries to go at Plagueis with his telepathic powers and Plagueis is just like, oh, fuck this shit. Hmm. I don't think he would even try. I think he would realize that that would be futile or just not. It's not going to work. It's not in the cards. He's, He's very smart. Yeah, it yeah. would just be. I mean, he is like one of the preeminent tacticians. Like He's maybe the, the like one of the yeah. Grand, yeah. Yeah. grandma. Uh, so he has that. He right, has that think. advantage as well. That's that's yeah. geared toward like warfare. Like right. I don't know that that necessarily transfers to yeah. personable combat. Yeah, I would yeah. say that it doesn't necessarily. I completely agree with you on that. Um, as in like in general, but with him, I'd say we've got enough to say that it does because of how he dealt with the assassins. Um, but enough to deal with Plagueis. Oh like, no, no, I no, mean, no, somebody, no. Sorry, I just meant know. in general. Yeah, I wouldn't yeah. say it would be. I mean, I'm not, anyway. of course not. Of course, it's not like it's useless to him in all situations. Yeah. But just in this particular situation, I don't think. I don't think so. Yeah, no, I agree. Uh, I'm sorry I, about yeah. the background noise. There's a motorcycle out there. That's fine. Can't do anything about yeah, it. It wasn't that loud. It would be a very time. interesting, interesting fight to watch. But yeah, I'm, I'm. I think at the end of the day, I'm more in favor of Plagueis. Mm. Although, I, I actually see this one going either way, legitimately. Mm. It's interesting. It's, well, it's I, a very gotta... close fight because it's like, yeah, Oppo does kind of come up a bit short because of the force abilities, but at the same time. He may not be the most powerful. He may not be as powerful as Plagueis when it comes to combat, but I'd say he's powerful enough to contend, even if only briefly. Yeah. Saber wise, definitely. He's a bigger target as well, so Force Lightning is going to be a problem because he can't deflect yeah. easily. 
So uh, oh, look, Antoine, that we're doing tail. we're doing Opo Rancisis and we're Okay. We're sorry, I had enchiladas last night and I'm lactose intolerant. <laughs> Un- understood. Nine, thank no you problem. for telling us, Antoine. <laughs> Now I well, know I'm getting with Slurpee time. instead yeah. of ice cream when I come and visit. No, but I prefer I prefer ice cream. <laughs> I'll take the pain. <laughs> but yeah, we've, we've covered you, pretty much every angle on that one, I think. I'll bring you ice cream and well, some we... sort of lactose intolerant medicine, because I don't remember what that <laughs> is. That's true, no, but Antoine, never... Antoine, um, yeah, what's uh, Oporancisis. Oporancisis. We just got through ours right as you were walking in. Now, here's the thing. I think that... Uh, in terms of over, I mean, I think it's Plagueis for sure. But mm. um, the thing, I think Oppo, his lightsaber abilities should be respected a little bit more. I don't even know what you guys are saying. I'm just saying this just for me. Just we're, 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 we're kind of on we're the same. We're there main. with you. Like, yeah, yeah I thought. Yeah, I mean, oh, I thought yeah. we're having the same. Okay, cool. Um, especially. No, when, you're wrong. Uh, I hate Sora, you terrible. God. <laughs> when Sora, uh, especially when Sora Bulk elected to. Um, uh, Use to, to kill him the way did like yeah like that yeah. kind of shows respect right there um f- from that standpoint and I know a lot of people don't That's like using that kind of stuff in terms of like no we want to see like concrete feats or whatever it's like but just the fact that that was even a thing for Sorbolk to do and how esteemed Sorbolk is himself yeah that has Sorbolk to specifically yeah. that's a big sort of skill I, from Oak. yeah I do you agree, want concrete I... feats even even in that issue like, I'm not the... saying Opal is like super good yeah. or whatever I'm saying that yeah. he's yeah. demanding respect yeah. you know yeah well I even do like agree the, with the, that the, sorry. I do agree, but I also think some people have overblown that because some people have outright stated, like in comments, like on my videos, okay. like, well, Sora, Sora Bulk was afraid of. He's like, no, he wasn't. Like, he wasn't afraid of. He was aware. He just, yeah, I think he knew it wasn't going to be the most efficient. Remember that he's like, he's a premier, like a preeminent telepath. Like, he could summon, like, help. Like, if you don't kill him outright, he can summon help like that. So, I mean, you have to provide him with the situation he thinks he can handle on his own, which he could the Anzadi, and then stab him in the back. So it was smart. It, it wasn't right. that he was afraid. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. It's one of the few so, times we see him yeah, being you'll, smart. You'll always take the, the, the more sure thing than, than like the, the half and half mm. scenario. Yeah. Yeah. But it's worth acknowledging, so, even if it's right. not concrete. It's something that you yeah. need to consider in the argument. Sure. Um, the thing we've been said, we said as well, that his unorthodox nature and physicality-wise is one of the biggest physicality edges of anyone because he can perform so many more maneuvers. His yeah. lightsaber, even if he was a middling sword, oh. which he's definitely at least better than that, um, he can move I mean, so many different ways. If you if you look at this council, like physically wise, like he probably is the best suited to a confrontation with Plagueis. Definitely, but that's about it, you know. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. yeah. So I think class. Oppo is definitely one of the he Plagueis still take this takes this, but again, Oppo is one of the guys who has the best chance. Like again, that kind of three to Plagueis, two to Oppo situation. It's like he's he's one of the few people that I think could contend with Plagueis directly power to power and actually have a chance of winning but it's still only a chance it's still like a only yeah. a chance it's probably it's way uphill yeah, yeah. It's, it's an uphill if Plagueis yeah. is caught yeah. by surprise it's... by his speed for instance in that those first critical moments and Oppo takes advantage of that I think he's got a chance I don't think he's got a chance in yeah. a long haul fight um, outside of that instance yeah he could only win in an early fight scenario, to quote Antoine. Yeah. <laughs> I, lo- I love my verdicts now. I, I used to uh, hate my verdicts. That, I hate I actually, really my verdicts. Like, I actually really <laughs> like that format. It's great because it just break, breaks things down pretty I just hate it because it was turning into like, and it was turning into like was, fan fiction, I felt like, and it just was like not what I was even like trying to company. convey Instead, with my analysis. Kind of saying, and I feel like this one conveys like, exactly what I'm trying to explain, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like you're kind of going through the stages of how people fight, and I really like right. that. So, so uh, Opo Rancisis, good chance of beating Plagueis, but ultimately the odds are against him. Evan Pale. <laughs> no. No. Uh, Reach no. Is the I don't exact really care enough about this character to even like, make an argument for him. Even a fake argument, like a devil's advocate well, argument. We've not seen anything that remotely <laughs> gives him a chance from a defensive yeah. ears. Like, um, he, he's super sensitive to sound. He has a unique... He can hear Plagueis coming. He does have a unique <laughs> lightsaber technique, which I think should be you know, Again, he could too. probably contend with Plagueis very effectively as a swordsman, especially considering... I think this is one of those cases where Plagueis' reach advantage actually starts working against him a bit because Evan yeah. is so small. If he it's closes the distance, a... yeah. <laughs> but um, if not, yeah, it's, it's just like if Evan oh, Pale yeah. is able to get in close, Plagueis is going to have some problems. But yeah, it's, like it's, it's, it's the David close? and Goliath thing, mm. you know? Yeah. I don't think he so, would be able to. Yeah. I think Plagueis would see that as a risk and use force earlier in the fight. 
Yeah, force yeah. power. Yeah, 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 that's the big... Force power thing. is always the thing that saves him, but if or not he gets killed before he can use it, that's the question. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so that was quick. Shakti? <laughs> so, Shakti. Is I think she puts up a hell of a fight. Yeah, yeah oh, Shakti yeah. is the only... a hell of a fight. Shakti is the only reason... reason. The only reason I think Shakti would lose is because she's too aggressive. That's literally the only reason. But she's not though. She's um, prod. She's she's very much a hit and run. She prods. She analyzes. Yeah. She retreats. She prods. She analyzes. She retreats. Like she's always been push I, pull. Just very much yeah, a burst just, retreat. Burst retreat. When you think yeah. about your verdict on on Bane versus Shakti, like that, I think is <laughs> apt. I, I think she, I think she has to leave. Like she has to cut and run, or else he'll kill her. But I think she could survive an altercation with him. Whereas most of these other people. That we've talked about would so far, die. I think he could. Yeah, would die. Shakti has she would, she would, sur- she would lose, but she would live. She would lose. I she sure. can't win. I don't think she, or she I could, think... but it'd be circumstantial. Yeah, she wouldn't yeah. be likely to win. And you guys want me but I think to break she your could heart get away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't want to know about that recanonized piece of crap. No, that's rubbish. We're not listening to it. <laughs> um, Wait, what? I'm gonna break your hearts real quick, just to inform, just to inform, just to inform. No uh, so uh, there's a book. It's the Essential Atlas to I think characters or something. I can't remember what it is exactly. But there's a passage about Shock Team, and you guys know the deleted scene that uh, came from Revenge of the Sith, right? Yeah. Not the yeah. grievous one, but the Anakin one. No, yeah, yeah. So the Anakin okay. one is now what happened to Shock Team. Ah, uh, which it. no, it's not because that's a stupid idea. Ignore it. I don't yeah, care it's about canon. Really it's stupid. It's like it, don't it's care. while she's meditating. Even if the passage in the book says while meditating, she was killed by Darth Vader. It's so like, while somehow meditating? she was unaware of the what? slaughter yeah. around her. <laughs> so, so many oh, people seem to think that a meditating Jedi is a vulnerable target when it's the exact opposite. A meditating the Jedi Lord is super you. attuned. <laughs> they know exactly what's going on around them. They're impossible to sneak up on. And even if she she's, wasn't, why would she sit there? Let us, let us not forget that she's a the... Togrutin. She's a Togrutin. You guys, yeah. too. You guys are yeah. saying that meditation isn't just when you go to sleep? That's what you're saying? <laughs> no. But the thing no. is, even yeah. in that scene, even taking away the fact that he beats her, it's irrelevant because she would not be sat there. She was charged with the defense and the slaughter was happening by that point. She would have been either yeah. on the front lines or getting people out the back. She would not be sat there going, mm, wait, what? Skywalker? What are you... Ah! It's it's and she ridiculous. even says like he even senses she, enough to sense Skywalker, but not to sense that he's got like the dark side, f- 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 like just like get out of here. Hands. It's yeah. rubbish. Yeah. Get it's out of classic here. Classic case of not so, understanding but, what they're using. Just now, that's the, the, that's let's let's, let's go back. Let's go back to Plagueis. About, yeah, back to Plagueis. Okay. Okay. As for yeah, Shakti's talk, fight with Plagueis, I think this fight would play out almost exactly like her fight with Galen Merrick from Force Unleashed. Only Plagueis would legitimately defeat her. She wouldn't be defeated by Merrick's plot arm. I wanted to exactly yeah. say those words. God yeah. damn you, Connor. I do. God damn you. I do always I want to point out that she's first, outside but... of Mace Windu, the only person that can contend with him in the Force. Not win, but as in, like, put up a fight for me. Um, she's, right. Yeah, Plagueis would be battered and he would be bleeding at the end of it, regardless. She's like a slightly yeah. less um, capable, in terms of the force, Jaina solo in this fight. Like you did Jaina versus, ba- uh, versus Plagueis, um, Evan. I feel like it would play yeah. out similarly. Um, and also, I do think that she'd escape in pretty much every single scenario, because Chakti has an insane yeah. capability to escape situations. Um, based yeah, on what we've seen from her. Yeah. Yeah, she's Survival probably ability, like, ability legitimately faster speed. than Plagueis. Like, she, if, you yeah. put them in a, if you put them she's in like a big... She's faster than Plagueis. Like, We're talking about putting like them in a box. A box. Yeah. Right, yeah, like you right, cannot yeah, leave. Yeah. 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 But in all other occasions, I agree. Yeah. yeah. Uh, should we all move right. on to Stacey Teen? Stacey Teen. He's got some um, punch, but I don't think he's got much else for this fight. The problem is, is that Stacey Teen's approach, to, he takes the Vader approach. He's trying to be an yeah. immovable rock. The problem is, is that approach only works when you're decisively more powerful than your opponent. He's not more powerful than Plagueis. He's, it's no. like, he's, it's like unstoppable force versus a resilient, but not immovable object. He would be mm. swept away. Technically yeah. speaking, he can compete sort on a swordsmanship level because he's obviously routinely fighting Mace Windu. But yeah. it's yeah. when that force power gets brought to bear behind the blows, he wouldn't, he, his method is to, okay, I'll enhance my strength as well and we'll see how this goes. And he would lose in that situation. It, yeah. he, he's not a creative He just doesn't have either. like the, the, just the raw power. That's the problem. Yeah. It's like his, it, his yeah, whole he... approach to combat is based around the direct application of power. It's like, how does he deal with a missile fired at him? Catches it with telekinesis, turns it around, fires it back. It's like, that's the worst approach to take against Plagueis. You can't do that not... to Plagueis' lightning he can't, or something. He, he can't yeah. undermine Plagueis. He, that's, like, it's not even in his mentality. 
Yeah. Right. And undermining is the only approach yeah. you've got. You have to exploit his arrogance. That's about the only chance you've got. And also, and about about team, I think we're about to repeat ourselves too, yeah. looking at the list. <laughs> yeah, I, I, just, I was just looking at that. I'm like, <laughs> the same exact thing we're saying for Stacey is the same thing we're going to say for Kiadi Mundi. Yeah, because yeah, exactly. it's essentially the same, the same problem. They're, they're the same types of fighters. So. They're no, we must pursue. But sorry, the Jedi will die. Yeah, Shit, I didn't think of that. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, now, yeah, he's the kind of person I, if you want as like on the la last stand scenario, but not like as like the the vanguard of your uh, battlement. Yeah. Mm. So. Yeah. So same problem think, with with Kiadi Mundi. We we can couple yeah. these together. We can talk about them together. Yeah. yeah we'll have somewhere. we'll have like the images like side by side as opposed to singularly with this one. He's more creative <laughs> than uh than Tin, but uh it's Kiadi? not a slightly different enough. Not not enough marginally. to make a oh, not enough to make a difference. I'm just saying it's worth noting yeah, for the character's sake. Yeah. He might last an extra an extra Fighting minute. Each other. <laughs> yeah. Um yeah. Okay, so Grandmaster. Grandmaster so, Yoda. Uh, Are we missing I think one? Yoda and Windu again can be grouped well, well, together. Let's, let's because let's just win. Yoda, just Yoda, just Yoda. Just Yoda. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay. Just, yeah. Wait, no, okay. they're they're different fighters entirely, so. This yeah. this is this is the the third versus video I ever made, Yoda versus Plagueis. My verdict stands. Yoda neutralizes Plagueis' force, Plagueis's force abilities, dominates him in lightsaber combat. He wins. I mean, I mean I've never, no, I've never happen. shifted my opinion on that. Like we talked about it before, that was a video when you were still scripting it, and it's still my opinion. So yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a literally a case where Plagueis just can't leverage his main advantage, his only advantage, really. Yeah. Yoda doesn't overpower it's... him in the Force; he just negates him. Like it's yeah, it's... exactly. Like, oh, lightning! Exactly. Oh, I'll absorb it. Oh, yeah. telekinesis! Yeah. Oh, I'll Does block it. Does not overpower him. Yeah. Negates As him counters. Thank, thank yeah. you for bringing yeah, that. Thank you for yeah. bringing yeah. that. Because Yoda, overpowering wise, is the best, but only in an army killing situation. In close yeah. combat, he is not quick on the draw. Is like is. No. <sighs> Oh, well, not quick on the draw with the level of powers that he needs to take on these people anyway. He can do it for, like, nobodies, but uh, people with yeah. four shields, he has to build up his power. Um, yeah. Well, that's just not in his so, typical, like, yeah. that's not how... It's not. And it's not even his approach, yeah, precisely. It's not even how he thinks, yeah. so he doesn't need to not how he works. Um, he's just, he's all about just defending, like, just defending. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> retaliate, retaliate when he can, like, if someone's coming at him, but not, like, he's not actively trying yeah. to attack you with them. No. So, if you look yeah, at all of his fights, he's never been, like, the instigator. Hmm. He's he's always just negating the opponent's power and Palpatine, trying to he dominate. Kinda, he kind of to get to that. <laughs> well, remember, Palpatine hit him with lightning first, and then he blasted oh, okay. him back. Okay. I love how he didn't block yeah. that as well. He just took it. <laughs> Which uh, and then we got the hilarious, hilarious yeah. well, 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 well. shot after that. Basically, yeah. Yoda negates Plagueis' power and dominates him in lightsaber combat. And this is a situation where Plagueis has reached definitely does work against him yeah, because Yoda is so his small face, and so yeah. fast. It would it's like, like having a lightsaber here to defend. You can't use it. Yeah, and, and Plagueis is just too slow. Too. Yeah. Uh, He's, in in, swords, in swordsmanship, in swordsmanship, not physical speed. Swordsmanship is slow, I'd say. Uh, comparatively. Plagueis is... Plagueis is just okay, more okay, okay. I, 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 I'm fine with you saying that, but what, what, what specifically makes you think that? I don't think that further. I think it's more. No, no, I know. That's I'm, I'm trying to get it from them real quick. Like, I'm going to yeah. see like what what their thought process is to get well, into that. Well, it's not that Plagueis is so is slow or anything. It's just we've never really, you know, seen him demonstrate anything on the same level of Yoda. Is he, all I'm saying. I feel like he wouldn't have struggled so much with Venomous uh, if. Yeah, and he definitely he wouldn't have fast. struggled. As Venomous is not weak, though. No, I know, I mean, but, but in terms of his it, level, like kind his of kind of character... No, he's not. No, he's not. No, he's if you, not. If you think of him, in, like that kind of character, take him out of the era and put him with like someone else similarly in that on that level, he it would not be someone that can beat Yoda's level of speed, is my point. So if, if Plagueis is struggling, like, in general, if you look at it that way, so if Plagueis was struggling to contend with him and somehow had all of this, this speed man, on top of that as well. I mean, pe people will say what they will about timelines and development. This man trained Darth Sidious. Yeah. He's not slow. No. Yeah. Well, I'm not saying he's slow. He's but just... he's slow compared to Yoda, I think. I mean, I mean, Obi -Wan's, I mean, Obi-Wan's... I don't see anything to indicate that. Like, you, I think you guys are assuming... Is what I'm well, saying. Okay, like, I don't... Uh, we said about the set and that's kind of what I'm coming from too. That's why we... I just wanted to get what you guys are that's coming from. I want to see what your thought process is, that's, just to figure out, just to understand. Even if I don't agree, like at least understand. That's fair enough. We, well, we said about the Kels Andrew. I was just going by his conduct. We said about the Kels Andrew really? thing. How he's very similar to Kels Andrew if he had more power and uh, less versatility. I should say with the swordsmanship. Um, 
and Kale Senderach is not the kind of person that moves at that speed either. It's more of, and, he's, and plus he's a cerebral fighter, so his inc- inclination isn't going to be reflex blitzing, it's going to be th- stopping and thinking. So you, people who cerebrally, cerebrally fight don't tend to go super speed. They draw right. out the combat and bring it down to the slowest possible so they can outthink their opponent, which is definitely going to be his norm. But at the same time, do he does think, kind of go into think, raging. Do you think that Moment. that's the way Dooku is? I mean, he can contend with Yoda's speed. Yes, but he's not as cerebral. He's a lot more hand, uh, not hand-to-hand, but physical, reflexing fighter. He's swordsmanship. He's all about the swordsmanship. I, I still, I mean, I'm not he's offensive for one thing, which is all about speed. Yeah, I'm not trying to make it incredibly like contentious here. I no, just, no. I think it's more like the the reach thing. Yeah, I agree. The speed thing, I. I don't see a concrete, like an ironclad case against Plague is there. Fair enough, that's just my inclination. I'm inclined to believe he is marginally slower because of his approach preference. And even with the, the Dooku reference that you brought up, um, Dooku actively like changes his style just to keep up with Yoda. Like He's no longer like the Makashi like, oh, no, master that he is when he fights stepping, Yoda. Like, he has to he's stepping back and defending, to Yoda, defending, not yeah. the other way around. Yeah. yeah. But he is still going to be way faster on in, based on basic instinct and uh, experience. Right. And because but of I do agree that fencing. this is his form of fighting, just because he is so into one one on one combat, he is instinct, instinctively going to be ready yeah. for that kind of stuff. Yeah. It's and again, it's not concrete. I would never again, say this is definitely the, the case we with Plagueis. I'm just saying I'm inclined yeah. to follow this line of thought because of his pre- preference. Um, I mean, this is the guy who steps out of his body and fights with it. Proactively. He's not gonna be think- he's not gonna be speed blitzing in that reality. He's gonna be thinking, okay, slow, purposeful, like I can see a weakness, right. exploit it with massive amount of power. That kind of thing. As opposed Yeah, to I wasn't looking for speed. agreement, I was just looking for understanding. No, 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 that's just where I'm coming okay. from, is what I'm saying. Pulling forward, that's okay, all so we're well, all on the same page here. Yo the text Plagueis, no question. Yeah. I'd say so. Okay. Right. Uh, when, next fight, Mace Windu. Uh, similar I think situation. It's very similar. Again, Windu in negates Plagueis' power. Yeah. He negates play in a, in a different way. With in a different the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that, that, that's what I mean. It is readily. You get that. You reach the same conclusion, but with just alteration. I just say it's it's less decisive. Yeah, because yeah. Of, because of the nature of the how they'll be approaching the fight, the fight it would drag out a lot longer. Um, yeah, and there's also the yeah, argument the that Plagueis thing. isn't as raw and primal with his force abilities, so Varpad wouldn't be as enhanced. But he's yeah. still primal and raw enough. He's still enough. a dark sider. Well, not only that, <laughs> but he's also the kind of person that rips your throat out with his bare hands. He's got enough raw primal hate in him to power Varpad more than enough. Um, I mean, but yeah, honestly, I think it's the, more like the, the amount of. Or just honestly, like the, that argument, like. I, I, I usually despise the argument that Mace can't use Vapad normally because there's precious few Darksiders that you can't use that again. Of course. I'm you just saying I mean? that, that right. it, it would only be a marginally inferior use against Sidious because Sidious is the perfect candidate to use Vapad against. Uh, Plagueis to me is marginally Which, less so. It's still what, super I, effective. I'm just what I that. consider is I think it can it will start out as a lightsaber duel and then once Plagueis tries to ramp it up and get into that more primal force abilities thing, um, it, like you were saying, like it's going to be returned back, but it, in the sense of uh, uh, Vapad instead of yeah. it being just, just yeah. you know, defense, like pure defense. That's um, not to say that Mace, you know, is, is lacking for power. Oh yeah, you know? he doesn't. He doesn't just need Vapad to, to win. But um, yeah, right. I mean, we, we know that we know that Mace can defend against Sidious caliber force attacks. So mm. you know. Yeah, I also think Plagueis would try and retreat as well. I don't think he'd necessarily yeah, stick around. Yeah, Plagueis would pretty quickly re- realize... They're in a box. Oh, shit, they're in a box. No, no, I'm just saying, yeah, if, if, I'm just saying if they're not, that would be something that's worth acknowledging. In the real world, yeah. Yeah, in the real world, uh, that would be a thing. Because there yeah. are components that wouldn't think that or wouldn't realize it fast enough, um, like Sidious. Although in that instance, yeah. he might have done you know, That's debatable, but... But, yeah, Plagueis, again... Mace Windu negates Plagueis' power. Well, not only negates it, uses it against him. Yeah. Yeah. And Thank dumps you. And lightsaber <laughs> combat. Yeah. Mace Windu was always a massive trump card against the Sith. Uh, yeah, you know. But can we all... So, can, can we, so we're all in agreement on that one? Yep, Mace. Yep. Yoda, and, Yoda and Windu can Everybody? take Plagueis, no question. Not easy fight, with that? Just it's very, very decisive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, so Plo right. Plakoon last. Uh, mm. He's really difficult because he can go toe to toe, but he's not bringing as much power instinctively that Shakti does. Shakti's really? edge over Obi Wan and Plakoon, who are her equals in every other respect, is her raw magnitude in both uh, physicality and force power. I'm kind of seeing which is Plo Koon is... against uh, Plagueis. Yeah. I'm kind of seeing Plo Koon coming up short for the same reasons as Say Citin and Kiadi Mundi. Plo Koon's approach is to be immovable. And while he's more capable of being immovable against Plagueis than Say Citin is, he's still 
not really up to the level. The other thing is, though, he's also way smarter in terms of... Uh, than Kia and Stacey? Yeah. Yeah. I think his technique's also more primarily defensive than theirs. It is. So it's I mean, yeah. Yeah. Um, Which no, goes no, a long I, way to help him against Plagueis. It's counter I think that's really something attacks. that we should bring up about... Um, Jim So has, like, two elements to it. There's Jim So that's five. more about countering. Yeah. Um, well, no, not the, not, I mean, specifically Jim Sound, not, not yeah, Sheen. Not Sheen. Yeah. Um, okay. one you is the, it, like, uh, you have, one, you have the type some, is, okay. you got the philosophy go ahead, go ahead. of the fluid repost versus the philosophy of the falling avalanche. Anakin V. Oh, well, that's a little bit different than I was going to say, but yeah, I guess so, yeah. yeah. But yeah, yeah, I was saying like, Same there's idea. people who are, are constantly like looking for that counter attack. A la Anakin. And there's people who are really just defending and attacking back more as a, like, as a defensive parry, more of like a get away from me, less of like a, I'm really like going to defend to like hack your head off and more I'm defending to be like, hey, just like back off yeah. for a little bit. That's repulsed, you know? yeah. It's which which is what you need defense. against a fighter like Plagueis, hmm. especially in the realm of lightsaber combat. Uh, it's buying time to outthink your opponent rather than just crushing them before right. they can think themselves. But right. the which is with... probably more the Jedi mentality of how you're supposed to use Jim. So. Yeah. Versus, yeah. <laughs> but let's face it, Anakin's uh, never a Jedi anyway. version. Um, the, the thing well, about you know. Plo, though, is when the Force comes into play, because their Force will come into play, Plagueis can't defeat him without it, um, in my opinion, anyway. Uh, the, the He can deal with a lot of Force power, but it's not like T who can take the hits. Yeah, his physique really kind of lets him down there. Mm. He's not weak. He is durable. It's just he's old and a lot more fragile than a young, extremely durable to Tur- Gruta. Um yeah. Even though they're on the same Patricia scale. Patricia is not up his alley. No. no. Um, I'd have to give it to Plagueis, personally. But, uh, I wasn't going to question that. Yeah. I, know, I think we are. Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah, just, yeah, yeah, no. yeah. I didn't, I didn't think that was. Amazing so fight. Don't, don't get us wrong. But, again, similar to what we said before. Mm. And unlike T, you can't escape because he's not fast enough. Yeah. Unfortunately. All right. So, I guess... That was our first council gun. Gun. <laughs> <laughs> We finally yeah. did it. I had fun. <laughs> Yeah, Final good. verdict on the council be. gauntlet. Plagueis can, I guess he can reliably, he's going to be de- can, guaranteed to be he defeated can beat 10 by. Out of 12. He can when beat ten out of twelve. He can reliably be beat eight out of twelve. He can comfortably beat ten out of twelve, and he can't beat twelve. The other two, basically, because T and Opo, yeah. T and Opo, we said were difficult for him. That's um, true. Depending on if the two if the two of them decided to flee from battle as soon as they realized what they were dealing with, Plagueis wouldn't be able to stop them. Yeah, yeah. Which is a big, which is a huge thing in these verdicts because people don't stay and fight when they've got no reason to um, in real life. Yeah, which is a factor. Also adds another element of interest for me because personally, I like it when a bit when you take into account not only that they can't win but also that they can be doing well enough to actually escape. That's like another element of interest for me. But that's just me. That's why I added the whole um, 10 out of 10 scenario. Because I feel like sometimes when people hear verdicts, they hear like, that person wins and the other person can never win. Yeah. Like type. It's, it's like, more no, it's not, really like not that. quite. No. Yeah. Every council member it's, can take out never every like other that. council member in certain situations. It's just exactly. how likely each one is. Um, right. With ex- all exceptions, obviously. Like... <laughs> Yeah, it's, Coleman Trevor's it's never like defeated Mace Windu. Windu. <laughs> if Mace Windu walks into the sparring arena with explosive diarrhea, <laughs> Coleman Trevor will win. <laughs> Would still lose, I'd say, personally, no. but whatever. I thought you were going to say he's <laughs> That would be way funnier. Mace Windu has explosive diarrhea. Worst day of his life. <laughs> he still wins. He still wins. <laughs> just pulled out the Mace Windu face. Of... Is that what he slipped on? <laughs> and on that bombshell <laughs> oh god uh, so yeah we've got that out of the way tales of the jedi is the next <laughs> review legends review uh, okay so that's it that's the council force yeah. guard episode 25 rogue one review it was a bit rambly and all over the place but i hope we got our points across to you all and we hope you enjoyed the film because we certainly did which makes a change we all enjoyed something um yes. oh my we'll God. see you next time i guess on either the legends review or whatever comes out next he's like that's happened to us before <laughs> <laughs> all right this is jen sarai one signing off don't forget about second breakfast hobbits this is antoine peace love no question <laughs> with you always Evanova95, we hope you guys enjoyed. We'll see you guys later. Congrats, Jedi91. See you guys. Thanks for watching.
I'm Rotty4, and I still don't have an outro. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>